Over one year ago now, I survived for 300 days in one of Minecraft's most expansive mod packs, Better Minecraft. Since then, I've explored and conquered many other experiences in mod packs, from the depths of RLCraft to the literal heights of One Block Skyblock. However, along the way, I've missed this mod pack. I've missed creating overpowered gear with insane enchantments and XP, and I've missed slaying and even riding dragons. Originally, I experienced these 300 days across three intense episodes on my main YouTube channel, but if you haven't heard yet, I have been unfairly demonetized by YouTube, forcing me to essentially start over new on this channel. So here I am today bringing you all 300 days of the original Better Minecraft in one massive new movie here, plus me announcing that this was only the beginning, because Better Minecraft will be back again and even better? Sorry, I had to. So if you are new or returning from the original channel and you did enjoy this and want more, don't forget to subscribe so we can once again hit 100,000 subscribers and one day even beat the main channel. Anyways, here's 300 Days Better Minecraft The Movie. On day one, I spawned in an ocean area surrounded by ships full of some dangerous looking mobs. And I was immediately having flashbacks to Arlcraft, which will definitely be coming back by the way. Anyway, since this world was so new and I had nothing to lose, I went straight towards one of the dangerous ships like a fly to a light bulb in the hopes of robbing them blind. I struggled to break my way onto the ship by breaking these wooden slabs in the water, and once I finally got on, I began stealing wood to make myself a crafting table and some wood tools. And now that I had some protection, I guess, I began breaking random blocks above in a way that the mobs couldn't come down and get me. And then I found my first piece of free real estate. This chest had an enchanted iron chest piece with fire resistance. So after putting that on and looting the first chest, it didn't really sound like the enemies were that close to me, so I took the chest and I broke my way up and I quickly blocked off the entrance as I heard one of those pirates shoot a freaking firework at me. Honestly, I guess this is what Pirates of the Caribbean would have looked like if they were directed by Michael Bay. Anyways, now that I was safe for now, I looted the second chest that had enchanted iron pants and a freaking total of 55 iron ingots in it. So of course I put on some pants for once in my life and I crafted myself a full set of iron armor and some brand new iron tools. And now that I felt I had everything that I was going to need to get away, I jumped off of the ship and I began swimming towards the other. That is until I noticed that there was a whole bunch of spawners in the water. A lot of spawners. So I decided not to take the chance, and instead I swam over to land, and apparently it was already sundown, and I did not want to meet whatever types of mobs this game had saved up for me. So I quickly found some nearby sheep that I kindly asked for their wool, and they said no, so I took it, and I made myself a bed, and I went to sleep for the first night. Overall, day one was quite successful. On the second day, after waking up, I picked up my bed and crafting bench, and I set out for the day. Honestly, these styles of mod packs are my absolute favorite because everything is new and it becomes an adventure. So after climbing over the small hill by where I had camped out for the night, I found this cozy little cottage, and because of RO Craft, I was very skeptical. I broke the carpets on the floor just to check for traps, and it turns out there was nothing, but I did kept hearing pillager sounds, so my guard was up. I climbed up the ladder to the attic only to find a bunch of god tier chests full of steak, apples, wheat, some leather, and some coal. It was safe to say that my food problem was solved, at least for now. And after borrowing this random person's house, I climbed back downstairs to find out that they were actually hiding and uh, I found them and quickly bolted outside just in case. And in classic Earlcraft fashion, I broke a hole in the side of their house and I cheesed both of these jerks and I was happily on my way. And honestly, as I was looking around the environment, this world felt so vibrant. I felt like I was playing in Skyrim again. I continued moving on until I spotted another shack in the distance, except while looking around I first saw this strange little structure that actually turned out to be a gravestone. So I did what any sensible person would do, and I stole the gravestone anvil, and I may have taken all of the bones. If this was an RPG, it would be safe to say that I would be very hated. Anyways though, after I finished grave robbing, I went to check out the cool looking shack, and it had a nice chest in it with two clean diamonds inside. While I was here, I also decided to repay the owner for their kindness by stealing all of their bookshelves and I swapped my ugly white bed for his cool cyan one. And after this I walked about a hundred blocks away from the house and I found yet another structure. I was like a candy store 
in a kid. I think I got that analogy wrong. I first found this small little dirt hut with windows that I broke into and underneath some carpet, there was a mysterious passageway that led down to a free golden apple and potion of weakness that I could use to cure the second villager that was inside of these cages, which I was not going to do. Sorry, man, but not sorry. Anyways, after leaving those two in their cages, I tried to take on another one of those ships the traditional way, and I ended up digging straight into their spawner room, and a whole bunch of axe boys came charging at me so quickly, so I strafed my way out of there and into the swamp. That ended up having this super cursed looking spider cave. I do not do spiders. I continued moving through the swamp until the sun started to set and I once again placed my bed out and I slept away the terrors that probably awaited me. On day three, I made my way out of the swamp and up into this gorgeous forest and the ambient noises were so good. This mod pack was so, so good. While up here, I ended up finding another little cabin and this one had some free hay bales for me to take. And I may have also swapped my bed again for this purple one, no cap. And after leaving the cabin, I saw this nearby villager and it turns out he was called a gatekeeper and he had a trade for an adventurer's guide that I conveniently had the books for. So I bought it and I unlocked a bunch of new crafting recipes with it, I think. Honestly, no clue. So I bought a second one trying to figure out what it was and it turns out it was just like a beginner's guide to one of the mods. Weird. So after I got skimmed out of the books that I had stolen from that very guy, I continued climbing through these mountains until I had gotten to the structure that I was trying to go to. And it was some sort of battle tower. I made my way inside and I began taking out each floor full of mobs that were honestly pretty easy because of the daylight that was coming in and there was some pretty decent loot in here. Overall, I got another golden apple and a bunch of food and random loot. And once I made it to the top, there was a waypoint. And boy, let me tell you how much I missed this waypoint mod. It is one of the best mods in any mod pack that you could add. You want to adventure more? Waypoints. So now that I had finished this tower, I spent the rest of the day enjoying the view as the sun began to set. And there was a massive tree castle thing in the distance that I was kind of thinking of exploring the next day. I continued to look around and I found a ton of other structures that I could explore. And also there was this random vex dude kind of just chilling in the sky with a pretty scary looking sword. And of course, after getting too close, this dude charged at me and I gave him the old one, two, no more existing for you. On day four, I woke up with a massive brain idea. I was going to try and take the waystone before I left. And unlike Arlcraft, it worked. I could now make a base and always teleport back to it if I found another waystone. This was massive. So I left the tower and I set out towards the massive tree castle thing in the distance. And the next thing I know, I was being chased by a pillager in full gold armor through the woods. In fact, I was actually being chased by like three. These guys were everywhere. And then I saw it in the distance. There was a nearby bandit camp full of the guys. And it was safe to say that I wanted nothing to do with them. So I finished making my way to the castle and fun fact, I'm pretty sure this is a giant massive dungeon thing. So I began inspecting the area and on the very bottom there were spawners that had skeletons and they did a pretty decent amount of damage to me. So you know what? I was going to play it safe today and I was going to leave. But I will be back for this place. I swear it. That is if I ever find one of these again. So anyways, after leaving that death trap, I was looking for the next place to explore in this whole area was dangerous. I ran into a possibly friendly but possibly not bear and while looking around this field I found a group of those tribe guys from the Mousies mobs mod. And I'm pretty sure that that village you see in the distance over there had the sun chief inside of it that I was nowhere ready to fight. So I kept moving on in the opposite direction where instead I found this nice little village that gave me a free chest with some free iron armor in a monastery map. However, none of the tents ended up being real except for one that had a bunch of beds and some subpar loot. These guys were living a lie. I continued moving on and as the sun began setting again, I now found myself inside of a desert temple that while looting, I had found my first god apple of this entire world, which was pretty pog. I never really used these though because of just how rare they are, but but you know what? God tier loot is God tier loot. Am I right? On the fifth day, I made my way up to this nearby cottage in the desert on top of this hill, and it turned out that it was just another one of those gatekeepers that didn't really have anything new for me. On top of that, all the containers in his house had no loot for me to indefinitely borrow which was very rude of him, if I may add. So I left this place and I was on to the very next place that I had saw on the other side of that desert pyramid. And this place ended up being this cool little desert oasis house. 
I went inside of it and I searched through all of the chests with not much luck until I found the villager on the top floor and he was standing next to a chest with a whole bunch of prime loot for the taking. So after I left that guy's house, I continued in the direction away from the forest castle and in the distance I had seen another village looking place. So I decided that that was where I was going to head next. That is until I found the ultimate distraction. Just look at this cute little lizard dude, just chilling in the desert, living his best life. I would die for this lizard. I need a pet lizard in Minecraft now. Before these 100 days up, I need some of these lizards. If you would die for these lizards, leave a comment down below saying just how great they are. Honestly, lizard master race. Anyways, after that never ending distraction, just look at him. I continued towards the village until I saw another one of those little dirt houses that had a free golden apple. So I decided to stop by for a quick visit and there was an ice dragon egg inside of the chest. Are there dragons even in this mod? I low key kind of hope not, but also can I ride this thing? Is this actually a dragon egg? I needed answers, damn it. So after I finished looting that place, I finally made my way to a real village and wow. This mod pack had the villager guards mod. Plus there were all kinds of new crazy professions and this place even had a waystone similar to Arlcraft. It was safe to say that I was going to make this my brand new temporary home. So I right clicked the stone and I gave it the beautiful rightful name Pain Topia. I bet the villagers are super excited for that name. Bet they love pain. Right? Right? Anyways, I had gotten here at the perfect time because the sun was beginning to set once again. So before I went to bed, I ran around trapping each of the villagers inside of their houses so nothing would happen to them whenever I wasn't paying attention. And after that, I placed down my bed in a house with a double chest and I finally cleaned out my inventory that I so desperately needed to do before going to sleep for the night. On day six, I started off the day by exploring this mini cemetery near my new village. Under each of these graves were hidden chests full of honestly some pretty good loot, not gonna lie. Inside of each chest were bones, emeralds, enchanted armor, and I even got an enchanted book with vein mining, which I don't know if it's good or not, but it sounds good. Plus, while I was here, I also stole all of the gravestones because I mean like, come on, they're, they're free anvils, which are super useful and they cost a ton of iron to make, 31 to be exact. And I only know that because of my one block skyblock world. That by the way, you should totally go and watch that video. It's also really good. You should watch that after this one, just saying. Cough. <clears throat> Cough. Anyways, with that shameless plug done, I spent the rest of this day exploring this nearby battle tower that I thought was super easy. That is, until a Vex jumped me. These guys did mad damage and my very short life was flashing before my eyes. I quickly ate my golden apple just in case and we ended up finishing things outside like real men. And I did not freak out and spam click at all. Nope. Not at all. After that scare, I went back into the tower and I found the source of those Satan spawn. There's a freaking spawner that was being guarded by an enchanted guy that hit me like a B-52 bomber. I guess that guy had gotten eight kills before he went to get me. Anyways, this guy was scary. So I quickly ran back down and outside and I executed this dude on the spot. It was safe to say crisis adverted. And after this, I made my way back up to the top of the tower and I claimed all of my gold blocks and I stole myself a second waystone. Overall, I was a pretty happy guy. And while I was up here, the sun was going down. So I used the little time that I had left to get a lay of the land. And there wasn't really much, but I did decide which way I wanted to go. So now that I knew where I'd go for the next day, I headed back home for the night. And I spent a lot of the time dumping my inventory into my chests. And after that, I grabbed me some iron to make myself a much needed shield that I then upgraded to an iron shield. Honestly, such a good mod. After that, I made myself a brand new iron axe and I went to bed for the night. As Bear from Bear in the Big Blue House would say, good night moon, I think at least. I don't know why my brain thought to say this. It just does these things sometimes. Anyways, on day seven, I woke up and made a new iron hoe. So that way, whenever I go over to that nearby village that I'd seen in the distance yesterday, I could then rob them of all of their food. And immediately after leaving my house, I was greeted by a new pigeon that wanted to be my friend. So I gave this little dude some bread and instead of becoming my friend, he just wanted Becky to smash. Sad. I mean, overall, the joke was on him because I was going to name him Pierre the Pigeon because alliteration is honestly too great. Anyways though, fast forward and I found myself in the nearby village robbing them of all of their wheat. And while I was here, I took all of their job blocks and beds too because you know, Porter gang rise up. And after borrowing all of their stuff, I found myself with about a stack and over a half of that sweet grain. 
I had obtained the bread. And with that, I purged this place into a future full of joblessness and famine. My be fam. However, with no remorse, I then used the waypoint to teleport back home, and while I was here, I stole all of our wheat too, which totaled me a solid two and a half stackerinos. Pog. I then went back home and I crafted them into an inventory full of wheat, and I ended up with over eight stacks of bread. I have literally obtained that grain and gotten that bread. I have yeeted that wheat. So after amassing my great bread empire, I spent the rest of sundown in the night cleaning up around the village. I ended up breaking down a bunch of trees and I punched all of the too high grass just to make things a lot safer, just in case. And with my luck, it started raining. However, I kid you not, if Minecraft rain looked and sounded this good in vanilla, I wouldn't even mind it. I would be in love. Honestly, just listen to the rain. You even splash around when you walk in it. On the eighth day, now that I was full of food and I had two waypoints, I was now ready to explore and leave the nest. I made my way to the nearby desert that I hadn't yet explored, and of course I had this genius idea to go and smack this big bug that I found. And boy, why does this man hurt so much? After control alt deleting him, I just kind of stood here wasting food to heal fast enough to not explode from that bug's insane effects. This dude, lo look at what it's doing. What? What even? Honestly, yikes. Don't don't hit bugs, kids. Don't go home and hit bugs. Leave bugs alone, please. This guy, this guy sucks. Anyways, though, after making it out of the desert alive, I found myself in another one of those cabin structures, and this place was full of goodies. He had a full block of iron free for the taking, <clears throat> a chest full of some enchanted stuff, including a Prot 2 chainmail helmet that ended up being better than mine. I then made my way to his attic. That's a weird sentence. And he had a chest with this super cool iron hoe in it that I then swapped with mine. Trust me, you won't even notice. After stealing all of his stuff and leaving that man down bad, I found another nearby graveyard, and this one was stacked. The chest had a ton of bones, name tags, random iron and stuff, and a pair of Prot4 leather pants that I really hope I can steal the enchantment from, but if this isn't like Arlcraft, then they're kind of just Gucci leather pants that I'm never going to wear. However, on top of it all, I found the holy grail book. This boy had looting three. Now that is a devious lick. And now that those graves were properly robbed, I was on to the next even better thing. This nearby battle tower. And this time, I learned the pro strat. I quickly blitzed my way through each floor and I broke all of the spawners including the unholy vex spawner. And now that I didn't have to worry about 20 vex spawning, it was back to looting all of the chests. And these were stacked with gold, iron, and some other pretty decent loot. And after my inventory could barely handle any more, I made my way to the top to steal those beautiful golden blocks, and now that the sun went down, a blue moon spawn, which apparently increases my luck. However, I didn't quite feel ready to take on whatever may be spawning at night, so instead I just used this waypoint to travel back home and I dumped all of my inventory into my chests. On day 9, I woke up to one of the most awful noises I have ever heard in Minecraft. Like, what even was that? It sounded like a demonic rooster that was inverted. Anyways, I went back to the waystone in my village, and I used it to teleport back to the battle tower, and I continued exploring around the area until I found something interesting. There was this stone brick entrance to what I thought was going to be a dungeon. However, instead, it turned out to be this sprawling underground society of villagers. And this place was massive. There were hallways upon hallways upon hallways with little dorms. There were workstations. I found rooms that had animals and crops. And there were even different areas that had grass and plants to simulate the outside. On top of all of this, there was also a bunch of blocked off dark areas. That, of course, I had to go and explore. And let me say... This place really knew how to set up a vibe. This place was super ominous and kind of spooky. I didn't really have any torches and at the time I didn't think about grabbing any and everything was super dark but there were these really cool abandoned rooms. I ended up finding an abandoned library with a chest with some books inside and an abandoned farm with a single spider that jumped down and nuked all of the crops. I have no clue what happened there but as Harry Potter would say, Yeetus Deletus. Anyways, I continued exploring around this place, and there wasn't really much loot, but it was super cool. Plus, I even found a nether portal room that was only missing one piece of obsidian, and there was conveniently a chest that had two inside. So whenever I wanted to craft a pickaxe with my diamonds, I could immediately come back here and go to the nether. So I placed down a waypoint, and I named it Nether Portal, 
and I teleported back to the battle tower, and I then stole that waypoint to replace the one that I had just used. And overall, I was down in that place until the end of the next day, day 10. On day 11, I continued on my journey exploring all of the new structures nearby in the hopes of crazy loot. And there wasn't really that much that I could see until I had found a boring, regular abandoned nether portal that conveniently had some busted loot. That is, if you call flint and steel busted. Anyways, after looting that thrilling chest, I saw this nearby cobblestone entrance to something. Something that was full of zombies that were pouring out. And one by one, I clowned on these goons as I slowly ascended into the darkness. I made my way down and I broke the spawner in the center and I looted the chest which only had some coal that I guess I could use for torches so I mean that works but like where's the loot my guy? There's so many zombies. Anyways I spent a good amount of time down here and I blocked off all of the entrances so that way I could one by one go down and explore deeper and with only iron armor I didn't feel that safe down here. This place ended up being some crazy dark maze. I had no clue what else to expect down there because this place was a cesspool. So I ended up just kind of leaving. And after that, I spent the rest of the day exploring some of this truly stunning terrain. The biomes in this mod pack are crazy good. Everything looked and sounded so good. This world felt super alive. For day 12, as I was exploring, I found another one of those sky forest castle things. And this time, I was going to explore at least some of it. So while escaping the sussy witch, I used my water bucket to slowly climb all the way up to part of this apparently giant dungeon. And as I was digging into the side, I managed to yoink myself some super underwhelming loot from one of the chests. And then I learned that I was not ready to be up here. A couple of skeletons ran into my tunnel and chased me down. And these guys hurt so much. But with my smite two sword, they stood little chance. So after realizing just how much damage they did to me, I blocked them off and safely dug my way around to their spawner that I quickly erased from my presence. And now that I had thought they stopped spawning, I dug myself out an area that I could use to safely clean up the pile of peeps that had already spawned. And I just kind of sat here smacking them all around until I had enough kills for a tactical nuke. Or at least I wished that because at this point, I was guessing there were more spawners underneath me because they just kept coming. And unlike Aurocraft spawn, Spawners, these don't break after a certain amount of mobs spawning, so unless I progress further and break them, I was going to be here until Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, if it ever does. Anyways, after finally cleaning up enough of these dudes and blocking off the bottom entrance, and while exploring around this area, I had found a hidden chest room that must have been full of some good loot for all of my effort, right? Well, if you thought that, I mean, you were wrong because all I got was honey and not the browser extension, but I did at least get some more iron. Wow, so worth it. Well, at this point, I was now level 33, which was pretty pog, so I couldn't really complain. And I had been messing around with these skeletons for an entire three whole days. Yeah, it was now day 15 and that's all I had to show for it. 33 levels, some honey and some iron. I'm sure there's real loot in this place and it has to be somewhere, but for now I think I was done because I was gonna be here all year at this rate without any loot. But I will be back, I swear. On the 16th day, after using my trusty bucket of moistness to get down from that hellhole, I continued on my journey for loot through a really pretty cherry blossom forest. And that is until I found myself yet another cabin and immediately after opening the front door, I was greeted by an arrow to the face. I mean, at least it wasn't my knee, but now was no time for jokes because these guys hurt. However, I had the advantage because of my big hunkin' iron shield. That is, I did have the advantage until this father and son set of zombies joined in and made my life harder. Luckily though, they all got mad at each other and they deleted the pillager bow boys, but this little Phil's a zombie was hungry for my hardcore world. So I dove into the water for safety and I watched them burn in the sun. And after this incident was over, I kept searching through the forest until I then stumbled upon a field that was packed with roses. And in the middle was this quaint little village that I of course went to and robbed of all of the little resources that they had. They even gave me a map to a nearby bandit campsite. And Randy from King of the Hill was here, and I am so glad he did not hit me with pocket sand. Anyways, while I was looking around the village, in the distance I saw this really interesting looking structure that I was now going to explore. However, it was becoming night, so instead I quickly grave robbed this nearby gravesite of any and all of the loot that this place had, and I placed down my waypoint so that way I could come back tomorrow. I then used the waypoint to go back home and dump all of my inventory into my perfectly matching chests perfectly matching. On day 17, I woke up to two creepers spawn camping the waystone that I needed to go back to where I was exploring. And you know the drill, yeah, 
Yeet. Anyways, after teleporting back, I made my way through the swamp area and I tested out my godlike parkour skills by climbing up to the hill that had both a battle tower and the other weird structure that I wanted to explore. And once I made it to the top, as always, I ran up the battle tower and made quick work of any of the mobs while breaking all of the spawners so that way no Vex got the chance to get the best of me. Or at least that's what I thought because I then let my guard down by looting and little did I know this Vex was waiting and watching me and probably smelling me too. And this dude did so much damage to me, so I had to use a golden apple because they could easily three tap me if they wanted to. And as soon as he came, he was gone. And I had no clue where he had went. That is, until I saw him just kind of looming around in the sky far away from the tower. What a guy. A classic hit and run. You better have insurance. But anyways, all was good because I had fully looted the tower and I stole the gold and another waypoint off of the roof to add to my collection. And while I was up here, I began searching for my next target until I saw this massive building hanging out in the distance that I absolutely needed to see. However, first I had to go back down and check out that other structure next door. And huge surprise, it was just a rock. A big, beautiful rock. One that had nothing in the center, but more rock. If this was a Tootsie Pop, that owl would be mad disappointed. So with that structure being a letdown, I went back up to the top of the battle tower to see where I had to go to get to that house. And while I was on my way there, I stopped by yet another super cozy shack, and I kinda roughed it up a bit, my bad. I may have also spent the night here by placing another waystone. On day 18, I traveled over to where the castle was, and I was met with an entire castle full of nope and more nope. And to top all of that nope off, Frostmaw was chilling next door. It was safe to say that I stood zero chance down there, but I could at least come back here in the future, so I placed out a waypoint, and I named it Frostmaw and Death Castle, or something like that. I mean, that's probably accurate though. Honestly though, if you think about it, I should have called it like Pain Plaza or something. I just came up with that in post. It's way more clever and funny. Anyways, after saving that place for later, I traveled over to the snowy biome where I found some of Forge Lab's best friends and they were just moosing around in the void. And I am so disappointed that sentence just came out of my mouth. Moving on. After leaving Forge's family behind, I found the perfect mountain full of exposed coal that of course the hoarder inside of me could not resist. And after most of my daylight was gone and I had broken through two of my pickaxes, I ended up with a solid three stacks plus eight extra coal. And then in the distance, I had seen perfection. There is this building that looked like it would be absolutely perfect to call my house. However, it was surrounded by gross icky snow, but I guess beggars can't be choosers for now. Plus, upon further inspection while I was looking out in the distance, there wasn't just one of those houses, but it looked like there was a second identical one over in the distance, just kind of hanging out in that spruce forest. So on the next day, day 19, I made my way over to the first one of these places and my mind literally imploded. This place was heaven. It had walls to block out any and all mobs. It had a farmland area with villagers and they were already equipped with five-star amenities. There were beds, job blocks, and a chest with some wither roses inside. We even had our very own guards. And since I have name tags already, I could also give them totally stupid names when I wanted to. Anyways, there were two librarians here, and they both had some pretty pog enchantments. The first guy had an enchantment that stopped endermen from aggroing you when you look at them, and the second one had fire protection four. Plus, each enchantment had its own cool custom looking book, that looked insane. I was sold on this place. This place was going to be my new home, or at least until I found one that wasn't covered in snow. So I placed down my waypoint and I named it Paintopia 2.0 Dominating. Don't know why I named it like that, but it was almost like this place was a sequel to a bad video game. After giving my brand new home a name, it was now time to explore the surrounding area. To the left, there was another building that was similar to this one that could come in pretty useful for some beautiful capitalism. So I first headed over to the building that was similar to my new home, and upon getting closer, something was off here. It was different and dark inside. And then they showed up. This place was full of invisible bowmen. I tried fighting them back in between blocks, but either I couldn't hit them or I was just bad at the block game. So I made the decision instead for a tactical retreat. I didn't want to loot you anyways. And honestly, with that place being a mess, I figured, you know, why not go and visit the next village over? And this place was ripe with future worker. I, I mean friends, they're friends. So I went up to the waypoint and I named this place Village Hidden in Capitalism. And I am way more proud of that joke than I probably should be. On day 20, now that I explored the two nearby places and I was happy with my new house, I was ready to move on. 
So I spent this entire day teleporting back and forth, pulling around piles upon piles of loot that I had been hoarding back at my old base. And this process took all day until the sun went down, when I finally finished and I picked up my remaining chests, my crafting bench, and my bed. And these villagers, they weren't good enough for me. So, I left. And now that all of my loot was in my brand new castle of a house, I spent the rest of the night lighting up any random areas that might be dark enough for random mobs to spawn. On day 21, the very first thing that I decided to do was experiment with rerolling the fire protection for villager because I honestly wasn't sure if it was going to work in better Minecraft or not. But it did, and on top of that, after only three rerolls, this guy gave me a mending enchantment for a measly 12 emeralds, which was huge. So I went over and grabbed some emeralds and books from my chest, and I bought myself a juicy three limited edition copies of Mending. And of course, I trapped this guy in a block prison because he was now super valuable. And now that I had a new Mending friend, it was time for me to go back out exploring for some more loot because to be honest, Armcraft had spoiled me with loot and I wanted more. Anyways, I left the snowy area and I found myself in a swamp full of pools of, um, you know what, never mind. And after leaving the swamp, I found yet another battle tower, and honestly, these things are too easy, and the loot is way too subpar, but you know the drill. I ran up breaking any of the spawners, and I stole all of the gold blocks and the waystone off of the top floor, and of course, I went down emptying each chest of their valuables, and there wasn't really much that was new. However, I did get a couple of not-that-great enchanted books, so, I mean, I, I guess that's something, right? And speaking of something, let's just take a couple of minutes to look at the view from up here. Like, just look at that mountain over there with the trees on the sides of it. This mod pack just looks so damn good. On the 22nd day, I continued exploring until I found probably the best thing in this entire mod pack. That's right, Moo Bloom, my beloved. Just look at what Dream stole from us. Rip, Moo Bloom, you will be missed. Anyways, I unfortunately had to leave behind my beloved, and I then found myself in the middle of a field full of more structures to loot. And first up on my list was yet another basic battle tower where the battle part was apparently available for $9.99 in the better Minecraft EA store. Because once again, there was like zero mobs and there wasn't much battle to this battle tower. But after all, I did still steal all of the gold on the top, and I got myself another waystone and some more pretty run-of-the-mill loot. And after this, I found this cool pit of probably death. Nope. I continued on through this field while beating on some crunchy cows for their meat and leather. That's an interesting sentence. And then I saw it in the distance. Just look at that massive, awesome tower. And to the left of it was yet another one of those massive pillager castles. And to its right was a brand new village with another baby tower behind it. There were so many choices, too many choices. So the first thing that I did was visit the nearby village, and there wasn't really much going on here, but I did something a little quirky and relatable by robbing all of them of their food. And not long after that, while looking through villager houses, I stumbled upon a low-key gold mine. Because this chest had three free ender pearls. Anyways, at this point the sun was going down, so before I teleported back home to dump more loot, I checked out this nearby gatekeeper's house, and at this point, something clicked inside of my massive brain. Inside of all of these dudes' houses, there were these blocks that looked like they could have been portals. And I was thinking, nah, that's not a portal. But in this place, it was, it was pretty obvious. So maybe in the future, I can figure out how to light it up and go through whatever portal this was. That is, until I realized something else even more massive brain. Each gatekeeper had a trade for something called a zeal lighter for eight emeralds and that might just be what i need except i was now emerald poor because i bought all those mending books so instead of doing that i ended up going back home for the night and i organized all of my stuff back into my dump chest so that way i could loot more the next day and on day 23 i teleported back to the village and i began heading towards that massive structure and as i got closer i noticed this very ominous lack of an entrance downstairs so i began digging a hallway through and i was starting to think that there was nothing inside of here and it was all just for show until i hit this super dark dungeon in the middle and inside there were these super beefy withers skeletons that had spider mob heads on. It kind of feels like this place was inspired by Hypixel Skyblock, not gonna lie. But anyways, now that I was here, it was going to take a lot for me to leave. 
because I smell actual good loot inside. So I used my new vantage point to smack up these super resistance guys and none of them hit me, but to be honest, it kind of felt like if they did, they would one shot me. So I was being very careful to get away from them. And after I cleaned up the horde that was spawning, I built my way over to their spawner and I broke it. And now that things were a little safer, I looted the nearby chest and the loot wasn't that great, but after all, this was only the first floor, so I didn't really expect all too much. And after looting the chest, I saw a nearby spider spawner that I began building over to until this mega flash spider sped his way into my face. These guys were insanely fast, but not faster than their own mortality because I ran over in the dark and I control alt deleted their spawner so I wouldn't have to deal with any more of them. Hopefully not foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing. Anyways, after finishing off the spider spawner, I searched the ground for any drops because these guys were holding diamond swords after all. And holy mother of loot, one of them dropped a half durable sharpness to diamond sword, which was busted. Goaded, some may even say. It was safe to say that I was very excited about this drop, although I was also a little more scared now to get hit by any of those guys because they all had sharpness too. And I had learned that all of those spiders were one shot kills, even with an iron sword, so all I had to worry about now was the poison. And after this, I ended up getting a little ballsy and I ran into each spider room nearby and I quickly broke the spawners before wiping out the spiders. And while here, I began smacking this regular spider like four times until I realized something. These guys had 70 freaking health. This was only the bottom floor. How much worse were things going to get? At this point, thoughts of just how bad the top floor could end up being were quickly flooding my head. But that wasn't enough to stop me because I continued slowly chipping away at the spiders for the rest of day 23 and most of the next day, day 24. And while I was here I found this little goblin trader guy who ended up having busted overpowered trades. I mean at least they would be busted overpowered if I was rich but I'm not. It turns out that these guys could be used to get crazy enchanted pickaxes that I don't think you can get otherwise. Plus I could now trade basic cobble for emeralds. So in the hopes that he wouldn't despawn, I trapped him in a hole so that way I could go back home and get a name tag for him. So on day 25, I teleported back to the dungeon tower from my base with the brand new waypoint that I had placed and I gave this guy the very rightful name Gojo because his trades are mega overpowered. Let me know in the comments if you know which anime is that from, by the way. Anyways, though, while I was back here, I attempted to finish off the full floor. I quickly ran back into the spider area, and there were no more spawners, but I did find a chest while lighting up the area, and there wasn't really much here. However, I did find a protection for a pair of chainmail boots in my inventory. And after lighting up the area, I saw yet another spawner that I quickly ran up and broke, and I made my way to the final room. And there was something walking around on the freaking ceiling. They kept shooting me with a bow, and I had zero way to do anything about him. So I went back to my base, and I got myself a bow and some arrows, and I came back ready to 1v1 this boy off of the ceiling. And just like my daddy was gone. Joke's on him though, I didn't want to 360 no scope him anyways. And now that he was gone, I headed up the ladder, and apparently this was how you get to the other floors. And now that I was on the next floor, I quickly ran in and I blocked off every single side and I went around lighting up the area with safety torches that you could in fact put on your porch. I then spent the rest of the day smacking around these guys and expanding the safe territory of this floor and the chests still weren't too insane, but they were definitely getting better. Plus, I now had an enchantment table and two of those withers ended up dropping their skulls. On day 26, I finished off the wither portion of this floor and I was fighting off more spiders and apparently creepers. That is until I finally had a prime opportunity to run in and delete the spawner before the mobs in the other rune caught on. I then cleaned up the remaining spiders and I quickly blocked off the rain of arrows that they had spammed at me and now I was safe to loot this room. Things were getting better and better because this place was full of coal blocks. And of course, I also found a chest that had some more coal and similar loot to the first floor. And now there was only one room left to fight and it was full of anti-gravity bow boys that did way too much damage for their own good. So instead of sitting here unloading the 10 arrows that it took to destroy them into their ugly faces, I instead cheesed it by covering myself up with blocks and I went over and broke their spawner and I stole the loot from their chest. See you later suckers. At this point I had finished the second floor, however my inventory was full, so I was going back to my base until on the way down I noticed a second goblin just kind of chilling here. 
And this man had the same enchantment offers, but for an axe and a shovel. So I might as well keep him here too. I mean, why not? And after running to my base and back, I gave him the name Bakugo because of his explosive personality. Get it? And at this point, all of my armor and tools were looking pretty rough. And I'm sure this place was only going to get harder. So instead of going up there and dying, I instead went back home to fix everything up. And at this point, it was now day 27. And upon getting home, my massive five head brain was going burr. Today, I wasn't going to make more iron armor because I wanted diamond. So I broke my conveniently now trapped cleric's job block and I smelted myself some smooth stone and I gave him a blast furnace so he would become an armorer. And as you guessed it by now, I had plenty of coal and iron to level this guy up. And in no time, he had diamond leggings and boots with some pretty garbo enchantments. And I was going to trade with him but he was now stuck in bed and refused to get up. Honestly, relatable. So instead of trading, I spent the night sleeping like a peasant. On day 28, I woke up ready for some Diamondes and capitalism. So I ran over to my friend and I bought the leggings and boots in order for me to get enough emeralds for the other armor. I had to level him up and burn through so much iron and coal. But overall, it paid off pretty well because he gave me a prot 2 chess piece, which is honestly god tier in comparison to everything else, and he had a diamond helmet. Let's not talk about the enchantment. Anyways, I was now a man with full diamond armor. Plus, I already had mending that I could add to everything. However, now I was in need of the coveted protection for if I was going to stand any chance in a place like that. So I began re-rolling my other librarian, and after only a couple of rolls, I got an enchantment called Tinted that piqued my interest. With it, I could apparently dye the color of my armor glow when it's enchanted. So of course, I had to go into a creative world just to test this thing out. And it turns out, either purple doesn't work, or it's just the default color. Either way, the yellow looked pretty pretty cool, but honestly not cool enough to sell me on this enchantment. Maybe in the future though. So I blocked my guy in and continued re-rolling until I got an enchantment with a special rare looking color called Yatagarasu that apparently teleports you behind an enemy that you attacked, which sounds super fun but probably awful, right? Well, I didn't really know, and I really wanted to see just how this worked, so it was back to that creative world where I enchanted a sword, and I tested it out on a ship full of pirates, and, um, it did nothing. Sword did nothing. Moving on. So I went back to re-rolling him throughout the night until he refused to keep changing jobs. But, hey, at least a lot of the new enchantments were really cool, right? For day 29, I spent the entire day just re-rolling and re-rolling, and, big surprise, more re-rolling. This guy had zero interest in cooperating with me. During this, I had to pass up on so many good enchants too that it was killing me inside. I passed up on Silk Touch, Feather Falling 4, Infinity, and even Protection 3 because it might end up a little pricey. But at this point, I was thinking that I had made a mistake. Crazy, right? I, I don't really do those. Anyways, at this point it had become nighttime, and the dude stopped cooperating at all, so I was forced to once again sleep so he would go back to being as equally unhelpful as he was today. On day 30, it was back to re-rolling, and as an insult, he gave me protection 1 right off the bat, for a terrible price. And his friend also broke in again to help with this rebellion. Thanks guys, you'll love to see it. Overall, this process was terrible. I did this until the end of day 31. That's right, it took me pretty much four days of me re-rolling to try to get this enchantment. At this point, I had become desperate and I figured I should just settle for a protection to enchantment. I definitely regret not jumping on the protection three in retrospect now. But I guess this horror show was over for now. And after this, I used my very limited emeralds to buy one book and I combined it with my chest piece to give it protection 3 and breaking 2. I was finally moving up in the world. Even though protection 4 armor is far from god armor in this mod pack. But you know what? Stop reminding me. Don't want to talk about it. On day 32, now that I had the protection villager, I needed a way to actually buy the enchantments. So of course, I grabbed a fletching table and I made the last available villager that I had into a stick boy so I could do some classic capitalism with him for all of the juicy emeralds that I could ever imagine. I then used all of the wood that I had to make sticks and I traded them with him for just enough emeralds to buy another protection book. However, at this point, I was now both emerald poor and stick poor. So I spent the rest of this day slowly hacking away at some 
baby spruce trees in the nearby forest until the sun went down and at that point I could buy a second book and combine it with my chest piece to give it protection for. However at this point my stick trader stopped putting up with me scamming him so once again I had to go to sleep for the day. So on the next day, day 33, I began by buying another sharpness book and I combined it with the first and mending and I added them to my chest piece for a sweet protection for I'm breaking two and mending chest piece. And at this point, I was pretty much stuck with the enchantments that I had, but that's okay because I was now ready to go back and see just how much damage I could now do and how many hits that I could take. So I quickly made my way back to the dungeon and up to the third floor where I ran in and took out two of these spiders while sustaining practically zero damage. Things were looking insane. I then quickly deleted the spawner and the very first chest had four emeralds inside, which wasn't much, but at this point, I will take anything that I can get. I continued through this floor by slowly clearing out areas and breaking spawners, and I even ended up getting a second Sharpness 2 Diamond Sword to spawn that was almost brand new. I kept clearing out more areas until I ran into a room full of those invisible roof skeleton jerks, and they all still did a ton of damage. I used a bunch of blocks up above me as cover, and I managed to break both their spawner and steal more emeralds from their chest to fuel my enchanting quest. I then spent most of my night here until I couldn't get past those archer jerks without having arrows. So I ended up going back home defeated, and I traded for some more emeralds until I could buy three more protection two books that I could almost used for one more protection for a piece of armor. And after that, I combined the two swords for an extra half a heart of damage, and I named it the Simp Slayer. And after that, I gave my new sword friend my looting three book in the hopes of getting even more swords that I could use to eventually combine for a sweet sharpness five. On day 34, with my brand new Simp Slaying sword by my side, I was ready to take on the world. I headed back to the dungeon, and I made my way up to the fourth floor where I was absolutely slaying through mans. With my protection for armor chest, piece, I took so much less damage and I still haven't even been hit by one of those wither skeletons. Anyways, now that I had a looting three, I could now get so much more from these guys and right as I was thinking about that, another fresh diamond sword popped out of this dude. Weird sentence, I know. After getting the diamond sword, I continued through this floor while getting mad strain drops from the spiders that I could also use to trade for my Fletcher for some more emeralds. And just like that, floor four was done. Apparently, I was getting way faster at this. I entered floor 5 and I quickly began cleaning up each area until I ran into this massive pile of creepers, wither skeletons, spiders, and more ceiling jerks. So I did a pro gamer move by running ahead and breaking some of the other spawners that were contributing to this problem, and then one of the skeletons had dropped another diamond sword during the process, but I had to struggle to run in and get it because apparently all of the archers now had knockback 69. However, I still got that sword, and apparently I also scored a bonus Wither Skull. It was safe to say that I was making massive progress, and overall I was here until the end of day 35. On day 36, by the time I had gotten home, it was already midday, and I had a lot of stuff to do. I first dumped out my inventory so I could keep my sanity in check, and I began placing out all of my cobwebs to break them for some more string. And by the time I was done, and I had traded all of them for emeralds, I now had 27 more, that I then used to buy two more Protection 2 books that I added to my collection. And to end this short day with a bang, I combined my two diamond swords that I had gotten to make another Sharpness 3, and I gave it to the good old simp slayer so he was now able to defeat even tier 3 subs on twitch with his sharpness for goodness and now that my sword was ready to go for the next day i was going to go to sleep until similar to real life my brain wouldn't stop so i decided you know why not go through my chest to see exactly what i've gotten so far so i grabbed all of my gold and i combined them into almost a stack of gold blocks and then i saw my half stack of apples and i had an idea so i teleported back to the dungeon and i went over to my little goblin friends and i traded all of those apples with the two of them that definitely don't despawn when they have name tags anyways though i now had 32 more emeralds so i went back to my protection guy and his trades were getting cheaper and cheaper because because I bought so much from the other villagers, including him. So I bought a bunch more books until he leveled up, and he didn't really get any good enchantments, but now I could sell him books for emeralds. And if you haven't noticed, that entire dungeon was full of books. Those wither skeletons were looking like nerds. So now that I had a bunch more protection books, I put them all in the chest, and I had figured out that I only needed two more of them to make myself a full set of protection for armor. On day 37, I headed back to the dungeon to borrow any and all books that were in sight until my axe had broken. 
So I headed back to Paintopia to get the remaining emeralds that I needed for that full set of protection for armor, and of course, my librarian was refusing to buy any and all books. It's almost like being trapped in a box and forced to buy anything I give him was a bad thing. How ungrateful, am I right? Anyways, though, after gaslighting the protection guy, I kinda just spent today chilling around the base and constantly checking if his trades refreshed because at this point, I was very, very ready for protection for armor. And overall, I only had to wait about five minutes, but I am extremely impatient, so it felt like eons. But he had finally refreshed his trades, and he upped his price because I may have flooded the marketplace. But that was fine, because I basically had an endless supply of books, so I bought the remaining two protection two books that I needed. And after trading some more coal with my armor for the four remaining emeralds, I began combining them all into protection three books. That is, until I ran out of XP. I now had all of the books that I needed for the maximum diamond quality armor, and I was now poor XP Wise. So I guess it was time to go back to the tower dungeon for me so I could squeeze the levels out of anyone who dared to oppose me. And right before I teleported there, a blue lucky moon begun. And boy was tonight super lucky. Because as I was doing floor 8, I think? At this point I lost track. Anyways, I had gotten a potion of luck to drop and an additional wither skull, which I guess in hindsight might actually not be that lucky considering that I had looting three and I had taken out a lot of the skeletons, but don't ruin this for me. Let me have my moment. For all of day 38, I kept successfully pushing through floors and farming as much XP as I could until I hit about level 21, which was technically all I needed for now. I wanted to waste as little XP as I could, so I headed back home and I spent the rest of the night piecing things together. I bought a brand new helmet because mine was already half broken from all of those ceiling jerks shooting me in the face. Thanks for that, by the way. And I crafted a grindstone so I could disenchant it for fresh enchantments. Then I combined two of my sets of Prot 3 books to make two protection fours. And I added mending to the very first one so I could put it on my helmet, except I was now out of XP again. Maybe this mod was a lot more like Arlcraft after all. Anyway, since I now had a grindstone, I had an idea for some more free XP. So I went through all of my chests in search of any enchanted items that I could find that I didn't need and I grinded all of them up for a sweet 15 levels that I then used to give that brand new helmet protection for and mending. And just like that, half of my armor was now protection for. Plus I no longer have to worry about my helmet being, you know, shot to pieces. So I guess that was good. Now that I was even beefier, I spent the next three days, days 39 through 41, back inside of the dungeon, pushing from floor to floor, and with two pieces of protection for it, I could do so much more. At this point, even those ceiling skeletons could not stop me now. I was on a mission to finally complete this place, and things were going great. By the time it was day 40, I had enough XP to go back home and make a pair of protection for and mending leggings that I quickly put on before I headed back to loot the remaining floors. And while looting these remaining floors, there wasn't really much more inside of the chests. However, I did end up getting two more sharpness to diamond swords to drop and then at the end of day 41 while climbing yet another floor i finally saw it the night sky i had reached the final floor of the dungeon and i was really getting boss vibes that is until i saw this gorgeous looking room with a couple of poorly placed spawners that didn't really do anything and on top of that there was a ton of double chests that all had the same exact loot as pretty much all of the other floors honestly i would be more disappointed at this place if it didn't give me a ton of emeralds gold bamboo coal bones and other random useful stuff so overall this was a mission success and I might actually come back here and steal all of these gorgeous lanterns and glowstone in the future. Or I could even end up making this place a base. But honestly, probably not, because it would be way too much work to make it spawn-proof. Anyways, now that I was finally done, I watched the conveniently placed sunrise, and as Cinema Sins would say, roll credits. On the 42nd day, now that I had finished off the dungeon for good and looted everything, I teleported back to my base to dump off the massive piles of loot that I had, and I was now up to a sweet 71 emeralds from just the last two floors alone. So I used all of this new money to buy myself another mending book and a pair of diamond boots, and I combined them all to make myself my last piece of protection for in mending armor. And do you know what I was ready to go and do now? If you guessed go and take on one of those pillager castles, you would be very very, very right. I'm coming for those totems of undying. So now that I was done with that dungeon, I teleported back there to pick up two of the three waypoints that I had used as checkpoints. And while I was in here, I ended up finding a couple of chest rooms that I had skipped by accident, and they were all full of ceiling skeletons. Anyways, by the time I got back to the roof, it was already sundown, 
but that didn't stop me from doing a classic Assassin's Creed dive all the way down into the nearby river. And after this, I spent the entire night fighting this nearby bandit camp full of pillagers to test out just how powerful I became. And out of all of the chests that I looted here, I basically got nothing. These guys were a bunch of broke boys. However, for some reason, there were still so many of them and they kept spawning, but that wasn't going to stop me because I was now so much stronger than they could even imagine. On day 43, as the sun came up, I made my way over to the nearby pillager castle because I was beyond ready for those totems of undying. In the literal second that I got anywhere near the place, these boys began absolutely flooding out of the place. And honestly, just, just look at the footage. The footage will speak for itself. Look at how many of them there are. Look at all the arrows they shoot and look at all the arrows all over the place. However, even with all of these guys that were insanely cracked, I was still standing strong, taking basically no damage. And one by one, I ended up picking off each of them until things were quiet, or at least for now. I mean, just look at this battlefield though. Do you see all of those arrows? Insane. Anyways, now that things were kind of safe, I broke into the side of the castle in the hopes that a bunch of them would come piling in and I could pick them all off. And that's exactly what happened. This place was full to the brim of boyos. That is, until they all started breaking out and I was hit by the dump trucks that they call the Vindicator. Or as I would like to call them, axe holes. <laughs> Get it? I'm sorry, that was bad. Anyways, I spent the rest of this day picking off illusioners who blinded me for way too long, may I add, and any other easy targets from the outside of the castle. And I may have managed to deviously lick one of the easier chests on the outside of the castle. And let's just say the loot from here was going to be hella good. Inside of this easy access chest alone, I got an enchanted diamond helmet and two free diamonds along with a ton more gold. After this, I kept fighting as many enemies as I could through the night until some illusioners started hardcore bamboozling me and it was now raining. So I quickly ran back to the nearby waypoint and I teleported home because that was a lot to manage. It's safe to say that at this point, I really needed unbreaking three for my armor because I mean, just look at my helmet, man. It has mending and it's already half broken. On day 44, I teleported back to the castle and I began my siege by digging into part of the bottom floor and absolutely wrecking those boys KD ratio. And honestly, everything was going pretty well. I was nice and safe inside of this room while comfortably picking off the bow boys and axe holes. Clever name, I know. That is, until the Sky Demon Nation attacked. Somewhere inside of this pile of mans, there was an evoker that had begun summoning their simp army. So I went into defense mode. I ran back outside to get enough distance so they would stop spawning Vex, but for some reason, more and more and more of them just kept pouring out and they were melting through my helmet. And then I saw him. There was a second evoker summoning tons of these aimbotting sky demons. So one by one, I broke parts of the wall so I could let out the evokers and target them. And after the first one came out into the open, I ferociously sniped him down in his prime. And he had dropped me my very first totem of undying that I very quickly ran up to and I swapped it with my shield. And after that, I continued dealing with these monsters while desperately trying to break out the second evoker. And after he was finally free, I took my shot and just like that cringy TikTok trend. I never miss ya. Can't believe I just said that. I need to wash my mouth out with soap after saying that. Anyways, after this clown was down, I ran up to take his totem and I noticed that mine was now missing from my offhand. However, I didn't die. So I checked my inventory and I noticed there was like a bobble type menu and apparently totems of undying count as a charm and they can go inside of this charm slot, which means I could now still use my shield while also equipping a totem, which was super pog. Either way though, I count today as a huge success. I weakened their forces and I got a bunch of diamond armor and loot from the only chest that I managed to actually get to. However, at this point, my helmet was down to 5% durability, which was rough. So I went back home and I grindstoned a bunch of my enchanted items for just enough XP and I combined my helmet with a new one because I still was desperately in need of unbreaking three. For day 45, I collected all of my current emeralds, I made two lecterns, and I headed back to old Paintopia so I could reroll a villager that I 100% didn't trap in the hopes of getting unbreaking and this was honestly super insulting. After a few rerolls, he gave me protection 4 and for only 33 emeralds. And let me tell you, I really, 
really wanted to keep it, but technically I didn't need it, and it still kind of kills me inside. Why? So anyways, I kept re-rolling him, and shortly after that, he gave me Sharpness 4, which is another thing that I really wanted, but I didn't need yet. And at this point, I realized this guy was playing games with my head. So I kept re-rolling him until finally he gave me something else that I honestly couldn't resist. He offered me Infinity, and I didn't really have that many arrows for my bows, so I caved in and I bought it, and I came back the next day, day 46, and began trading with another villager all day long. And out of all of the rerolls that this man had given me, the only thing that ended up being interesting was Fortune 2, but this time, I was staying strong. I did not cave. So I kept rerolling him until the sun had set, and he kept going to sleep every time I gave him a new job, and finally, I had gotten Unbreaking. And yeah, it, it, was, it was Unbreaking 3, totally, not Unbreaking 1. But honestly, I was very desperate, and very unlucky, and for only 9 emeralds, honestly, it wasn't that bad. Overall, it would end up costing me about 36 emeralds to get Unbreaking 3. And unfortunately, I had to waste some XP for that as well, but it is what it is, so I bought as many books as I could, which ended up being a measly 6. On the next day, day 47, I went back to my house, and I spent a lot of the day desperately scrounging for enough XP to craft these books into Unbreaking 3. I traded some strings, some sticks, and some iron, and books with all of my villagers to get enough XP, and in the process, I almost fully mended all of my gear. And after that, I crafted the books together for a nice Unbreaking 3, and it was only going to cost me 37 whole levels to add it to my helmet because I had previously repaired it. At this point, I was just better off making a new one, and that was going to be my new plan. So at this point, I was ready to head back to the Death Castle, and hopefully I erased all of the evokers that they had up their sleeves so that way no vex were coming for these cheeks. And upon getting back there, I was immediately jumped by a bunch more vindicators that I don't know why, but they just do ridiculous damage. So while running away from them, I one by one picked them off until I built up and outsmarted the remaining smooth brains. And now that the outside was finally safe, at least I hope, I went inside and let me tell you now, the loot in here is absolutely broken. I spent the rest of the night checking each room, lighting them up, and looting all of these crazy chests that were full of diamonds, gold, iron, and crazy enchanted armors, including diamond. So I placed my remaining waystone inside the library and I went back home to check on my stacks and overall, this is everything that I got from just the bottom area. I ended up with 9 diamonds, 11 gold blocks, 14 iron blocks, plus a ton of other loot and XP from all of this enchanted stuff. Overall, today was a good haul. On day 48, I fast traveled back to the inside of the castle, and I spent the entire day building my way around the lower floors in the safest way possible, because during the entire time I was here, all I could hear was a horde of vindicators following me by my every move above me, which was pretty terrifying. However, that was not enough to stop me from control alt deleting any of them that had jumped down to get me. And each of these chests that I had found at this were full of even more busted overpowered loot. My inventory could not handle all of this dank loot. After finishing the inside rooms, I made my way to the last part of the bottom floor that was kind of this little outside area. And then I saw it. There was a whole horde of guys outside of the base that was beyond scary. If I was out there, that was enough to easily kill me. However, because of my massive throbbing brain, instead I broke one of the iron bars and I just kind of sat here sending them all to the doom dimension one by one. And my beautiful looting three sword turned them all into a bunch of juicy emeralds. And now that things were more safe, I had access to a bunch more chests. However, at this point my inventory was once again full, so it was back to my base to dump said loot. I mean, just look at all of this enchanted stuff inside of this chest. I even ended up getting Feather Falling 4, and to top it all off, I now had 25 Diamondes. I was living like Larry. On day 49, I started out my day by giving my bow infinity because I was pretty much out of arrows and I desperately needed it. And after that, I noticed that my sword was looking a little not so great, so I sacrificed all of my new enchanted items for their XP and I repaired it. Man, am I not at all in a good place XP wise right now. But for now, I was just going to have to deal with it. So I was ready to go back to the castle. And let me tell you now, I thought that the worst was behind me at this point because I had already taken out the evokers and everything was going to be fine, right? Well, um, no, it was the complete opposite. I finished stuffing all of the loot from the bottom floors into my inventory. And I began making my way up the middle of the tower. And there was a room full of evokers, illusioners, and everything else 
else that Satan thought would be a good match for me. And honestly, things still weren't that bad yet. It was pretty rough, but I did clean up the room enough and I hunted down not one, but both of those evokers and I cleaned up all of their vex and things were going to get better now, right? There was a bunch more chests and each of them had more crazy loot. So things were looking really good. That is until I made my way up this final set of stairs and I ran into another set of evokers and illusioners that gave me the most terrifying experience I think I've ever had in Minecraft. That is other than Arlcraft. These guys were chasing me down and absolutely obliterating my shield, my helmet, and most importantly, my health. They got me down to two hearts and a vindicator was still chasing me down. And if I didn't have absorption of the golden apple, this jump would have killed me. But I was on half a heart and the terror was far from over because there was probably more than 50 or so Vex that all wanted my gamer butt cheeks and they would not stop. I desperately parkoured my way around the ground terrain of the castle until I finally got back to my waypoint and I fled. And honestly, with the way my armor is now, I don't know how much more of that place I was going to be able to fight against. I knew it was going to be hard, but not that hard. And yes, that is what she said. So anyways, overall, I now had an additional four totems of undying, and this whole incident took me until the end of day 52. For day 53, I kind of just spent the entire day doing random small things that I could to give me some XP so I could begin repairing my armor. I started off by fast traveling to the Too Much Loot Village, and I spent most of my daylight just mining coal for some basic XP that wasn't going to try to kill me. I mean, it was also kind of a win-win because I could then trade that coal for more XP and for emeralds with my villagers. I continued I continued doing this until the sunset, and I tried running around and killing mobs for XP. However, they ended up giving me less than the coal, which was honestly kind of sad. So instead, I went back home for the night and I grinded all of my gear for XP and I mass traded with my different villagers until all four pieces of my armor were fully fixed. And now I needed enough XP for Unbreaking 3, which you probably guessed is going to be a ton. But hey, good news is I leveled up my Mending Book guy and his new enchantments were completely useless to me. Nice. On day 54, I had an idea of how to grind for more XP with the current resources that I had. So I teleported back to the Loot Village waypoint and I made my way over to the nearby battle tower that I had left like 20 years ago. I quickly ran up each floor, except this time I lit up each of the spawners because I was now going to try to turn this place into some jank looking mob farm. And yes, of course, I broke the disgusting Vex spawner up top because ew, Vex are bad. And now that everything was in place, I went down and looted all of the chests and I slowly broke away each and every one of the floors inside while also blocking off the windows. So this whole tower would become a dark drop pit. And this process took until about day 57 where things were going pretty well. At this point, I had built the bottom killing chamber and I was beginning to place the water to push the mobs into the center and then a blood moon spawned. And the mobs that I was seeing in the distance looked awful to deal with. But since none of them were spawning near me, I kind of just kept working. That is until a pile of creepers were trying to jump me. And honestly, I didn't want them to blow up my new spawners. So I quickly fled home, dodging all of the death, 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 and whatever that wizard looking thing was that was alakazamming that iron golem into the sky. No, thank you. Anyways, once I made my way home, I waited away the rest of the blood moon by watching the chaos unfold on those poor villagers in the spruce village next door. Sorry guys, but also kind of not sorry. On day 58, after the blood moon had vanished, I grabbed all of my buckets and I headed back to the mob grinder. And this time I was ready to finish the place by placing the remaining water buckets that I needed. And then I took all of the torches off of each of the spawners and this makeshift spawn tower was now fully operational. So I spent all of today in the next two days straight just grinding away at these spawns for some surprisingly very good XP. However, during this, the spiders didn't exactly work that well for this style of spawner but honestly beggars cannot be choosers overall this spawner was going ham plus with my looting sword i also netted a ton of bones that i definitely didn't need and more importantly string for emeralds but at this point now that i was using my sword so much more i also needed to fix it up because it was taking a beating however that was fine because the xp was really flowing and apparently so were the music discs even though there were no creepers weird anyways by the time it was the night of day 60 I had enough XP to finally add Unbreaking 3 to my helmet. Goodbye XP because this was such a waste. And of course, I had to go through and name it a good old fashioned weeb reference. So I named it Moomin Rider. Let me know if you know which anime that's from down in the comments down below. Also, no googling. That's cheating. On day 61, now that my helmet had Unbreaking 3 and my XP was once again gone, it was back to that sweet mob grinder for some more XP. 
So this way I could fix up my sword and the rest of my armor. However, first my sword was definitely going to need some love before it breaks. So I traveled over to my original village and I bought as many Unbreaking 1 books as I could. Then I traveled back home and grabbed a mending book and some anvils. So this way I could upgrade as I went for maximum efficiency with levels. And now that I had those resources, I traveled back to the XP farm where I would slave away until all of my gear was busted. Or I guess the opposite of that if you think about it. Anyways, I began hacking away at skeletons and spiders while combining my unbreaking books together and adding the unbreaking three to my mending book. And now I was going to need an additional 27 more levels to add those to my sword. However, this was GG easy because this mob farm printed XP. So I quickly deleted enough piles of mobs to hit level 27 and I added the enchants to my boy here, Simp Slayer. And now that he could finally heal from all of the trauma that I've put him through, it's gonna suck trying to give him sharpness 5. Just saying that now. But all was good because I spent the rest of the night grinding away XP while also fixing good old Simp Slayer up. And on day 62, I went back to Paintopia for some more beautiful capitalism because my Unbreaking One Here guy owed me some books. And now that I had the rest of the Unbreaking that I would need for now, it was back to Lay XP Farm, where I grinded enough XP to combine all of my Unbreaking books into two Unbreaking 3 for my legs and boots, and one Unbreaking 2 book for my chest piece. And after only 11 XP, I combined my chest piece with the Unbreaking 2 book so it could reach its final form. And now I just needed enough XP to finish repairing my sword into Unbreakify, definitely a word, both my legs and my boots. So I spent the rest of day 62 all the way until the morning of day 63, just kind of AFKing in my platform that's high enough for the very top spawner to work and grinding out mad piles of mobs for enough XP to work on my armor. And let's just say that it might have been a pretty bad idea to AFK that long because a massive snowstorm began in the game and between the huge pile of mobs and all of that snow in the game, it definitely started chugging. But the XP that I got from this was enough to blow your mind. It was insane. I got enough XP to almost instantly fully repair my sword and I gave Unbreaking 3 to my leggings and my boots and my armor was now officially decked out and ready for those sussy evokers and vex. However, I wasn't done here because I had now amassed a chest full of enchanted bows and most of them had power too, which gave me a big brain idea. So I began combining different bows together until I got a power four and I'm breaking three bow and I was going to add it to my infinity bow. However, not before I got power five. And overall, this was a super expensive process that took until the end of day 64 when I finally combined the last two bows together to get infinity, power five, and I'm breaking three. And of course, I named this bow Shooty McShootface in honor of someone from Borderlands 2. If you know, you know. Anyways, now that my bow was done, it was not going to be fun to repair in the future because it costed 63 levels. Yikes. On day 65, I woke up with my brand new set of unbreaking gear, including my sword and bow, and I was feeling good. But at this point, I was missing something. I needed an ender chest. So I went over to my loot chest for some diamonds, and I crafted myself a basic diamond pickaxe, and I traveled back to the first dungeon that I had thought so I could steal one of the piles of obsidian. And while I was here breaking them, it turned out that each of these obsidian pile things had three free golden blocks inside stonks. So after stealing their gold and taking all of the obsidian, I walked out of here with about 28 obsidian and I smacked a couple of witches on the way out because for some reason they kept spawning in and one of them gave me a free three potions of luck for some odd reason. But you know what? I'll take it. Anyways, after heading back home, I made myself a nether portal downstairs because I was now in need of blaze rods if I wanted to make an ender chest, let alone go to the end. And after going through the portal, it felt like I was in another world because something was different. The biomes were different, there was a terrifying tentacle monster down below in the lava, and there were mobs everywhere. So, the first thing I did was take a shot at the tentacle monster down below because, you know, why not? And for some reason, he blew up. I guess that's just what happens when you bottle your emotions too much. I, I I wouldn't know that. Don't look at me. Anyways, those explody boys were not why I was here. So I began climbing up my way to this nearby set of nether bricks in the hopes that I had spawned directly next to a nether fortress. And while I was here, I noticed a casual pile of piglin brutes 
nearby that I wanted nothing to do with. So I continued digging up and huge surprise, this structure was a dud. Inside was a small room with a zombie piglin spawner that I honestly shouldn't have broken because I could have made a gold farm, but we all make mistakes, right? That is except for me, of course, obviously. On day 66, I kept exploring around, but there wasn't much else in this part of the nether, so I went back home so that way I could build myself another nether portal somewhere else. And the second I teleported back, I was ecstatic to see another blood moon had risen. So instead of sleeping away the night, I kind of just AFK'd the last of the night away while taking random pop shots at different mobs to kind of just see what they would do. And while I was doing this, one of them dropped me a free ice staff, which I probably will never use. Anyways, once the blood moon was finally over, I fast traveled back to Paintopia so I could build a new nether portal. And this time, I did not make it one too high like I always do. Don't know why I do that, it just happens. So after finishing the portal, I gave it a light and I went through and I spawned in this crazy ice biome that had snow magma that for some reason still hurt me. Overall, this biome was gorgeous. And what's that I see in the distance? If you guessed it, you are probably right. My very first nether fortress. Honestly, with waypoints, it is so much easier dealing with the nether. So I began making my way over there while placing some torches to make a path and I was stopped by a distraction. I found this small netherrack tower that was full of piglins and I saw some chests ripe for the robbing. So I whipped out Shooty McShootface and I deleted any and every pigmen that I could that I saw guarding areas around the tower and I went down there to steal those chests. And to my surprise, downstairs area had some nether warts and soul sand. So now if I didn't find any in the nether fortress, I was still good to go. And after stealing that, I checked all of the chests and I got some of my very first nether scraps from these boys along with way too many enchanted items that I struggled to stuff into my inventory. Overall, I didn't do that much today, but it was still a mega successful day, so I headed back home to grindstone all of that armor and tools and to clean out my inventory. On day 67, I went back to the nether ready to take on whatever that fortress had in store for me. And the very first thing I got to see after building over was a wither skeleton with a bow. And honestly, those things... I'm so glad they're not in vanilla Minecraft because they suck. They managed to shoot you from a distance and still give you the withering effect. However, I did manage to take him out and he dropped me my very first wither school in this world. That was a sign that today was going to be great. And great it was because right after getting here, they immediately found a blaze spawner. And the guys practically printed blaze rods with simp slayer by my side here. It was looting three for the win and things were going GG easy. That is until he spawned. Apparently in this mod pack, all of the mobs from each of the past mob boats are in here. These guys were super cool, their animations were amazing, and if I wasn't decked out in full prot 4 diamond armor with a golden apple resistance, I'm sure he would make my life getting blaze rods a living hell. Anyways though, since all my armor and tools were good, I quickly took him out and I ended up with 26 blaze rods and it was safe to say that I was ready to go. So I placed down a waypoint so that way I can come here anytime I wanted for some more blaze rods and I headed back home for the day. And now that I was home and I had the blaze powder that I needed, I crafted some ender pearls into eyes of ender and I teleported back to the dungeon to get enough obsidian for some ender chests. Then while crafting the ender chest, I was thinking about how I needed silk touch in order to pick them back up until I thought about something that I had saved in my recipes from earlier when looking at backpacks. I could make a sewing table and use it to craft myself something called an ender backpack, which is honestly crazy. This thing is insane. It was like a portable ender chest that I only had to right click to access. So I placed down one of the other ender chests to test out if they connected to each other and they worked perfectly. And I was absolutely stoked. Even though it didn't look like each time I opened this thing, it was going to cost me 1% of its durability. So it looks like they were only worth about 100 uses, which to be fair, in comparison to opening an ender chest, you know, placing it and breaking it every time, I can't really complain, I'll take it. That is, until the morning of day 68, I woke up with a genius idea of enchanting the backpack. So I grabbed a book of mending to test it out and let's go, it freaking works. So I quickly teleported over to Paintopia and I grabbed four Unbreaking 1 books for Unbreaking three and I headed back home and combined them all into one unbreaking three mending book which I didn't have enough xp to then add to the ender chest where I quickly gathered enough levels and I named the ender bag backpack backpack 
Yeah, don't look at me all disappointed like. And now that it was enchanted, I tried using it and it no longer took 1% durability. Plus, I could now mend it in my offhand when grinding for XP, which kind of feels weird. But honestly, I would be down for this to be in vanilla Minecraft because it makes almost no difference. Anyways, though, now that I have my backpack, I was curious and I tried putting it into my backpack slot to save on storage. And of course, it didn't work. So I checked the crafting recipes of other backpacks and apparently I now needed tanned leather, which is made by smelting bound leather, which I then get by using a sewing table. So I gathered leather from my chests and I bound them, smelted them, and I crafted myself a white backpack because that was the only color wool that I actually had. And I added it to my backpack slot, which I had no clue how to use besides taking it off and opening it. But either way, I was a very happy guy because I was a hoarder, as I always say. Hoarder gang, rise up. On day 69, in honor of the lucky number and me finally being prepared to take on the rest of the pillager castle, I went back. And at first things were pretty tame, that is until I hit new territory. And there were still so many evokers, vindicators, and illusioners up here. But hey, at least I finally figured out how to properly kill illusioners because not gonna lie, I had zero clue up until now. But that does not take away from the fact that today was terrifying because these evokers and vindicators still get me super low in health and they melt through my armor durability. Honestly, without beacons, I don't think these castles are even worth taking on anymore. Even though I still get a ton of loot from it while I was here, it's a lot of loot and stuff that I low-key kind of don't need right now. Anyways, I continued on and I ended up finding an enchanting room with two chests of OP loot and of course I stole the enchantment table now that I had a diamond pickaxe. And not too far from this, I found myself a cluster of barrels full of insane loot that ended up putting my ender bag to the test. Overall, I wanted to defeat this place once and for all today, but after fighting and managing to kill one of the last two evokers up top, things were getting way too dicey because they both began piling up the sky demons and they were hitting like mini flying dump trucks and at this point without my golden apples i would probably be dead by now and i was quickly running out of them so i mlg water bucketed my way down the side of the building and i quickly fled back home for the night but don't worry because i may have lost this battle but i will be winning the war. So on day 70, I went out on an apple gathering mission in the fields near the Loot Waystone village so that way I could replenish my golden apples without trading with farmers. And I ran around these fields plucking red apples from trees for pretty much the entire day. And while I was out here, I also found a pillager outpost hidden away inside of this spruce forest. And they had a banner boy that I had zero interest in dealing with because I'm not really a huge fan of raids spawning in my base, you know? Anyways, by the time the day was over and the sun was was going down, I had only gotten about 14 apples, which for a whole day of work is pretty trash, but you know what? I will take what I can get. So I went back home and I crafted all 14 of these apples into golden boys and I grabbed my one god apple to use as a trump card just in case that last evoker ended up being an anime antagonist. And on day 71, now that I was prepared, I traveled back to the castle and I made my way up to the top of the building and I broke in so I could take on the remaining enemies. And things went easy peasy just as planned. I quickly ran in and chased down what I thought was the final evoker, but it turned out that there was about four more of them, which I guess would really explain just how many Vex were spawning. But nonetheless, I defeated each and every one of them without taking that much damage. And now that I had finally defeated everyone in this entire castle, over the course of like one fourth of this video, may I add, I began searching for my winnings. And while I was looking around, I saw this purple wool that I decided to take so that way I could craft a purple backpack to match my channel colors. And it turns out that there was a hidden chest inside of it. And this chest didn't really have anything particularly crazy, but while I was organizing the loot into my inventory, a cave spider attacked me from above. And as you probably know, cave spiders don't really spawn without a spawner, and my loot senses were tingling. So I built my way up and there was an entire attic with some spawners and a ton of barrels. I quickly cleaned up all of the cave spiders with my bow and sword, and the chests broke my mind. There were so many of them, and they were all filled with stacks of gold, iron, diamonds, and crazy enchanted gear. Ironically though, I needed a good pickaxe and axe, and out of all the things inside of these chests, neither of those things were present. They gave me nothing but armor and no tools. Anyways though, after looting most of these chests, I very quickly ran out of inventory space in both my ender bag, my backpack, and my inventory, so I had to go back to the waypoint to dump my inventory. But either way, this place had a total of 37 diamonds inside of all the chests. That's right, just this attic area had 37 
diamonds. It was very safe to say that I had things made golden. On day 72, after cleaning out my inventory, I headed back to the castle to climb back up and finish stealing all of my winnings from all of those epic battles. And somehow now there were two new evokers just kind of hanging out here. I have no clue where they came from, but just like the others, they were no longer welcome here, so I control alt deleted to both of them. And I may have casually struggled cleaning up the vex that they spawned while wasting a lot of golden apples. I don't really want to talk about it. Anyways, though, after that Christmas surprise was buried in the repressed memory section of my brain, I went back up to the attic and I looted the rest of what I wanted from all all of the barrels, while also stealing all of the hay bales, watermelons, and cobwebs for string, because I fought hard for this loot, damn it, and I'm going to take all of it. And now that this entire castle was fully looted and all of the mans were now memories, I climbed up to the roof to watch the sunset, and it was beautiful. But like all beautiful things in life, the sunset had to come to an end. So I climbed my way down and I headed back to the looting village, so that way I could take my castle waypoint home with me. And once I got home, these are what my huge loot chests ended up looking like. Do you like what you see? Because I know I do. If you're proud of me for defeating that massive pile of craziness, don't forget to leave a like down below because I know I'm proud and just look at all of this gorgeous loot that I got. It's beautiful. On the next day, day 73, now that I had conquered both the massive wooden dungeon and the evil pillager castle, I was ready for my next big challenge. Today, I wanted to take on Frostmaw, but I wasn't quite sure if I was ready, so I tried taking a couple of pop shots at him, and like I figured, he was immune to arrows, so that way you can't cheese him. But that was okay, because that makes this battle a lot more fun and challenging. So I ate a golden apple for that super important resistance buff, and I made my way down the hill to take him on sword to fist combat style. Now honestly, this battle was pretty intense, so cue epic music. And just like that, I had taken down Frostmaw, even before I had beaten the Ender Dragon. And he even dropped his ice weapon that I could use to freeze enemies in place. Which would hopefully come in handy with all of those pillagers in the castle next door. Either way, this battle was the perfect amount of fun and challenging. And if you notice, I had a very close call when he slammed me down on the ground to three hearts. However, I still pulled through and we defeated our first boss. And as much as I now wanted to leave those pillagers alone and get a beacon before I came back, I of course, knowing me, sat here sniping them from the distance until a siege of Boboys poured out from the place, turning the battlefield into that scene from the movie 300. Anyways, after all of that chaos was finally over, I was wandering around the snowy plains looking for some Endermen so I could then find the stronghold next. However, something was kind of off. The game felt oddly laggy and no mobs seemed to be spawning, until I was randomly yeeted off of a cliff, like 20 blocks, which I of course didn't get in recording. And then all of the mobs just kind of started spawning. However, now my bow stopped working completely. Every time I shot it, it just kind of like went to the ground. And things kind of clicked now because back when I was shooting all of those pillagers, my bow shots didn't really make much sense. Sometimes they would overshoot and sometimes they would undershoot and not in the way that you normally would expect. So you know what? I kind of just figured tonight was not the night to go Enderman hunting. On day 74, I started off the day by replacing my long gone friend, the Iron Axe, with this luscious and decadent diamond one. Only took 74 days to do that. Anyways, I didn't really know what to do today, but I know I wanted to get more loot. So I decided since I was now super buff gamer boy, with protection 4, that I would head over to that nearby castle that I tried about 20 days ago that had the invisible boys inside. And upon getting here, it turned out that there was actually nothing really here. Yep, no spawners, just a couple of chests with some free iron, some horse armor, and five much needed apples. Plus, I also got a free ender pearl, which honestly, I'll take it if I do want to go to the end after all. And now that I had finished exploring that disappointment of a building, I just kind of continued off into the snowy forest looking for something else interesting to do. And boy, did I find it. I ended up running into this witch looking mushroom house that didn't really seem like much until I discovered this whole mushroom village that was full of piglin brute spawners that looked like mushrooms. Kind of funny, honestly. While I was here, I thought about saving a couple of these spawners for the future farm or something, but instead I ended up breaking most of them because it kind of felt like it was going to be too much effort. 
That is until I found a god spawner. This thing spawned in piglin brutes riding on cows. Which you may be thinking, you know, who cares? Well, first off, you'd be mean for thinking that. And second off, cows equals one of the most efficient sources of food. I would also like to point out in my notes there, I wrote one of the moist efficient sources of food. Pretty funny typo, not gonna lie. Anyways though, steak is god tier. And I could use this spawner to fully automate this into a steak farm in the future which would give me infinite and efficient food. Plus, I could also turn it into like a makeshift XP farm if I wanted to deal with all of the piglins, which I probably don't. But anyways, I placed down my remaining waypoint and I named it Crime Against Cows because that's probably what was going to take place here in the future. And after claiming that place for some pretty unethical future plans, I continued exploring through the forest until I ran into another one of those cobble zombie dungeons, similar to the one that I explored earlier in the video when I was a lot less prepared. Anyways though, things were now different because I was a full diamond boy, so I made my way down to the main room and after blocking off all of the entrances, I actually decided to go down into the weird maze of catacombs below. And boy was I glad that I did not do this before, because things down here were super hectic. There were spawners everywhere that spawned a ton of zombies, plus skeletons that had swords and axes, which did a pretty decent amount of damage even with diamond armor. And to make it all worse, there was ice everywhere from some weird ice mineshaft that kept melting every time I placed torches down next to them. And honestly, it just made my life so much harder while I was down here. That's okay, because coming down here was super profitable. And you know how we feel about profit around here. There were chests everywhere that had iron, gold, emeralds, apples, which I really needed, and freaking diamond tools inside of them, which is kind of also ironic because I basically no longer needed them. Overall though, I was down here until the end of day 77 and I had made out pretty well. I ended up with this entire pile of random loot which included one diamond, 17 more apples for golden apples, and three diamond axes, one diamond sword, and one diamond shovel. Overall, pretty poggers haul. And on day 78, after finally leaving that zombie catacomb area, it was conveniently nighttime, which was perfect for my next hunt, because I was still in need of some elusive endermen. So I spent the rest of this night running around in the cold, taking out any mobs that I could find, and unfortunately I only ended up finding one enderman, and he dropped one singular pearl. Which was okay, I guess, but you know what wasn't okay? Just how awful the snowy mobs are inside of this biome. There are ice skeletons everywhere that constantly kept giving me slowness. There are ice creepers that, to be honest, I don't really know what they do, but I don't really want to. And there are zombies that like to hit me with their balls. Weird sentence, I know. But at least there was some icing on this cake made of dung, because iceologers were spawning here, and they were easy peasy to yeet! And they gave me free emeralds, which was a pretty nice addition to wasting my entire night inside of this field. So after taking out as many mobs as I could, I kept exploring around this area until the sun began to rise and I found a nice spruce village that I of course stole from. I mean, this wouldn't really be one of my videos without putting villagers in their place now, would it? So I first stole their waypoint that I could use in some place important if I found one. And then I found this lumberjack's chest that was way too OP for its own good. They were emeralds, iron, a heart of the sea, and two more diamonds. Man, villagers must love me or something. Not sure why though, I treat them like crap. On day 79, now that the sun was up and the roosters were sounding like dying monsters, yep, that's a thing, it was time for me to move on past this village, and like 10 inches away, there was another one of those gatekeeper cottages that normally wouldn't be a big deal, however today, I had enough emeralds on me to finally buy one of their zeal lighters so that way I could test out the portal inside of their house. And after buying the lighter, I headed up to his attic, another disturbing sentence may I add, and I right clicked the portal and it just kind of worked. It became something called an Everdon portal. So I placed down a waypoint that would lead me back here and I went through and once I got here this place blew my mind. There was an entire other dimension that was all purple, and the very first thing I noticed was this massive, gorgeous looking building that I absolutely needed to explore. However, as I began making my way towards it, this hostile looking creature spawned in front of me, and he ended up wanting a bite of my butt cheeks. So, I hit him back with a good old simp slayer, and apparently regular weapons do less damage to mobs here. So at this point, I decided to do some quick research, 
And it turns out that the blue book that I had bought a long time ago was actually super useful for telling me what was related to this dimension. Plus, it turns out that there were two dimensions. The first one is the dimension of eternal day, and this one was the dimension of eternal night. And it turns out that each of these dimensions have different dungeons with boss mobs inside. And that tower that I was looking at contains one of those boss mobs. However, I should probably find some of this dimension's ores first, so that way I can make some more effective weapons. So I went back through the portal and I teleported back to the village near my house, so that way I could steal their waypoint and use it as a checkpoint in the other dimension. And after that, I went back home as the sun went down and I began preparing for my journey. I first dumped out the ton of loot that I had found while in the catacombs into my chests, and I crafted all 17 of my new apples into more golden ones just in case the fight goes south. And after this, I spent the rest of the night setting up my inventory so I would be ready to take on anything that this dimension could throw at me. Or at least, that's what I had thought. On the morning of day 80, I fast traveled back went through the portal, and all I can say is pain, and not just because it's my name. Upon first walking up on the building, I tried placing a torch inside, and apparently you can't place blocks in here, which was totally not an ominous sign in the slightest. So ignoring the fact that I couldn't place blocks, I began climbing up the spiral stairs while low-key losing my mind with fear, and the first enemy that I found ended up being this witch, that instead of shooting her from a distance with my bow like a smart big brain boy would do, I instead began smacking her, with my sword as any gentleman would, and after throwing only a couple of potions, she destroyed my health and popped my totem of undying. So it's safe to say that I was out of there. I quickly fled down the stairs, and I went straight back into the portal, and just like your dad when he went out for milk, I was gone and I was not coming back. After getting back to the overworld, I went back to my house, and when putting on a new totem, I also realized that you could apparently wear two of them at the same time, which is kind of useful, not gonna lie. But yeah, either way, I was not going back there anytime soon because I needed to be much stronger to take on that. So with that failure beside me, the first thing that I began to do was craft myself a diamond shield to replace the iron one because this one blocked an additional 8% damage when blocking attacks. And now I was going to add enchantments to it. However, instead of re-rolling my villagers, I thought that it was finally time to make an enchanting area with one of those tables that I casually borrowed. So I went back to the previous dungeon that I had beaten and I spent the rest of the day and all of day 81 stealing each and every bookshelf from every floor and while I was there collecting any remaining gold blocks inside of the centers of those obsidian piles. And by the time I got home, I now had almost 33 stacks of books, which is very safe to say that it was mega overkill, but, I mean, I could always trade them for emeralds, so at the end of the day, things still worked out pretty well. On day 82, now that I had a decent amount of books, or at least I would say, I crafted myself 21 fresh but never frozen bookshelves. And I built myself a brand new enchantment setup over in the corner where a bunch of those random bookshelves used to be. And now that I had an enchantment set up, the very first thing that I went to test out was enchanting my brand new diamond shield. And apparently you cannot enchant them like you could in Arlcraft, which honestly kind of sucks. So I did the next best thing instead, and I grabbed one of my fresh diamond axes that I had looted from that dungeon. And I had the option for either efficiency 4 or vein mining, which gave me an idea. So I chose the efficiency 4 enchantment, and I also got Unbreaking 3 for free. However, I just so happened to have a vein mining book inside of one of my chests that I added to it, so that way I could test out mining trees. And you probably guessed it, but unfortunately, it does not work like the timber mod, and ended up being a waste of an enchantment. Pog. But that was okay, because I went back to my enchantment table to enchant my diamond pickaxe, and this one only gave me efficiency 4, so I crafted myself another one and I grinded a bunch of iron enchanted gear for enough XP to enchant it at level 3. And this boy gave me silk touch, efficiency 4, and unbreaking 3, which was perfect. So I combined both of the picks into one and I gave them the totally not terrible name, Pick 
picture perfect because it's silk touch. Get it? It's funny. Laugh at it. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways, it was now an efficiency five silk touch in unbreaking three pickaxe. And now all I needed was mending. So I grabbed the mending books from my chests and I first added mending to the pickaxe. And after that, I added mending to the brand new axe that I then named Axeptional. Because at this point, you could probably tell that my pun game was on point today. And if you disagree, you should leave a like on the video because YouTube removed dislikes so companies wouldn't get their feelings hurt while being ratioed. On the next day, day 83, I wanted to go out and get the remaining ender pearls that I was missing so that way I could not only beat the ender dragon but also explore the end a little before these 100 days were over. So I grabbed about half of the gold that I had and I went back to the nether to trade with piglins. And this process could not have gone worse to be honest. The first group of piglins just kept taking all of my gold without giving me anything in return. And to add insult to injury, they crafted themselves full gold armor without even trading anything. So I revoked their licenses to exist. And after getting scammed out of my hard earned gold, I moved on to this next guy who actually traded me stuff. He gave me real things in return for my gold. So I just kind of sat here collecting the loot that he had dropped and sorting through it until I noticed something just a little sus. Out of all of these trades, he had dropped me zero pearls. So either I was just very super ultra unlucky, like anti-dream, or they just don't drop pearls in this mod pack, which really wouldn't make much sense. But either way, I was tired of wasting my gold, so I looked up ender pearls using the TMI mod, and I had forgotten that cleric villagers actually trade you them when they hit level 5. So instead of wasting my time on this, I went back through the portal and I spent until sunrise looking around my base for some more endermen and huge surprise, there are none. On day 84, I gathered my legally acquired brewing stands along with an inventory full of emeralds and books for some beautiful capitalism, which I know you all love so, so much. Can I get some capitalisms in the comments down below? The algorithm loves capitalism, literally. Anyways, I took all of those resources and I traveled back to Paintopia to find a brand new villager friend to become my new cleric. And once I had this guy already, I wasted tons and tons of emeralds for redstone, lapis, and glowstone, which to be honest, were all pretty useful, but I didn't really need them. And after doing these easy trades, he had leveled up enough to get ender pearls for five emeralds each, which I was only able to buy about seven of because I didn't really have enough emeralds. So I went back to my base and I mass traded for iron, books, and string with my villagers until I had enough emeralds to buy what I needed. And after trading with the cleric once more, I now had 19 more ender pearls. You can suck on these, piglins. Anyways, once returning home again, I crafted some of the ender pearls into Eyes of Ender, and now I had 25 Eyes of Ender and 9 spare ender pearls for some of those MLGs while fighting the Ender Dragon. And now that I had one last thing that I needed to locate the stronghold, there were only a couple of loose ends that I needed to tie up in preparation to go to the end. And one of the very first things that I tried to do was add Sweeping Edge 3 and Fire Aspect 2 to Simp Slayer, which would end up costing me over 40 levels because of how inefficiently I had leveled up this weapon, which I guess wasn't that bad in comparison to how much it would cost me to put this end veil enchantment on my helmet. It's only 67 levels. It's two levels below the funny number, which was still absurd. I guess I'll just have to deal with aggroing Enderman, to be honest. On day 85, since I couldn't upgrade my armor any further, there was one more thing that I needed before I would go to the end. I needed some more backpacks for some super efficient inventory management. So I spent all of today kind of just grinding away at my cow farm for some leather, and then binding that leather with string, tanning that bound leather by smelting it, and using whatever wool that I had to craft myself a total of five new backpacks and unfortunately only one of them was their channel color purple but at least during this day i also learned that isologers that spawn all around this area can also spawn with ominous banners on which was a pretty big hard pass for me no raids in my house thank you anyways i spent the rest of this day finishing my preparations to go stronghold hunting Plus, I could even put my new backpack collection inside of any future shulkers that I got, which would then go inside of my ender chest for some maximum insane portable storage once I found my first end city. On day 86, I woke up and while adding the finishing touches to my inventory, I ended up finding 50 more string inside of one of my chests. So I crafted three more backpacks for a total of eight and I threw them into my ender chest full of supplies. 
And after this, I set off in search of the stronghold by using my eyes of Ender. And not too long into the search, I found a brand new pirate ship, and this time I was well prepared to RKO all of those jerks and yoink their loot. So I began by taking some perfectly aimed amazing bow shots from the distance, if I do say so myself, and once enough of them were eliminated, I then moved in for the kill by digging my way into the bottom of the ship and once I was in, I began one by one sniping any of the remaining bow boys on top of the deck until I couldn't really see any more of them. And at this point, I said screw it and I broke through the blocks and I ran out as quickly as I could and I was chased off of the side of the boat by two very easy to drown vindicators. And speaking of easy to drown vindicators, now that they were slowly drifting down to Davy Jones' locker, I used my water bucket to get back up the side of the boat and I built up and headshot all of the remaining vindicators until I got the chance to run into their dark spawning area and break their spawner, which would have probably made an amazing emerald farm, but I mean I could always find another ship in the future if I do end up continuing this series. Anyways, I spent the rest of the night looting all of the chests for loot and I ended up with two diamonds and a bunch of TNT and some more free gunpowder. On day 87, I started off the day by getting a little quirky and um, I, I stole all of the entire first mass of the ship with a pair of shears because hey, this wool was free real estate. It's free. Free real estate that I could use to make more backpacks. Everybody loves backpacks, am I right? So after finishing that daily dose of theft, I then jumped off of the boat and I swam over to the island that was further in the direction of the stronghold and I checked my inventory for the wool and I had gotten two and a half stacks of white wool and a measly purple, which was still pretty good, not gonna lie. Also for the people that like a little bit of math out there, that totaled out to about 56 brand new backpacks, which is pretty pog. Anyways, now that I was back on land, I continued using Eyes of Ender until I found myself two more ships in the distance that I was hoping I could visit, that is until the pearls started leading back into this super dense forest that made it pretty difficult to actually, you know, follow them. And then while I was inside the forest, one of the pearls finally led straight into the ground. So I dug straight down until I hit this little cave system and finally I had found the stone brick that I had been looking for. And let me tell you now, this place was a massive surprise. This place blew my mind. I've seen this mod in different mod packs before, but I've never actually played one that had it in it. In the stronghold, was fully decked out and massive, and this place was absolutely gorgeous. I began exploring around until I found the new library, and I was literally in love. This place was beyond cool. I could spend so much time just exploring around, and not gonna lie, I kind of did. I went around each aisle of books, lighting them up, and there was a couple of chests to loot and some spawners that I ended up breaking. Plus, I stole a free block of iron in a free block of gold until I left the library and I finally found what I was here for. And the new portal room was crazy cool. This whole place had my mind imploding at the scene. I needed to make this place into my new base or something. So I placed down a waypoint and I named it God Tier Stronghold. And then I quickly stopped back at home so that way I could dump out my inventory of stuff that I had freshly looted along the way. And on day 88, I teleported back, fully lit up the portal, and I jumped through ready to destroy that dragon. And honestly, this fight went super well. I started by absolutely popping off with some bow shots to break all of the lower towers until I needed to water bucket my way up to break one of the highest crystals. And while I was up here, I quickly sniped out all of the remaining crystals. And now the only thing that was left between me and copious amounts of loot was beating that dragon. And for some reason, during this fight, the dragon was a tank. She didn't really take much damage from the Sharpness 4 crits, and it took me about four different cycles to take her down, including some pretty OP bow plays on my part, if I, if I do say so myself. And there also might have been this incident where she yeeted me into the air, and I almost ender pearled myself off of the cliff, but um, don't, don't mention that in the comments, okay? Long story short, this fight ended up being GG easy, and I had conquered the end. So now that she was gone, I collected that sweet XP and I tried to take the egg, but it kind of just bugged out on the end portal middle column and just kind of like sat there. And honestly, I don't really care about it. The egg doesn't mean that much to me. So I just kind of left it. So after defeating the end dragon and rightfully claiming the end as my own domain on day 89, I built my way up to the Farlands portal, built
built a tiny platform around it and I enderpearled my way and I had spawned on top of a ton of dark purple and black trees that if you've seen my 100 days in the modded end video you'd probably be familiar with. However this end was much different because in the distance I saw my very first end tower and this thing looked insanely different than the vanilla one. So I began ender pulling my way over and my fight with the many shulkers had begun. Can I get a hello shulker boxes in the comment section? Anyways, one by one, I defeated all of the shulkers in the first room, and upon making my way up the tower, I saw a shulker spawner. Part of me really wanted to save it for some kind of cool shulker farm. So since it was far enough away from the rest of the tower, I kind of just left it there so that way, you know, I could use it in the future if I wanted to. And after continuing on, I had figured, you know, maybe that was the only shulker spawner inside of the whole tower, right? Well, I would be very, very wrong because this entire tower was nutty. There were spawners everywhere and never-ending shulkers. And when I got to the top of this tower, it had eight more spawners and eight pedestals that had three different colored shulker boxes just kind of sitting on them. Plus an additional 16 chests full of busted enchanted items that include a ton of diamonds and items known as void totems that keep you alive if you fall into the void that I, of course, equipped into one of my two charm slots instead of one of my totems of undying. And honestly, I could sit here talking about this place for probably about an hour because there was just never ending mobs and crazy loot chests absolutely everywhere. In fact, each one of the mini towers in this end city have an additional shulker spawner up top in four more free colored shulker boxes. So I continued my way through every part of the end city until I was finally ready to take on the new end ship balloon. And Damn was this thing very well protected. There were sky demon spawners on top of it that I had to break and the shulkers were trying to send me into space and turn me into a pancake. But being the big brain that I was, I had brought enough water buckets, including enough to make sure they don't just randomly glitch out because that always seems to happen in the end. And I MLG water bucketed my way down on top of the balloon where I quickly dug into it until I finally broke in just to be swarmed by the super dangerous mimic that copies all of my armor and weapons. However, he was kind of a waste of time, so I didn't really bother fighting him, and I deleted all of the shulkers and their spawners instead, and I just kind of ran downstairs and shut the door in his face. And honestly, it wasn't much better down here. There were a ton more shulkers and spawners along with this entire hallway that led up to the coveted elytra. So I quickly cleaned up the room and I collected all of my winnings from each busted chest and this elytra was already enchanted. So I right clicked to pick it up. And at this point, my mind exploded even further than it already was. This thing already had unbreaking three and mending on it. And on top of that, it goes inside of a back slot in your inventory. So you always have an elytra on, even if you're wearing armor. I'm literally screaming right now. I would like to be screaming so much louder about this. This thing blew my freaking mind. And it's safe to say that I was insanely excited about it because you can kind of just see me, you know, jerking the screen around. By the way, I'm sorry in advance for any whiplash or vertigo that I may have given you from this moment. But overall, it took me until the end of day 93 to finish looting this place. And it was so, so, so worth it. On day 94, now that the end city was fully explored, I placed down a waystone inside of the end balloon and I fast traveled home for 3 XP, which ended up ruining my sweet 69 levels. Anyways though, after getting home, I somewhat organized all of my earnings into two double chests, and just look at all this god tier loot that I found. I found tons of crazy enchanted diamond armors, including a perfect replacement helmet for mine so I could even add more of the enchants like end veil that I wanted to in the first place. On top of that, I found tons of end totems, tons of colored shulker boxes, and in the second chest, there was a ton more loot, including 29 diamonds from one single end city, which is cracked. And on top of all of this, I could now fly. So the first thing that was on my mind was fireworks. I started by going through any and all of my chests, looking for all of the gunpowder that I had been collecting while exploring this world. Now, my only problem was paper. And because I wasn't a huge nerd, I didn't really have any. 
So at this point, my options were to start a sugarcane farm, but honestly, that would take too long, and I didn't really have the time left in these 100 days. So the first thing instead that I did was look up the villagers inside of this mod pack to see if any of them traded for sugarcane, until I had found the solution. I could make a purper altar and trade with an endologist directly for fireworks. Honestly, this mod pack is amazing. Go play it. If you haven't played it yet, go in the description down below, look at the link, click it. Also, look at my merch down there. Buy some merch for the holidays. It really helps me out. I love you. But please play the mod pack. Mod pack's great. Anyways, tangent over. So before going back to the end for some purple blocks to make that new altar, I used the little paper that I had to make tier three rockets and I took my brand new elytra for a spin. In flying around this world, just felt so, so right. Honestly, I really hope you all enjoy these 100 days because I would love to do 200 days of this mod pack. So if you do want to see that, definitely leave a like down below. They really help out the video and the algorithm and it lets me know that you guys enjoy the content. Anyways, I traveled back to the end and I struggled to take down the mimic that was spawn camping me and I fled over to the tower for some free per per blocks. And after that, I went all the way down to the ground to collect some more end stone. And now that I had everything that I needed, I flew back up to the balloon where I saw something interesting along the way. There was a pedestal that had a free end crystal inside. And of course, I happily yoinked that boy before heading back home for the day. On day 95, I started off the day with an inventory full of resources ready for some more capitalism with the boys. I began by trading iron, books, and sticks for emeralds, and I trapped a villager inside a paintopia that I made into an enderologist. And after leveling this guy up, it was pretty expensive but I finally got him to unlock rockets and eight of them costed a measly two emeralds which was lit so I bought as many of them as I could and now that my firework issues were solved pretty much indefinitely I teleported back home and I filled up my ender bag with shulkers and you could in fact put backpacks into those very shulkers it was some inception level stuff up in here I could put bags in boxes and bags in a box for days and now that all of my inventory was sorted and I only had a few days left, there was still something that I wanted to do. I wanted to go back to the nether fortress for some more wither skulls so I could kill the wither enough times for a sextuple beacon that I was then going to use to go over and crush that final pillager castle. So I traveled back to Paintopia and went through the ender portal because I am cheap and I didn't want to spend the three levels. And I quickly flew over to the nether fortress where I spent the rest of the day hunting wither skeletons, which didn't really spawn that much, but I did manage to get myself a seventh wither skull pretty quick. So even though this fortress sucks, I guess I couldn't complain. However, since this fortress wasn't spawning the numbers that I needed to get these skulls in time, on the next day, day 96, I stole the waypoint that was here and I used my elytra to fly away in search of a better fortress. And instead, I found this crazy, ominous looking blackstone castle. And upon landing on the top floor, there were some super unprotected chests that had pretty decent loot inside, including my very first netherite ingot. However, things here seemed way too quiet for there to be this much loot. So I broke a hole in the floor to see, you know, what was going on down below. And this place ended up looking mad cursed. There are these terrifying creatures called Naga, along with an army of blaze and some wither skeletons. So I ate a golden apple and I jumped in and joined the massacre. And honestly, there were so many mobs, the game started lagging like crazy, but overall I came out victorious and I stole all of the loot from the chests as my reward. Plus they also had a Gucci wither skeleton spawner, which was exactly what I needed. So I made this little jank looking area for them to spawn in and I spent the rest of the day farming wither skeletons with zero luck for skulls. And at this point, I was beginning to doubt that these skeletons could even drop skulls because honestly, if I was a game dev, that wouldn't make much sense because these spawners would be super overpowered. And I'm sure they definitely thought of that. So on day 97, I gave up on the spawner and I set back out flying looking for a good nether fortress. And at this point, it wasn't looking very promising that I was going to make a beacon in time before day 100. However, that was kind of okay because while exploring more of the nether, I got to see a lot of these beautiful looking biomes. And I also found this blackstone pyramid with some pretty cool looking loot that I barely got to touch because the place exploded while almost killing me. But hey, I still got a free protection for a book and some gold. 
Plus, my totem didn't pop. So you know what? I'll take that as a W. So with that not-so-near-death experience behind me, I continued exploring in search for a fortress, and just when I thought I had found one, it turned out to be this absolutely stunning-looking nether city. And this place is full of so many different nice-looking blocks that I may have stole a couple of. And this place ended up being a massive distraction. I explored around here for a couple of minutes, looking for cool loot, until I realized that there was basically nothing here for me. So it was back to my search. I had to be strong and not be distracted because I was running out of time. And luckily enough, my search ended up not being that much longer because right next door, there was a massive nether fortress that was still pretty void of wither boys, but there was quite a few chests that even had a couple of diamonds in them. However, at this point, I was kind of just done hunting for withers in general. So instead of actually using this place, I placed down a waypoint and I went back to my base to cut my losses. Or at least that's what I thought I would do. However, I am very stubborn as you all may probably know. So instead on day 98, I went back to the nether in search for more wither skulls. And upon getting there, I stole the waystone and I set out exploring, looking for the perfect fortress. And along the way, I found pretty much everything except for that. I first stopped by another one of those blackstone pyramids, except this time I was the bigger brain and I broke the trap and stole all of the TNT just like you would do for a regular pyramid. And the loot ended up being kind of decent, but I mean, I still stole it, of course. Duh. Anyways, after stopping by that ticking time bomb, I continued on my way until I found this white tower looking structure in the middle of lava that had some wither skeletons. And it turns out those skeletons ended up being the least of my worries because there were gas spawners everywhere and they were beyond annoying. There was only one chest here and I was trying to loot it. So I placed down my cyan shulker box so I can clean out my inventory that conveniently had all of my loot inside of it, may I add, and a ghast shot it and blew it up before I could pick it up. These guys are literally the worst. So now that all of that loot was gone, I built my way up to the chest anyways, and I got some gold and two diamonds. Not at all worth it. I had in fact been bamboozled. So I just kind of left the place. And not long after I continued flying around the nether, I finally found my third fortress. And after taking down only a couple of skelly boys, I had gotten my eighth wither skull. So I spent the rest of this day and all of day 99 grinding through the slim spawns that I was getting. And with all of that work, I was rewarded with only two more skulls that would allow me to summon only my third wither. So you know what? Since I was now out of time, I was probably just going to have to settle for that. Or at least that's what I had thought because right before leaving, I stopped by this nearby piglin tower and they just had a couple of wither statues chilling outside that had two free real estate wither skulls. So now I was able to summon my fourth wither. On day 100, now that I was officially out of time, it was time to take on all four of the withers that I could summon as one massive boss fight to send off the series. And of course, there is no place better to do this than the end. So I teleported back to my stronghold and I jumped inside of the portal and I went to begin digging underneath the return end portal so that way I could cheese these guys, of course, like any man of culture would. And unfortunately, because the portal wasn't made of bedrock, the wither just kind of phased through it like it was nothing. So I had to shoot him up the old fashioned way with Shooty McShootface. And my bow did so much damage to this guy that he quickly switched into close range mode and he aggroed on me. So I banned him from my chat with Simp Slayer. And I guess at this point I was stuck fighting the other three in one-on-one -on -one battles face to face. So one by one, I spawned them in hoping that they would stay stuck. But the second I attacked them, they broke out, which honestly was probably on purpose because the mod pack doesn't want you to cheese stuff. But you know what? It's fine because just like that, I had slain each beast one by one by one. And I now had four nether stars along with these four cores that sounded pretty ominous. It also just so happened that one of the withers had freed my dragon egg that was stuck up on top of the portal. So I guess things do work out in the end. No pun intended. So anyways, now that I had done everything that I had came here for, I jumped back through the portal and it was already nighttime. So no 
day 100 sundown for me. On the first day, day 101, I loaded into my world dazed and confused since I hadn't really been here in about a month. I began looking through my inventory to see what I had, and I remembered that there was armor much, much better than diamond, and I still needed to upgrade to it. And then I found it. There was a type of armor called fusion armor that was made by fusing resources into ingots by using fusion ore, which can be found in the abyss mod. So I used the A key to favorite all of these items for future reference, and then it happened. On my very first day back, a blood moon had risen. So you know what? I thought I would go out and hunt some easy mobs because I mean, what could go wrong, right? So I started targeting creepers for more fireworks until I found myself directly in the middle of this horde of League of Legends players. And not gonna lie, this was scary. I was poisoned, I had slowness and hunger, and I could barely get away without getting clowned on by some of the creepers. The gunpowder has come full circle. But after all of that had kind of settled down, I did manage to get away with my life intact, and I decided, you know what, since I'm a little rusty at better Minecraft, maybe I'll just spend the Blood Moon organizing my inventory and repairing my now melted armor with some late night capitalism. Overall, today was a rough start. But that was okay because on day 102, I was awake and ready from the all-nighter that I was forced to pull. I began looking into what the Abyss mod was, and it turned out to be a dimension that I could get to by harvesting Loran gems from these bright light blue flowers that are supposedly spread throughout the world that I could then combine with obsidian to make the portal to the new dimension. Yes, that was a mouthful. So I grabbed my fireworks and I began flying around in the hopes of finding some of these flowers, which were supposedly easy to find in most biomes. I kept flying around while checking any flowers that I could until I found another one of those small little bandit camps. And that's when I decided that their stuff was now my stuff. I quickly swooped in and landed on their roof, and I began smacking these dudes around, and surprisingly they smacked back pretty hard. I don't know what's up with me today, but things were doing so much more damage than I remembered. But all was good because one by one, I banished each of them to the Shadow Realm before stealing their single gold apple and coal, which was totally worth this fight. Anyways though, shortly after moving on from there, I found a nearby field full of the exact flowers that I was looking for. They were apparently called Loran flowers, and they were everywhere surrounding this village. So I spent the rest of the day just kind of collecting as many of them as I could before getting attacked by this bird and her children, apparently. And thanks to me, this world now had four more orphans. On the morning of day 103, now that I had the Loran crystals that I needed, I was done here. But before leaving, I did see two more nearby dungeon towers that I quickly flew over to so I could borrow all of their life savings. I flew over to the first one and I stole all of their gold blocks and the waystone from the roof, and I quickly made my way down each floor while checking all of the basic chests and breaking the spawners. After finishing up there, I was off to the second one where I did pretty much the same thing minus the getting trolled by a vex with a sharpness sword. It was really starting to seem like the people of this world did not respect the protection for Diamond Trip. However, now that their loot was my loot, I flew back over to the village and I used the waystone to teleport back to my base so I could begin preparing to go to the abyss. And honestly, I had no clue what I was doing wrong here. I used an Eye of Ender and some paper along with the gems to make something called an Activation Scroll, which unlocked the Abyss Chapter 2 book, apparently, because I still could not craft it or the Unstable Obsidian. So I went online to do some research, and I'm just gonna say this now, I hate mods like this. They have no information at all online, and the only information that I could find was super conflicting. I spent the entire night testing out different ways to get the Obsidian, and I did find out that there's a quest system with rewards that you can go into, and there was a step-by-step -step for this mod. However, I still can't craft the obsidian. By the time it was the morning, I had no clue what to do, until I noticed a comment online that matched some of the text inside of the guide. Apparently, I had to kill something called a void worm before I could get the obsidian. Which doesn't make much sense, because that is not what I've seen other YouTubers do in their videos, but you know what? I'm not gonna argue with it. Whatever. So on day 104, I continued looking on the wiki and apparently there's some dream world that you're supposed to enter two times before you can progress. 
which doesn't make any sense because it didn't happen at all and it's supposed to happen the first few times you sleep in your world but i i honestly i don't know the wiki for this mod complete trash so for today instead i was just gonna hang around the base testing out things until the sun went down where i could hopefully sleep and to maybe enter this dream world now that I've unlocked the book, but yeah. Anyways, since I didn't have anything else to do for today, I decided to test out something that a lot of you mentioned in the comments of the last 100 days video. Apparently, vein mining that I have on my diamond axe only works when you crouch, so I flew over to the nearby forest to test it out, and all of you were right. I could now easily explode my stick trading empire. Plus, each time I use the vein miner, it automatically replaces the saplings underneath. Just imagine how much more work you could do in a vanilla world without having to spend a year chopping down trees. But yeah, that's... Pretty much all I did today. I chopped down a bunch of trees, did some stick trades with one of my prison uh, friends, and I organized the Hollywood into some new chests before the sun finally went down. So I stared at the bed in the hopes of going to some weird dream world or something, and um, nothing happened. Nothing at all. Good times. On day 105, I had finally figured it out. So apparently inside the quest book quest for the end, you are given exactly what you need to enter this dimension after you kill the void worm, which I kind of already knew, kinda. But today I figured out exactly how to find the void worm, because apparently they dwell in the void down below the end. In order to lure them out, you need to toss a mysterious worm down into the void, which you can only get by placing a crimson mosquito inside an endiophage capsid whatever that is so i continued doing more research and um wow has this mod pack really become some kind of master riddle after doing some research i found the two different mobs that i now needed to hunt down for their drops i needed to hunt down an endiophage which would drop a capsid and i needed to hunt down a crimson mosquito which i also had no clue where to find so I checked out the Alex's Mobs book once again, and I finally knew where to go and what to do. After only five days, crimson mosquitoes can be found in crimson forests in the nether, and the endiophage can be found in the midlands biome in the end. So things were going to be easy now, hopefully. This is some foreshadowing. Things were not going to be easy. So on the next day, day 106, I used my waystone to teleport back to Paintopia and I went through the nether portal so I could find a crimson forest and hunt me some mosquitoes. So the second I spawned in, I began using my fireworks to fly around and search for the perfect location to farm them. And I did find a crimson forest, but technically it wasn't a crimson forest because apparently there are multiple crimson biomes now with the whatever mods that are changing the nether. However, while I was here I did find another one of those piglin towers with a chest inside that I decided to rush like the big brain player that I was. And these guys absolutely swarmed me. They did do a lot of damage but for the most part I had things under control. That is until I saw one of the piglin brutes began running to join in the fight and I decided to make a temporary tactical retreat up the hill just in case and I sat here sweeping up the remaining sussy bakas including said brute. And now that they were all gone, I could yoink the rest of their loot, which didn't end up being much, but I did score myself four more netherite scrap, so this wasn't an entire waste of time. Anyways though, now that my Minecraft bank had become slightly more thick with three Cs, I set back out looking for that crimson biome. And surprise surprise, I was distracted yet again, and this time by this really nice looking bastion with an easy target open chest room with a conveniently placed nearby platform to shoot off of. So I landed down nearby and I sat here yeeting each and every piglin that I saw out of existence before bridging over to loot the two chests, which turned out to be mostly subpar loot minus the one additional netherite scrap. For day 107, I continued to assert my dominance over this bastion by now raining down arrows on any and every remaining piglin that I could see before I could make my way down there. And once it was mostly safe, I jumped onto the soul sand in the middle to check the chest and there really wasn't much inside and honestly, I didn't really I feel like looting the rest of this place because my luck with bastions in this world have been trash. So I kind of just left to continue flying around so I could find that crimson biome. And boy have I never wanted to see a crimson biome this bad in my life. I kept finding crimson like biomes that weren't what I needed and I was quickly burning through my stack of fireworks. But that was not going to stop me. 
I kept exploring for the next two days, day 108 and 109, and of course, I made some more stops along the way. I first ran into another one of those piglin towers that I wiped out like the plague that they were, while also stealing any more of their netherite scraps. And shortly after that tower, I found myself sniping away more piglins and more piglin brutes at another scuffed bastion, only for pretty much more of the same basic loot. Overall, I kept exploring until the end of day 109, where I pretty much ran out of fireworks, so I crafted myself a quick nether portal in the nether, and because I didn't have any flint or steel, I took advantage of one of the nearby step gas shooting at me so he could light up my portal. And after that, I ran back through to the overworld. On day 110, after leaving the nether portal, I found myself in this really bright and vibrant mangrove biome with a pretty big villager bandit camp right next door. And when I say pretty big, I mean massive. For some reason, this place was full of triple arrow shooting bandit boys, and they would not stop loading me up with arrows for even a second. I was hitting them with my sword, but I was quickly being forced to switch to my bow because they just kind of sat here shooting me over into the water. Overall, I ended up being stuck here throughout most of the night, taking them out one by one because these guys wouldn't even let me leave the water. I don't know what was wrong with this place or why they had their own cracked esports team, but by the time I finally finished cleaning most of them up and I stole all of their loot, which was not very much worth it in the slightest, may I add, I went to sleep for the night so I could begin exploring this new part of the world during the peace of daytime. So on day 111, after waking up, the first thing I did was continue exploring around this hellish bandit camp while taking out the super annoying remaining crossbow jerks. I looted their last two houses, if you can call them that, and there still wasn't anything crazy inside, but I did find a bunch more bread, a ton of wolfer beds, some more slime, and other just random junk. I finished stuffing what loot I could into my inventory, and I was finally on my way to that cursed place until I spotted another one of those tiny little dirt huts in the distance. So I broke my way inside violently, I tore up their carpet, and I made my way down to their basement. Still a weird sentence, not gonna lie. Anyways, the chest down here had another golden apple inside, along with an ice dragon egg. And yes, I know, I can get dragons by using these eggs, but I want a fire dragon and I haven't found one of those yet, so do not worry, a fire dragon will soon be ours. Along with the lizard from the first 100 days. It might not happen now, but I definitely want both of those things to happen. However, for now, since my inventory was kind of messed up, I sat here organizing it for a bit, and I moved on to the next thing, which just so happened to be this nearby village that was full of villagers. Like, I mean, more full than normal. There were so many villagers here. So like the true alpha gamer that I am, I exploited them all simultaneously by going around and stealing from each house. Let me tell you, this place was pretty busted. Each chest had tons of iron, more wool, loads of bread, some emeralds, and other random loot inside. This place was so profitable, and these kind guys gave me all of this loot for free, which is crazy. It's crazy how that works. Anyways, by the time I finished borrowing all of their things, the sun became scared of me and began hiding. So unlike real life, I decided to have a sleepover with my new friends and go to sleep at a decent time. On day 112, after leaving the village, I found myself once again robbing more people of their belongings. I found another one of these portal guys' houses that I quickly yoinked of anything that had value inside, and it didn't end up being much, but right next door there was an abandoned portal that had two shiny golden blocks that were placed there just for me. And while collecting those gold blocks, I noticed another mob tower off in the distance, and what can I say? I like loot. So I flew over to this island where I crafted myself a boat and I quickly traversed my way across the water so I could get these gold blocks and waystone at the top of the tower. After getting here, I speed ran my way through each floor by breaking the spawner and killing each mob until I hit the last floor where I broke the cursed vex spawner because even with diamond protection for armor, they do way too much damage. And after breaking the last spawner, I began looting the chests and I stole all of the gold blocks and the waypoint up top and I was going to go back down to check the bottom floor chest until this surprise vex smacked me across my cheeks. So instead, I did what I like to call a tactical retreat, and I jumped off the top of the tower where I flew all the way over to this gorgeous looking house that had tons of free anvils, an iron block, and so, so, so much more free stuff. And at this point, my Pixar mom of an inventory was weighing me down. So I plopped down some shulkers and I dumped all of my findings inside for that squeaky clean inventory that everyone loves. 
Now that this place had been looted, I was back out on my journey, and believe it or not, I actually did have a goal while out here. I was looking for paper, sugarcane, and more gunpowder so I could make more fireworks. Future pain here. At this point in the story, I forgot that I had a trader that I could buy fireworks from from the first 100 days. So I may have wasted a little bit of time doing this. Future pain out. So as I continued exploring, I began grabbing any and all sugarcane that I could find. And as the sun had began to set, I flew over to this small cabin of hunters that both dropped their cheap enchanted weapons after I crushed their KD ratios, and upon looking at their attic, I found the motherload of free steak and apples. For day 113, I set out from the Hunter's Lodge ready to explore some of the nearby structures. I first stopped by the exact same building that I lived in to check on the villagers just in case any of them actually had any good enchantments, and massive surprise, none of these guys were useful. How relatable. So, since both the villagers and their loot were of no use to me, I continued on my way until I saw yet another one of those giant monstrosity dungeon looking buildings. And if you remember what I said in the first 100 days, I wanted to come back to these and this ended up being kind of a big mistake. I grabbed my elytra with the very few fireworks that I had and I flew up to the very top in the hopes of stealing some easy chests Oralcraft style. And it turns out that each of the spawners up here spawned these super scary skeleton riders on top of phantoms. And these guys didn't really do much damage, but their knockback hit like Saitama. I had to keep taking pop shots from them in the distance just to take them out because close combat was not really a choice at this point. Anyways, after playing cleanup with the competition, I ran in and broke the spawner as fast as I could and I still managed to spawn more before doing that. These spawners were onto my strats. They spawned the mobs so fast that it was pretty much impossible to run in and break them scot-free. That still didn't stop me. And to be honest, the loot inside of these chests wasn't that bad, but also wasn't really that good. After looting the first chest, I flew in and broke three more spawners, while also quickly yoinking any relevant loot from the chest before being yeeted, and as the sun started to go down, I was gone. Those chests were way too much work for the small amount of loot that I had gotten. Even vanilla end cities give better loot than this. These dungeons had me missing RL Craft real bad. So after leaving that giant waste of time, I flew my way down to this brand new mob tower where I quickly Detroit smashed the Vex spawner and stole all of the gold in the brand new waystone. On day 114, after finishing looting the mob tower, I was looking through my mod settings for the mod map in this mod pack because I realized that I hadn't really had it on this entire time. I've literally been ignoring one of the most useful mods in the pack. And now that I had the map on, I was checking out what was nearby and I saw this weird bulge in the snowy part of the map. So I decided to go check it out and it ended up being this woodland mansion, uh, minus the wood and the land apparently, because this place is made entirely of ice and snow. I broke inside and I began exploring around while not really finding much. And I slayed a couple of mobs here and there and I stole the massive pile of their bookshelves for some more future juicy capitalism. After after this, I continued exploring each floor and there really wasn't much stuff to borrow. I know these buildings usually have hidden chests, but I didn't really want to waste that much time struggling to get them, so I made my way down to the bottom floor where I found some nice creepers to hunt for some more gunpowder. And that's when I was absolutely clowned on. While fighting this pile of mobs with a creeper in the middle, my stepbro skeleton shot me from behind directly into the center of the mobs, causing the first creeper to explode. And to make things worse, my shield was now stun locked, so all I could do was sit here and watch as the second creeper ran in and caused me to lose a totem of undying. And after that, I was beyond done here. I quickly ate a gapple just in case, and I quickly fled out the front door never to come back. After this, I stopped by a near house to re-equip a totem and dump out my inventory, and I was once again on my way. I continued going in the same direction so I could leave this cursed biome until I noticed something in the distance. There was a snow desert temple. So, unlike the massive five head that I usually have, I instead did a small brain move where I entered the temple and I began breaking my way down slowly because everything was snow when I didn't have a shovel. And this is where my small brain came into action. Because upon breaking some of the ice, the blocks slid into the pressure plates DMs, causing everything to go up in smoke. 
So I very, very, very quickly ran my way back up the stairs to dodge the explosions where I was greeted by a pile of snow skeletons or whatever you call them because I always forget their name because nobody cares about them. And I, I just kind of fled. I was done with this place. I quickly ran out of the front door never to come back to any snow biomes in this world ever again. On day 115, I started off the day by making the questionable decision of killing an illusioner with a banner without recording. So I now had the courage curse of the simps. So what did I do with this you may ask? Well I grabbed my fireworks and I flew to the nearest giant village on the map to test out just how bad the raids are in better minecraft because I mean what can go wrong right? So I landed on top of the nearby mob tower, I broke the vex spawner, and I stole all of the loot off of the roof and I blocked off the staircase just in case anyone made their way up to me and once the raid had finally began things got crazy fast. There was some kind of summoner mob that summoned these super fast running micro creepers that made me so happy that I was not down there. So for the first wave I sat up here sniping people from the heavens until the second wave spawned in and things got even more interesting. So I decided to get a little bit quirky and relatable and I flew down onto one of the nearby village roofs where I sat here sniping away at any pillager that I saw until I had to hunt down the remaining two guys. Overall wave 2 was cool but not that bad. But then, then wave 3 spawned. And honestly, just, just look at this giant Minecraft Dungeons looking guy. Do you think I'm going to fight a guy like that? I sat here sniping him until I learned exactly what the creeper summoners really do. They literally began spawning piles of creepers on top of me while I was on top of the building. So I began building up and up until I was shot off my pillar into the pile of creepers down below. I quickly built back up and fled to the trees to finish taking out the enemies. I sniped down the Minecraft Dungeons looking golem and he dropped one iron ingot, which was worse than iron golems. What a scam. Anyways, during this part of the raid, there was only one enemy left and the sun had gone down, so I used this moment to clear out my inventory and repair my very almost broken bow boy before finishing the raid the next day. However, it seemed that my bow had become a lost cause now. The absolute cheapest I could repair this thing for was a whopping 65 levels, and after that it was going to cost 127. It was kind of looking like I might have to switch to a mending bow soon. So I finished cleaning up and I just went to sleep for the night. On the next day, day 116, it was back to the raid grind. I quickly took out the last couple of witches to finish off the last wave, and I was now speechless. The next wave was massive, and everyone had diamond armor. There were so many different mobs, including Vex, which made hiding on roofs no longer viable. I began taking pop shots with what was left of my bow until I was knocked down by a Vex, and that's where I made the executive decision to fly back up to the nearby mob tower just for some safety. And I mean, just, just look at the mobs down there. Things were getting insane. I stood up here watching them run around for a bit until I decided it would be wise for me to go back home and make a new bow. So I placed down a waystone and I named it Struggle Village because I mean, that's what this place was at this point. And I went back home for the night where I enchanted bow after bow until I ended up with this power five on breaking three flame punch two bow with mending that I named Tamashi no Kiyomi, which is Japanese for soul resonance. Let me know which anime that's from in the comments. Anyways, now that I had a much, much stronger and more fixed up bow boy, I was ready to head back and cause chaos. But first, on day 117, I realized that I was pretty sure I had a villager that sold fireworks. It's been a while since I played this world, and yeah, it turns out I was harvesting all of that sugarcane for literally zero reason. However, everything was still good. No, it was great, because after buying several stacks from the end villager, his final trades were shulker shells and ender dragon heads. I could literally buy infinite shulkers, and I was so hyped about it. But anyways, now that I had everything that I needed, I went back to that village to begin the massive bow montage. I flew down from the mob tower and I began slaying like the king that I was. I very quickly blew through all three stacks of arrows that I had, so I was forced to go in for some close combat, where I carefully picked off each of the dangerous enemies one group at a time. There were some pretty insane fights here. The illusioners gave me 14 seconds of pitch black darkness that would most likely lead to my death if I hadn't had an elytra. And there was also the staff guy from Minecraft Dungeons that gave me levitation. But no matter how powerful these chumps were, one by one each of these monsters fell until finally I was down to the very last enemy. 
except I could not find him anywhere. I legit searched for the rest of the night until the sun came up, and I looked everywhere. I even tried using one of the village bells to find him, but either they just didn't work in this mod pack, or for the more likely reason, everybody was dead, so it was no longer a village. Either way, this day was finally over. So it was now day 118, and I was ready to finally finish this raid. That is, except the second the sun had finished rising, the raid bar disappeared. Yep. It turns out I took too long to defeat it. All I had to do was take out one more guy, and I would get my capitalism buff. But since the game hates me, no. So now that the raid was over, I flew back to the tower, I quickly dumped off my inventory, and I built myself another perfectly sized, and definitely not too big, nether portal so I could stop being distracted and go back to searching for the Crimson Forest like I should have been doing in the first place. But now I needed a flint and steel. So I teleported back to my base where I found the 36 extra shulker shells that I had sitting in my chest that I may have forgotten about. So I crafted 18 new shulkers, I filled my ender chest with the remaining, and I grabbed my flint and steel so I could go back to the nether and finally, hopefully find that mosquito. So now that my ender chest was all set and I had the flint and steel, it was back to the struggle village where I lit the portal and I jumped through to begin my second journey to find that stupid mosquito. And as much as I would love to say this was quick and easy, it was the exact opposite. I tried using the minimap to find Crimson Biome, except every Crimson Biome was replaced with Crimson Gardens, which was apparently different. I legit spent another three days flying around the nether with zero luck. This mod pack really did not want me to summon that void worm, I swear. I was at this until about day 122 when I finally said screw it and I built another nether portal so I could go back to the overworld where I found myself surrounded by another pillager bandit camp. At this point I was really cursed. I felt like I was I felt like I was Subaru in the first season of ReZero, living the same suffering over and over again. So I checked out the map for the nearest safe area to place a waypoint and I flew over to another replica of my base. These days, things were definitely, definitely rough. So on day 123, at this point, I had choices. I was reading the Alex Mobs book until I realized that the mosquito part of the book mentioned regular overwood flies transforming when they enter the nether. So I made a creative world to test this out, and it did work, but the process seemed absolutely awful. After this, I began watching other videos on better Minecraft that seemed to have so much more than this version, and that's when I realized that they made a version called Better Minecraft Plus that had so much more than this version of the mod, including Ice and Fire. So that explained why everything was missing and why the Abyss mod was pretty much unusable in this version. So now I had a couple of options. I could either add some of the missing mods like Ice and Fire, which would make this version have real endgame armor that I could work towards, or I could try to load this world in the other mod pack, which might corrupt it. Which, I mean, I could just back it up, but either way I was kind of at a loss here. Or so I had thought. Because after doing exactly that, backing up my world, and throwing the save file into Better Minecraft Plus, everything that I could tell was working perfectly. I still had all of my gear, along with my new slots on my character, including the tool belt mod. They had added the tool belt mod. Literally god tier mod. There was now so much better stuff to earn, such as fire and ice items, all of the waypoints were still working, and all if not most of all my villagers and my loot was still back at my base. The only thing that I 100% knew was missing was the ender bag and backpacks, which was a shame. However, in comparison to using an ender chest, it didn't really make much difference. So either way, Better Minecraft Plus was insane. This mod pack just became the combination of Better Minecraft and Arlcraft, and I was so excited to see all of the new things. As the sun began to rise on day 124, I was already beginning to realize just how different this world had become in Better Minecraft Plus, because right there on my map was a mutant skeleton, which not gonna lie, the only reason I know what that is was a Mr. Beast video. Anyways, I wanted to begin the new journey by taking this guy down, so I did some quick capitalism with the boys for some arrows, since my infinity bow was now replaced by a banana. No reference there. And now that I had ammo, it was time for the 1v1 of the century. I began shooting this guy into absolute oblivion until he could no longer handle the pressure, and he just kind of exploded. Very relatable and quirky of him. After winning the fight, I had jumped down to see what he had dropped, and apparently I could pick up his skull and all of his bones. 
I guess today was indeed a bone day, and that it was because after re-entering my base, I kept discovering more new things. First off, my dragon eggs that I had from the other mod were unfortunately gone because of ice and fire, which sucked, but apparently having an ender chest in your inventory opened this option to instantly access my chest from my inventory without even placing it. So, not having the Ender backpack was honestly not even that big of a deal anymore. For the rest of this day, I just kind of hung out in my base while being overwhelmed by the sheer mass of new content that Better Minecraft Plus had added. And on top of everything, the Abyss mod looks like it might actually work now too, which gave me something extra to work towards. So on day 125, I cleaned out my inventory and I teleported to the newest waypoint so I could begin hunting for new structures and maybe even some dragons for new armor. And not long after setting out, I found this super sus looking swamp house that looked mostly abandoned, or at least I had hoped. I broke inside from the roof and I began stealing everything from barrels and chests, and that's when I began finding bones and skulls. And they were literally everywhere, and I know what you're thinking. Why is he taking entire skeletons? And my answer to that question is, um, don't worry about it. Overall, while I was here, I found these cool skeletons. I found a pile of heads, a wither skeleton hand, and some free coal blocks. And I know what you're thinking, again, why is he taking these literal body parts and bones and stuff? And I'm going to once again reiterate, don't worry about it. They're cool decorations that I could use for maybe a spooky room or something in the future. Anyways, at this point, I felt like I was kind of pushing my luck, so I left that swamp before whatever made all of those skeletons decided to come back. That is, assuming it wasn't my dad, because he probably never will. So I flew out of this place and I continued looking for new structures to explore while checking the map for dragons until I found this ugly looking stone temple thing. So I landed nearby and emptied out my inventory into one of my shulkers, and that's when I noticed something only slightly concerning. The forest in the distance was on fire, and that fire was pretty suspicious. It was almost like a dragon's fire. So I checked my map and boom, there was a nearby ice dragon nest on the map. However, that didn't really make much sense because ice dragons don't start fires, so Something was off. I mean, the ice and fire mod changes quite often, so I guess you just never know. So I clenched my cheeks and I slowly began approaching where the dragon should be until I saw it. And it was also already dead somehow. So I made my way up to its den until I heard one of the most terrifying growls I had ever heard in Minecraft. It turns out that the fire had come from a nearby red fire dragon that took down this blue boy in all of his glory. So, do you know what I did? If you guessed steal all of the easy dragon scales and bones, and then run away as fast as you could, you would be very right. After picking up the rest of the scales and bones, I flew up into this nearby slime island where I placed down a waystone as the sun began going down. After this, I checked my inventory, and I kid you not, that dragon dropped me the exact amount of scales that I needed to craft myself a full set of dragon armor. This new mod pack was cracked. So I teleported back home since it was thunderstorming, and I went to sleep so I could build my new armor the next day. On day 126, the very first thing I did was craft myself an entire set of sapphire dragon armor. And now that I had the armor, I was going to need 4 mending books, 4 protection 4 books, and 4 unbreaking 3 books to fully enchant each of them into god tier armor. So I began the great trading cycle once again. I traded tons of books and sticks for emeralds whenever the villagers had refreshed their trades, and I began buying all of the protection 2 books that I could to combine into protection 4. That is, until I ran out of emeralds once again, and all of my traders were done for the night once the sun had gone down. So I went to sleep for the night, and first thing in the morning of the next day, it was back to that juicy capitalism. I first laid out my chest and put all of my armor inside it to see what I needed. And I had already traded for all four mending books, and I had two of the four protection four books that I was going to need. So I went back to the villagers to keep checking their trades until this intruder enderman ran into my base and me being the massive five head gamer that I am, I smacked him in the face. And that's when I learned just who I was up against. This enderman had protection four and he was so, so unreasonably strong. He did 
way more damage than he should have. And wow, was I glad my dragon armor was almost ready because I was tired of this. And I collected my surprising amount of drops from him before getting back to my capitalistic mission. I continued trading different resources for emeralds and combining books until I had all four protection for enchantments that I was going to need and one of the unbreaking three ones. Things were quickly starting to come together. However, I was now super poor when it came to levels and I was going to need a ton more to get those last three unbreaking three books, let alone combine everything together into books and add them to my dragon armor. So I figured it was time to pay a good visit back to my good old fashioned XP farm from the first 100 days. And boy was this a different experience with all of the newly added mods. While I was grinding XP, random enchanted mobs with abilities would spawn in making crazy noises and after defeating them they dropped random enchanted bottles and music discs along with a ton more XP than normal. Overall I continued this process of grinding XP, trading with villagers, and combining more unbreaking books until day 129 when I finally had all of the enchantments that I needed. So on day 130 it was back to the XP farm for the remaining amount of XP that I was going to need for my brand new full set of Gucci Dragon Armor. And boy did this take so much XP to combine everything. I sat here until the end of day 133 just slaying away at more mobs for enough XP to one by one combine all of my enchanted books into single books before finally adding all of them to my dragon scale armor. And this process was pretty rough because each piece of armor costed an additional 24 levels of XP to finally enchant, even after all the XP that I had already used building up the books. However, this was all worth it in the end, because once I finished my final piece of armor, I took off that decrepit and weak gross diamond armor, and I threw on this gorgeous set of dragon armor. And boy, did I look amazing in this. The blue goes with the purple on my skin perfectly. Plus, my armor is now significantly more cracked than before. I now had an additional three extra defense over top of my original bar of 10. On day 134, now that I have my completely gorgeous armor, I began checking out what kinds of dragon weapons I could make, and that's when I stumbled upon the dragon sword that could be upgraded into absolutely busted variants, such as a flame sword and this super sick looking lightning blade that matched my channel colors perfectly. So, of course, like the massive Chad gamer that I was, I now had to figure out how I was going to get the remaining wither bones to craft myself these decadent looking swords. And it turned out they dropped from cockatrice, which supposedly spawn in savannas, at least according to the wiki that is. So I marked my closest savanna looking biome on the map, and I began my short journey there. However, while on the way there, I spotted a quick and easy mob tower with a free waystone and some gold on top. So I quickly landed on it and ran downstairs so I could break the vex spawner so I didn't have to deal with it. And that's when my mind melted because apparently one of the mods in this mod pack literally lets me pick up spawners with silk touch. This changed everything. I was about to become the fire nation towards these mobs. So of course, like the man of culture that I was, I ran down the stairs stealing every spawner that I saw while absolutely freaking out. And things didn't stop here. I went to check on the loot in each of the chests, expecting the, you know, typical garbage. But no, with all of these new mods, these chests now actually had things of value inside. I found a bunch of new items, including my first ring that gave me plus one armor, and I began just freaking out. This new update had me in love with this mod pack. So after I sat there freaking out over all of that loot, I went back to the top to collect the reasons why I actually came here. At this point, it was now nighttime and raining, and uh, the day really flies by while looting, I'll tell you that. So on day 135, after waking up and cleaning out my inventory, I set back off towards the savannah from yesterday. And upon arriving there, it turned out to be a rocky mountains instead, which didn't have any cockatrice in sight, so I kept flying until I noticed a dragon's nest. And that's when my greatest nightmare became reality. I went to F5 to look for the dragon, and he was right behind me! But I wasn't scared because I had an elytra and fireworks, right? He couldn't catch up. Could he? Well, get this. Apparently in the new Fire and Ice versions, dragons can maintain the speed of your freaking fireworks! And this man would not leave me alone for anything. This was terrifying. It was kind of like that movie with the bus that was going to run out of gas and there was a bomb inside of the bus. And the second that the bus ran out of gas or stopped, it, you know, just 
Boom. That's that's kind of like the situation. I was flying away from the dragon as fast as I could, burning through the remaining fireworks that I had, which was not that many, and I could not get away. I also did not have a waystone in my inventory, so I couldn't just land and quickly bail. If this guy caught up to me, I have no clue if I could survive it or not yet. And that's when I realized that I was heading directly towards Paintopia with my villagers. And that's when I had this Vsauce level pro gamer idea to quickly land and bail by using the Waystone. So I did exactly that. I'm now pretty sure that I could never go back there again to see any of my villagers, at least until I'm strong enough to take on the dragon, I guess. Either way, this is one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had in Minecraft for sure. And from now on while flying, I am carrying ender pearls and a waystone just in case I need to bail quickly from any dragons nearby. I mean, at the end of the day, this kind of helped me out though, because I was now prepared. And now that I was prepared for the literal worst case scenario, I set back out from my base in the direction that I've already traveled to, hoping to find some new structures. And I spent the rest of this day stopping at villages and stealing their waystones until I found another battle tower that I spent the rest of the night stealing the spawners and looting all of the chests from. For the next day, day 136, I immediately set out leaving the tower behind and the very first thing I saw was this giant's lair and today I wanted to conquer something. So I sat here sniping him with a bow until he stopped taking damage. So I got even closer by swimming into the nearby water while hitting him with the old razzle dazzle until he dropped to the ground. And this dude dropped me his eye which just so happens to be a legendary weapon that gives weakness to nearby enemies. Anyways, while fighting this guy, he broke some of the nearby palm tree, which dropped a palm sapling, and this had given me a grand idea, because one of the mods had spawned starfish and other little beach items all around the ground that just looked so nice. So I decided to why not pick them all up, so that way I can make a nice tropical area in the future, if I ever decide to do that. And honestly, I get distracted by some of the dumbest things sometimes, I swear. But anyways, after I finished collecting all of the easy to get starfish, I set back off towards this pirate ship with one thing on my mind. At the center of each ship was a Vindicator spawner that I could use to make an Emerald Farm Baby. So I flew around taking some pretty pro gamer shots, killing a bunch of them until I felt it was safe enough to land on the ship and begin absolutely devastating their forces. That is, until the Vindicator spawner in the middle spawned a very special enemy that did way more damage than he should have. In fact, this guy ended up knocking me off of the ship. So I shot him in the face a couple of times and I flew back up to collect my winnings, which ended up being two diamonds in that very important Vindicator spawner from the center. However, I was not finished harassing these pillagers yet because there were two more beached pillager ships in the distance and these things were absolutely cracked. I spent my whole night fighting my way through, and these had so much loot. There were tons of chests everywhere that were full of fish that I didn't really need. However, hidden among them were chests full of iron, gold, emeralds, and other insane loot. Along with all of these chests were two separate captain quarters that had all kinds of new items that I've never seen before. They had spirit orbs, lore fragments, blank scrolls, along with these books called tattered tomes that gave me levels when I right clicked them. By the time I had finished looting both of these ships and clearing out all of the enemies, it had become morning and I had gotten 17 diamonds, 2 stacks plus 2 additional emeralds, a stack and a half of gold, a stack in 19 iron, and something called a dagger of greed that had some pretty cool effects when attacking pillagers, including the ability to get bad omen without a captain, which technically means I could also make a raid farm by using the pillager spawner in the future. On day 137, after leaving the two ships, I flew over to the nearby base full of villagers while not thinking, and I accidentally started a raid for them. So, me being the good guy that I am, I did what I thought was right, and I left them to deal with it by themselves. It was not my problem, because I was now on to another nearby pillager ship, and this one had pretty much the same as the first two. I got a whole bunch more iron... I got emeralds, gold, and a bunch more levels from those tattered tomes, along with a bunch more things that I had no clue what to do with, and some pretty decent enchanted books. By the time I was finished, 
borrowing all of their stuff. It was now nighttime and for some reason also thundering. So again, I just went to sleep because I didn't want to deal with it. For day 138, it's kind of difficult to explain what happened because literally so much did. The very first thing I decided to do after waking up was fly up to the top of the massive pillager castle that happened to be next door. So that way I could break into the attic and steal all of the OP loot with minimum effort. I quickly ran in and I broke all of the spider spawners first because they basically did no damage to me and I didn't really want to deal with them as I struggled to stuff all of the loot into my inventory. And after I cleaned up all the spawners, I began looting each and every chest and barrel with absolutely no interference at all from the piles of evokers below, which honestly, I probably should have just done this in the first 100 days in the first place, but I didn't really have an elytra, so things didn't work out like that. While I was up here, I honestly felt like a kid in a candy store. I could be here all day talking about just all the loot that I had gotten from these chests because there was just so much of it. And not just the typical loot either. There were special items like rings that had crazy abilities. I found spell stones and I found the holy grail. Not like figuratively or anything, literally. I found the holy grail. But anyways, after finishing up all of the loot in here, I really didn't want to take on the pillager outpost down below because I wanted to become more godlike first before I came back and exterminated every one of these cursed buildings that dare to exist in my world. So with like 10 shulkers full of loot, I left to continue my search for the cockatrice until I had finally found my first real savanna. Except once again, there were no cockatrices in sight. But I did find another dragon's den with no dragon in sight either, which honestly terrified me. So I left towards the nearby desert where I found a nice village that I was going to use to finally go home. That is until I found this really interesting statue that kind of had a Legend of Zelda vibe, because apparently those spirit orbs that I had been finding could be traded to the statue for either health or stamina. However, stamina decided to work, because that doesn't really make sense, but you know what, whatever. And this is when I realized that during this whole trip of looting every spirit orb that I had found, I had taken with me. So I sorted through my shulkers to find them, and just like that, I had gotten an additional two hearts of hardcore health. This mod pack was insane. So for future reference, I placed down a waystone next to the statue so I could continue to trade for more health. And right after placing it down, I saw another one of those statues directly across from the first. So now that there was two and I wasn't risking losing anything if it did happen to break and not drop, I tried picking it up and it literally dropped me the statue. I'm not used to mod packs being this forgiving. In Arlcraft, you couldn't pick up anything. At this point, I didn't know if it would still work if I placed it down anywhere, but I was still just as ecstatic nonetheless. And things today did not end here, because as I was messing around with my loot, I didn't notice the entire village around me's slow descent to zombiehood, until I turned around to see this whole horde of zombies with one with full diamond armor in the middle. And I kid you not, this thing hit me one time and broke my totem. I was terrified. What did this guy do to do that much damage? So I very quickly flew up to the nearby roof and I sat here sniping everyone until I was able to destroy the diamond boy. And upon destroying the last zombie, I jumped down to pick up its sword and I got like four achievements at once. It turns out that zombie had a pretty busted sword that had smite six, looting three, and unbreaking four on it. Today was insane. I was speechless. Also a little confused as to why Smite did so much damage to me when I'm alive. Or am I? Anyways, for the next day, day 139, after that craziness that had been yesterday, I decided to teleport back home and take it easy for the day and sort out all of my inventory because my base is becoming an absolute train wreck. So the first thing I did was whip out all of the new shulker boxes to see the sheer mass of loot that I had accumulated. And after condensing all of the raw materials like emeralds, diamonds, gold, and iron into blocks, I had gotten almost Arlcraft levels of stonks. After this, I placed out the remaining loot filled shulkers and I began organizing them as well. And while organizing my shulkers, I also found out that Better Minecraft Plus actually has its own storage mod that it turns out is very easy to use and to make the resources to craft. So once I finally found a place that I 100% want to call home, I can have a full inventory that I no longer would have to organize, which would make this whole process so much easier. But in the meantime, I spent the rest of today and night pulling all of the useless items that I didn't really need from all of my chests and shulkers and yeeting them off of the edge of my base. 
During this process, I also disenchanted every piece of diamond gear that I had for some more easy XP before banishing them to the ground along with the rest of the trash. And by the time the sun had began rising, this is what the ground had looked like. On the next day, day 140, I spent more time organizing all of my inventory, including emptying the piles of shulkers that I had laid out everywhere. And not gonna lie, I kind of gave up organizing because after researching the storage mod, I found out that I would still need some kind of wall of chests. And honestly, I'm kind of tired of living here. So instead of spending the next couple of days organizing, I instead was going to set back out exploring in search of both cockatrice and a new place to call home. But but first, since I could now pick up spawners, I teleported back to Crimes Against Cows where I stole both the spawner and the waystone before flying back home for the night. But before sleeping, I also remembered to set up one last thing. I crafted myself a brand new tool belt so I could now more efficiently manage my inventory. And while looking for the recipe to upgrade the tool belt, I also found these crazy villager items that I could combine to apparently upgrade the brain of an iron golem. Which kind of gave me some real Frankenstein vibes, so of course I was going to check that out in the future. But anyways, I made a bunch of the tool belt upgrade pouches, and I blew through all of my crazy levels upgrading it as much as I could as the sun began to rise. And thus began day 141, and this day was once again crazy. The first thing I did was fast travel over to the Hell statue from before where I lost a totem and I began flying around looking for the savannah that must have been nearby and that is when I found it. I found my long awaited savannah biome and it had both a sun chief nearby and a teal sea serpent just chilling in the water. So after landing, I began taking some pop shots at the sea serpent, expecting it to fly into the sky and get stuck on land step sea serpent Arrowcraft style, but uh, no. He just kind of sat here until I revoked his license to live. And he dropped me a solid six teal scales. Nice. So now that that absolutely crazy high stakes battle was over, not sarcasm, it was finally time to hunt down the sun chief like I said I would do in the first 100 days before I kind of ran out of time. Yes, I do remember it. So I ran in to begin slaying his underlings, and even though they basically couldn't touch me, it was still a lot of fun fighting them. I ran around two-shotting whoever got in my way until the Sun Chief began raining rays of light down upon me. So just in case I did any real damage, I ate a golden apple before trying to find him, and I kept hearing him, but I had no clue where he was. I knew they normally were sat in the center of the village, but this one was stuck on the side of a mountain, so I had no clue where he was until I finally found him dug into the side of the hill. And that's when I went in for the kill before being yeeted into oblivion. However, that was not enough to stop me. I flew up with my elytra to begin shooting him in the face with my bow and it devastated him. After only a couple of shots, he was getting real weak while firing off his new attacks. But I was still standing unfazed as I took the remaining shots to banish him to the doom dimension where he belonged. And now, not only did I have his nice golden mask, I apparently had an inventory full of the masks from his fallen comrades as well. These will make wonderful trophies for my new base once I find it. And overall, fighting these guys is a lot of fun. I really enjoy seeing mods like this that have really nice character models, crazy cool sound design, and just, it just makes Minecraft so much more fun than it already was. Like, honestly, great mod pack. Anyways though, little miniature rant over, by the time the Sun Chief had fallen, it was now nighttime, and I was hoping to find some cockatrice spawning here at night. But instead, I found this giant mutant step skeleton that would not leave me alone. So I retreated into the nearby village, where I found this interesting tower with a bestiary pedestal and a chest that I couldn't reach. I went outside to get some blocks for it, and phantoms started spawning, so I found the closest bed and I slept through the night to get rid of those sussy demon bakas. On day 142, the non-stop insanity didn't stop. I first left my borrowed house to find a goblin trader friend that immediately got blown up by the scraper. I'm sorry, little dude. 07's in the chat. I stopped by the tower from yesterday where I grabbed the lectern and I built up to loot that chest up top. And after finishing the first tower, I found a second identical one where I ran into something massive. Apparently, there's this giant ocean creature called a butterfly leviathan and I couldn't shoot it with my bow, and I was not getting in close to that thing. 
So, I broke into the building the safer way, I found my first bestiary book, I used some of the manuscript pages that were in here to research some things, and I looted the chest up top. And for safety, I got as far away from this creature as I could after finishing up that building. I continued moving off in the other direction until I left the village to explore the two nearby ships in the ocean to get some more of those sweet Vindicator spawners for more emeralds. Except I noticed a nearby rock that 100% had sirens on it, and I'm sure I could take them on, but for now, I really wasn't up for that challenge, just in case, because you never know what else is just kind of waiting over there. So instead, I continued searching the nearby savannas for more cockatrees, which, huge surprise here, was unsuccessful. After moving through the savanna, I looted this abandoned house near the village, and the upstairs chest had a two clean diamonds inside. After borrowing those diamonds, I noticed this strange altar nearby that I decided to check out. It was from yet another mod that I had zero clue what to do with, so I stole the main block and I tried to steal what looked important, but I couldn't break them. Maybe in the future, I could end up figuring these out. On day 143, after finishing looting the nearby village in the savannah, I had changed my mind about dealing with those nearby ships because I was a strong and independent Minecraft player who didn't fear no sirens. So I flew in to begin taking pop shots at them, and they had a giant butterfly leviathan protecting them for some not okay reason, so it was mission abort. I tried flying away from the sirens and I could feel them pulling me back, but as hard as they tried, no mob can bring me down. So ignoring the sirens, I landed on the first ship and I quickly began my assault, taking out as many of these simps as I could before running in to steal the emerald spawner. But I was too late and an extra powerful tier 3 subscriber spawned in and did so much damage to me so I flew back up to catch my breath and eat a golden apple and that's when I realized that all of my golden apples were gone and I had no clue what happened. They weren't in my shulkers or my inventory, they were just gone. But I guess that was fine because after landing I finished off the last guy and I stole myself a brand new spawner along with the rest of their loot from the chests. And after that I flew over to the next boat for some good old fashioned reckless fighting with minimal blocking. Seriously, why do I why do I even have a shield? Half the time I don't use it. Anyways, though, after everyone on the top deck were gone, I broke through the floor, stole the Vindicator spawner, and I cleaned up the last few guys. And just like that, all their loot are belong to me. So now that I've borrowed all of their mortal possessions, I placed a waystone so I could teleport back home for the night to craft 30 more golden apples. Because once again, no clue what happened to those. Thank you, Minecraft. And I went to sleep for the night. After waking up on day 144, I fast traveled back to the ship where I continued my journey for a home. I mean, apparently, because obviously these biomes were not going to spawn in cockatrices anytime soon. And today was a day full of loot. I spent most of my time stopping by three more of those mob towers, where I stole all of the spawners inside, like a man of culture that I am. I looted each of the chests where I found more golden apples, I found scrolls, I got a ton more XP from those tattered tomes, which were just discount XP tomes when you think about it, but yeah, that's all I've got. And finally, I found this interesting enchanted book that apparently makes me mine very fast, but never instantly. So like, it's kind of like efficiency, but worthless because you can't use beacons with it. Weird. But anyways, after finishing all three of these towers, I discovered a buried desert temple pyramid with some more pretty decent loot inside. I found more golden apples, more tattered tomes full of juicy XP, and another spirit orb which I absolutely love to find because they incentivize me to loot even more so I can get more hearts of health and figure out whatever stamina does. Either way, it was now nighttime in the desert, so I placed a bed and I slept the night away before leaving the temple. On day 145, the first thing I discovered upon waking up was how I could store both my bed and shulker boxes inside of my tool belt, which was an absolute massive wrinkly brain move that makes looting and exploring so much more fluent, if I kept doing it throughout the series, because I'm pretty sure I forgot after this. After cleaning up my inventory and adding the new things to my tool belt, I built up from the loot room of the pyramid and I set back out to continue looking for a new place to call home. And throughout this day, I found pretty much anything but that. I first discovered a new village with a friendly giant who was casually walking around and storing villagers in his stomach to protect them. What a nice guy. However, I was not that nice. I shot him with my bow two times and he dropped. I guess the villagers maybe were eating him from the inside or something. Ironic how that works out. Anyways, after killing him and stealing his eye and skull, that's an interesting sentence, I was going to loot his cave until I saw the second giant who was hungry for my gamer meat. Sorry guys, 
but I'm not a big fan of that. So after leaving that Attack on Titan-esque village behind, I started flying over the ocean until I found this giant ship with black sails that I very bravely landed on where I started to fruit ninja all of these skeletons. And I guess these dudes were huge fans because they all just kind of stood here and um, let me get a high score. After defeating the entire top deck, I went into the captain's quarters where I 1v1 this guy perfectly while taking zero damage like the pro gamer that I am. And this is future pain talking here. I don't know if that was sarcasm or if I was being serious. I guess I guess you'll know. Anyways, it was now nighttime and the final thing I had to do was take out the spawner on the bottom floor, which was pretty easy because all of these step skeletons were stuck and needed my help to get out. And after deleting all of them and stealing their spawner, I finished looting the entire ship, which didn't end up having much on it that would make this much effort worth it, but at least my XP was now through the roof. For day 146, I set back out for more of the typical looting. I found about four different mob towers that I quickly stole the waystone, the gold, the top chest, and all the loot from, which at this point were becoming kind of a chore, but that didn't matter because soon I was about to stumble upon the perfect place for my new home. I continued flying over an ocean until I hit this desert that had this absolutely massive and stunning palace. I mean, this place looked like smallish beans had been inside of my world before me. And honestly, this place is so huge, I didn't know where to begin. That is until I saw this next door treehouse looking base that also looked amazing. This place is full of zombies with diamond pickaxes and skeletons that occasionally kept shooting me in the face. But more importantly, this place looked like a perfect contender to make a perfect base. So I landed on top of it and I carefully built down until I was in range to smack each of the zombies without taking crazy damage. And by the time all of the enemies that were outside were gone, it had become nighttime and I could finally check the chests. And inside of them was so much stuff including these animated items called coin dragons. From both of these chests, I got a total of four coin dragons, and I was really hoping that I could have them as like pets or something. And I also got a ton of other pretty quality loot. And now that the top layer of this place is safe, I could look around to see what was nearby. And this place truly had a million dollar view. There were these giant black mountains with lava flowing down the sides in the distance, along with this giant fossil sticking out of the earth. And to our left was that colossal palace that was probably full of things to kill and loot to borrow. This place looked gorgeous. So on the next day, day 147, I climbed down the side of my base to begin slaying all the enemies down below. And after they were all gone, I checked more of the chests, which had a fifth coin dragon and this thing called an Eldawood lava bucket, which I was really hoping could store more than one source of lava. Maybe infinite lava? Ooh woo? Yeah, I just said that. What can you do about it? Anyways, I spent this entire day slowly making my way down each level, clearing out all of the enemies until I stumbled upon this huge rave of mobs below. Just to be safe, I kept my distance while taking out skeletons, one by one, until I heard a super loud explosion. Either it was the skeleton that for some reason spread snow everywhere, or a creeper got squished in the center. Either way, I didn't really care, so I continued clearing out the pile of mobs until this place was finally safe. And after deleting the rest of those crypto bros from existence, I checked my inventory for some of the armor drops, and this leather cap had freaking protection 8 on it. What even was this mod pack at this point? I continued checking the loot inside of the chests up top of this place, and it was busted. I found an iron pickaxe and a bow with the indestructible enchantment. So I tried taking them out for a test run to see if they would lose durability. And after breaking blocks with a pickaxe, this thing was standing strong. I'm pretty sure this was an infinite pickaxe. Unfortunately though, I couldn't add indestructible to my bow because it already had mending. Or at least that's what I figured, I don't really know. Anyways, now that I was getting my first taste of these really crazy enchantments, I was dying to figure out how boosted these things really were. On day 148, now that my maybe permanent base was cleared out, I placed down a waystone and I flew over to the top of the smallish beans castle. So that way I could begin clearing out the place for some of that insane loot. And honestly, today had me speechless. I ran inside to break the first spawner I saw, which turned out to be a wither skeleton spawner. After taking down the first wither skeleton, he dropped something that I had been searching for forever now. These guys dropped wither bones, which, okay, listen, hear me out here. 
I know it's pretty obvious, but Ice and Fire is a mod that has changed a lot since Earlcraft, so I kind of forgot about this old glitch where they never showed Wither Skeletons as part of the drop table for Wither Bones. And I know you think, oh, Wither Bones? Where would they drop from, right? Definitely not a Wither Skeleton, right? But listen, hear me out here. Fire and Ice changes a lot, so you never know. But anyways, I could now use these bones to begin making dragon bone tools and weapons. But first, I was going to save that for another day because this place is insane. I continued running through and taking out the skeletons and their spawners as quickly as I could so as few of them would spawn as possible. And these guys were really beefy. They took so many swipes before they went down, but after wiping all of them out in this area, the chests ended up having some pretty cracked loot. The two chests on the next floor up had the typical diamond enchant pieces of armor and other good loot, and the chest at the very top had almost a stack of diamonds inside. There were 42 diamonds inside of this one chest alone, and this structure was insanely huge. The amount of loot in this place, in comparison this tiny little room, was a speck of dust in the grand scheme of loot. It's fair to say that I was in my element here, and I mean this literally. I moved on to the next maze-like room on the roof, and there were like eight spawners in there that I battled my way through and collected, and this place just kept frying my mind. These guys were dropping wither skulls, I was getting enough spawners to make the most insane farms known to man, and at the very center was this super OP treasure room that was full of blocks of gold, there was diamond, emerald, along with a chest with two shiny new netherite swords. And as if I needed more of them, there were 48 more diamonds. This world was becoming more and more like Arlcraft by the second, which I know I keep saying, I'm sorry. By the time I had finished clearing out this second room, it was now the end of day 152. For the next three days straight, days 153 through 155, I went back to the palace to continue my OP loot binging spree. I started off back at the top floor where I control alt deleted all of the regular and wither skeletons as I went around breaking all of the spawners and lighting up the area. I ran up the second tower area so fast the spawners couldn't even keep up with me before they met their demise. And of course, the three chests up here at the top, so many more diamond, iron, gold, and rare items inside, but overall, nothing too much crazier than what I've already found. After finishing the top floor, I made my way down the staircase to this middle area full of zombies. I sat on the staircase, sniping some of the more powerful guys before I ran in to clean up the rest of the stragglers and any spawners. And this area was kind of a scam because there were only two chests and they had some kind of mediocre loot overall. But the overall design of each area of this place was amazing. It was so much fun fighting my way through here. After finishing up all the rooms of zombies, I headed down the orange stared area, and I somehow ended up inside this graveyard at the center of a more massive set of dark rooms. And at first, I was handling things pretty well, until I was knocked off of my tree and ganged up on by this lightning fast cave spider and a ghost witch, which is a weird combo, come on now. So in desperation, I grabbed my fireworks and I sonic speed flew out of there with no regrets whatsoever, except maybe hitting the wall once or twice. We don't talk about that, just like Bruno. But anyways, to finish up the day, I headed back to my temporary base for a moment to actually catch my breath. And for the next four days, days 156 through 160, I spent more time grinding all the remaining parts of this dungeon palace into the dust. I first flew down to the second open area on the side, and I was ambushed by more of those gross Lightning McQueen cave spiders. But after fending them off from the distance, I ran in and destroyed their spawner, and I lit up the entire area. After this, I spent the next couple of days clearing out as many of the spawners in dark areas as I could, until my pickaxe was about to break. So I left the area to go back to my now super inefficient XP farm, where I sat there grinding XP with my pickaxe and my offhand until it was about at 20% durability. Because for some reason in this mod pack, it took decades to repair tools like pickaxes. But anyways, now that I've gotten most of the best loot from the Desert Palace Dungeon, I'm pretty sure I was done with it for now because I needed upgrades. I needed to make a new XP slash emerald farm and I needed to begin trading with more villagers. I also needed to begin making my bone tools and weapons. And finally, I needed to make a real base with at least some proper storage. So it's kind of safe to say I had more important things to do than to sit there and finish the rest of that dungeon to completion. But maybe in the future we'll come back when we're a little stronger and we'll clear out anything that's left. 
So on day 161, I teleported back to my original base, and I crafted two new Dragonbone swords that I began enchanting until I realized that I still needed one more thing before I could make the swords that I wanted. I was going to need to kill a dragon to collect its breath, and to be honest, I didn't know if I was ready for that yet, but today was the day that we were going to find out. That dragon from like 20 days ago that was most likely munching my villagers as we speak in Paintopia is going down. So I organized my inventory to the best that I could to counter the dragon. I have a literal army of arrows, two god apples, half a stack of golden apples, a third totem of undying in my hotbar just in case, I brought ender pearls, and a panic waypoint just in case I have to leave, and fireworks. After this, I added a waypoint to my map by the original village because I, I can't really teleport there. The dragon might just eat me. Yeah, you get, you get the point. So now that my waypoint was on the map, I flew the short journey here until I saw him chilling near my original house, 1v2ing an iron golem and a guard. And that is when I engaged him in terrifying combat. And uh, apparently I was scared for nothing because I was insanely overprepared for this fight and the guy just kind of fell over and died. And just like that, I had slain my first dragon in better Minecraft. So I grabbed the glass bottles that I brought in preparation and I took three bottles of fire dragon goo to begin making fire swords. And yes, I know it's not what it's called, but I just think it's so much more funny to call it that. Let's be honest here. But anyways, now that I had what I needed to make the fire sword, all I needed was some lightning dragon goo to make that beautiful purple lightning sword. But for now, the threat of this village is gone, and I went around checking on my villagers to see if any of them were safe, and literally the only thing the dragon chose to burn was my original house. I mean, I don't really care, but like, why? Why didn't he eat any of the villagers? But anyways, most important thing is that my firework villager was still alive and strong. Because honestly, this guy was the most important. The rest of them could get eaten for all I care. Sorry, guys. So after this, I went back to my base, and I crafted my first flame sword of this world, and this boy does extra damage towards ice dragons. But first, I was going to need real enchantments to make it into the god sword that it was so very much so meant to be. But honestly, today I had gotten my first taste of dragon blood, and I wanted more. Plus, my inventory was still perfectly prepped and ready to go to take on more dragons. So it's safe to say, tomorrow, we're going hunting. So on day 162, I teleported back to the possibly new base where I had marked a possible nearby dragon's nest, and once flying over it, the target had been spotted. And this one happened to be a copper dragon. So because I was already and set to go, I began taking my shots, and this guy had way more health than the last dragon. Either that first dragon was just super weak, or that iron golem was a literal Mr. Beast. But either way, more health or not, this dragon was still going down. I stood strong and continued shooting him with arrows until he shot me in the face with a huge stream of lightning, which meant only one thing. Out of all the dragons this guy could have been, I had found the exact lightning dragon that I needed. So I kept hitting this boy in the face with perfect accuracy, because I don't miss, until he finally went down. I grabbed more glass bottles and I collected three bottles of that purple dragon goo, while unfortunately wasting all of my scale loot slots. But hey, that was worth it because that's two dragons down and now I had access to lightning weapons. But I was still not done here, as Billy Mays says, but wait, there's more. I continued searching nearby for more dragons until I stumbled across this village with the best blocks ever. There was this dance floor with two DJs in RGB gaming blocks. So of course, like the gamer Chad that I am, I stole all of them and it turns out that they're super easy to craft more of, so you will definitely see those in a future video. After borrowing my new RGB gaming blocks, I continued on until I found a nearby desert temple, which is the perfect spot to find 
more spirit orbs. So I flew over to it and before going inside I checked my map for more dragon's nest and I found another one a couple hundred blocks in the distance. So as the sun was starting to go down I entered the temple and I dug down to the loot room where I found an additional three spirit orbs which now put me at the perfect amount to buy another heart container. And after I finished looting this dump, I climbed my way back up to place a new waystone that I then used to teleport back home, where I tested out placing one of the new statues to buy health, and I gave myself a third additional heart. After this, I crafted myself the coveted and gorgeous lightning sword that I had the perfect name for. And I was super excited. This sword looks so cool. For the next day, day 163, I teleported back to that waystone, ready to make that dragon's day significantly worse. I flew in close so I could begin taking shots at him, and I couldn't really find the dragon until he Five Nights at Freddy jump scared me from behind. And now, I was angry. I sat here taking shot after shot at this boy while backing off as he got closer and closer until this big dumb idiot got himself stuck. You could say Step Dragon was stuck. That's not the first time I'm going to make this joke in this series. But that's okay because I stole all of his scales and bones without taking a single heart of damage. Things were going GG easy. So I was going to continue on my newfound quest to hunt down more dragons until I got distracted by this platypus. Minecraft has platypi. I was now in love. I needed this as a pet that I could name Perry the platypus. So I desperately sifted through my shulkers to find wood for a crafting bench as fast as I humanly could so I could make a bucket and use it to try and catch him. And during this process I may have accidentally hit him and I was so sorry for that. But after grabbing a water source I placed it down on him and I now had a bucket of platypus. We had gotten our first pet. Now I just needed a bucket of lizard and my life would be complete. Anyways, to end off this already amazing day, I had found another one of those structures that I was thinking about calling home nearby that I had to quickly loot the two top chests from. So I sat here struggling not to get hit while stealing as much of the good stuff as I could and by the time this day was over, I was back at home where I tested out summoning the coin dragons and they are so adorable. Plus, they kind of just hang out wherever you place them. This mod pack was too much. On day 164, since my loot storage problems were becoming worse and worse, I decided to teleport back to my possible new future base. However, I wasn't really content with this area anymore because I am way too picky. So I continued flying until I found this really sus looking ladder that brought me down to what I thought was going to be my doom. However, instead, it ended up being a group of villagers and golems. This place was exactly what I needed because I was going to need more villagers to make my brand new enchanted god dragon swords. So after exploring around this area, I placed down a waystone so I could come back in the future before setting back out. And even though I didn't find the perfect place to live today, it was still crazy productive. I kept flying until I hit a new desert with a new sand village that had more of those RGB gaming blocks, which of course I borrowed, followed by me finding this insane looting giant monster skeleton with a pile of beautiful gold blocks inside of its mouth of all places. So while I was flying with my elytra, I just kind of landed in its mouth. That's a sentence. I broke the spawner and I killed the golden husk and I stole all of these gold stonks before continuing on to finding this masterpiece of a coliseum with a spawner in the center that spawned this giant sky demon with a diamond armor skeleton riding it. I shot this guy in the face for a solid 10 or so times banishing him back to the Shadow Realm where he very likely belonged, before also sending his bony friend to the same fate. And this dude dropped me this god tier uncraftable potion. This thing gives you bad omen 5 for raids, 30 minutes of strength, plus 1 minute and a half health boost and saturation. Plus I now had the spawner that could hopefully summon more of these things so I could farm more potions. But anyways it was now nighttime, so I placed my bed out to sleep underneath the stars in the center of this gorgeous coliseum. After conquering that coliseum I spent the next 4 days straight days 165 through 168 continuing my journey for a new place to live and boy were these 4 days action packed. On the first day I found another one of those fossils with more loot inside of its mouth except this time there was a small pool of water with some emerald blocks inside, along with some ores that were ripe for the taking. Except for some weird reason, this red dragon decided that I was his worst mortal enemy, or he just thought that I was a snack, which honestly is pretty true, 
but either way, this man was not getting away with his crimes against me. So while he was trying to cook me to a crisp, I began taking pop shots at his face until he finally went down in the very fire that he had spread like a plague. And since I had to waste so many arrows on him, I thought it was only fair that I took his skin. All 10 scales of it. And now that he was no longer a threat, I of course went back for those gorgeous emerald blocks that had my name on them. And if you think this day was a lot, well, I mean, things, things got more crazy. I later found myself in another desert because for whatever cursed reason, my world was half full of them. And this place was full of things to do. I first stumbled upon another one of those underground villager bases, except this place was emptier than Titanfall's servers, which didn't really make much sense to me until this desert worm began spawn camping me at the top of the ladder. Most likely this guy was to blame for the now lack of villagers, but that didn't matter to me because nearby was another desert temple that would hopefully have more of those soul orbs that I could use to get more health or at least some more god apples and apparently another dragon's lair nearby because while I was just kind of casually hanging out, sifting through my inventory for a way to catch these adorable lizards that were everywhere, this whole place was set ablaze around me and this dragon caught me and started chomping my head. I was terrified that things were going to end here. So I ate one of my god apples in desperation, just in case, and after breaking out, I began exacting my revenge for those poor defenseless lizards that this guy had attacked. I kept shooting this dragon as much as I could, slowly turning him into a pincushion for my arrows, until I ran out. And that's when things were getting super dicey. Because not only was I down to my last 10 fireworks so I couldn't escape the dragon, but I also didn't have my blue shulker box that was full of all of my waystones, which were my only real way out of the situation. So I kept flying around the area with the remaining fireworks that I did have until I finally got close enough to my shulkers and one of them was entirely gone. That jerk dragon destroyed the entire box full of loot and he took my lizards. I was going to get my revenge. But first I grabbed the shulker full of waystones, I grabbed one out, placed it down and I quickly dipped out of there before I became that dragon's food. Honestly, I really don't know what was with dragons trying to eat me these last couple of days. It's not like I took any of their family away or anything. So on the next day, day 169, after getting back home, I cleaned out my inventory and grabbed myself more arrows so I could delete that dragon from existence. And that I did because after teleporting back and shooting him with only four more shots, he fell to the ground right before eating this nearby farmer. So I robbed his body of its skin and bones and I got a clean 19 more emerald dragon scales. And now that the desert was a relatively more safe place, I headed back over to the desert temple that I was trying to loot before I was so rudely interrupted, and I broke my way down so I could steal myself a bunch more loot. And inside of these chests wasn't much, but I did get this crazy Bane of Villagers 8 enchanted book and another soul orb for my collection. And of course, I stole all of the TNT from below because... I don't know, I like stuff. Anyways, by the time I left the temple, I was still so distracted by the lizards, so I went online to do some quick research on the mod until I had been enlightened. It turns out the only thing that I needed to catch these bad boys was this super easy to craft net. So I went back home for the night to clean out my inventory and build some nets. And it turns out while looting the temple, I had found this crazy spell stone that gives me all of these insane projectile related buffs at the cost of only being a little more vulnerable to wither damage and void damage. Nice. For day 170, the very first thing I did, because priorities, of course, was build myself some nets to go catch lizards. That's right, I'm supposed to be making armor, but instead I'm catching lizards. Bite me. Upon going back to the desert, I was confused because none of the lizards were being caught by the nets, and I accidentally smacked one and I really felt bad about it. So I went back to my base to kind of figure out what was going on, and I think I discovered the issue. Lizards are parts of the creatures and beasts mod, and you can feed them by giving them apple slices, which can be crafted from regular apples. So I scoured all of my house chests for the single remaining apple that I had, because I used the rest for golden apples, and I used it to make apple slices. And after that, I went back to the desert to try feeding the lizard apple slices, and boom! The net finally works and I now have lizards. So I went around looking for more to feed my remaining two apple slices to before catching and after running out I tried right clicking another lizard just in case it worked and for some reason it did. The net just kind of worked now, which meant only one thing. Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. I spent the entire rest of today running around catching as many lizard friends as I could 
until I was very rudely interrupted by the third Emerald Dragon. The joke was on this guy because my bow had punched too, which pretty much kept him far away from me until he finally went down. And this dude must have been thick with three C's because he dropped a whopping 25, count them, 25 emerald scales, along with more bones and his skull. And at this point, it was safe to say I was becoming a dragon slaying god. However, on the next day, day 171, I was about to regret calling myself a god of anything. I went back to the desert area and searched for more lizards, and while I was there, I noticed this stone brick style spiral staircase that normally I wouldn't go down because it's super sketch. However, there were tons of villagers nearby, and on my map, it showed a ton of villagers, and it was all lit up. So I thought it might be another one of those underground villager bases. And upon getting down here, it was one of the big ones. There were villagers everywhere. However, once I did make my way down the stairs, I got an achievement for finding something called the Foundry. At the time, I thought it was referring to this village, but boy, boy was I wrong. I began exploring all of the village halls looking for any nearby loot, but my minimap was full of other mobs. And that's when I found this massive, and I mean like stupendously giant, dark cathedral looking structure that had fountains of lava in the center of each corridor. And there were spawners. Inside of this place, there were spawners that spawned in these absolutely cracked piglin brutes in netherite armor and these guys had very scary buffs at first everything was fine because i kept my distance while sniping them i ran in to break the first spawner and a lot of the loot was pretty mediocre but then everything went wrong i approached the second spawner so i could break it and a couple of brutes spawned in which which normally wouldn't be a huge deal because of my bow but that's when i heard the cursed hiss of a creeper about to explode behind me and this guy threw me directly into the stream of lava while i was being absolutely beaten and bruised by these piglins so after escaping the lava, I ran like my life depended on it because, I mean, it probably did. And these dudes must have been from the Sonic Metaverse because they kept up with me the entire time giving me no break. I tried placing blocks to stop them from entering the village halls, but they were way too quick and to make it even worse, I accidentally placed down this block of quicksand that I had found and I ended up trapping myself in it with these guys who started doing insane damage to me. They had a strong... These piglins each had a strong three buff and crazy strong pickaxes. So I did what must have been done. I ate another god apple, and I fought for my life until both of them were down. This was terrifying. So as the night was about to end, I placed down a waystone, and I went back home so I could properly prepare myself for that literal hell. Even though I was still supposed to be out looking for a place to live. I know, I'm very distracted. So on day 172, the very first thing I did was begin placing out any and all shulker boxes that I had that had spawners inside because my armor was super dinged up from fighting the forge and I was going to need to grind XP back at my XP farm. However, this time it was going to be far more efficient. I grabbed all of my vindicator spawners that I had for emeralds and wither skeleton spawners for extra wither bones and the chance at getting more wither skulls. I placed these spawners in two separate columns down the center of the tower with two blocks in between so no mobs would get stuck and ruin the mob cap. And now this tower was going to be an absolute beast. It took no time at all for other mobs to spawn in and these mobs dropped so much XP and way better loot. After finishing swapping out the spawners, I spent the rest of the day grinding out mad amounts of mobs and this was going insanely well. After only the first five minutes of grinding, I already had gotten four more stacks of emeralds, plus two wither skulls. And speaking of wither skulls, I still had several nether stars back home that I could use to make beacons, and a beacon was exactly what I needed to really make this place maximum efficiency. Especially since, you know, fixing pickaxes takes an actual year in this mod pack, which is way longer than vanilla for no reason. So anyways, I went back to my base to gather enough supplies for the beacons, except I was missing obsidian. And unfortunately, the quickest way to get more of it was the foundry dungeon. So I teleported back and I stole nine obsidian before leaving as fast as I could. I wanted nothing to do with this place right now. After getting home, I crafted myself three shiny new beacons. I then grabbed a ton of gold blocks and I struggled to construct a new max level beacon by my XP farm during this awful snowstorm. 
However, I now had strength 2 and I was ready to fully repair my pickaxe by grinding myself some more XP. So for the next 3 days, days 173 through 175, I spent my time waiting up top of the XP farm tower for tons of mobs to spawn and grinding my way through them for mad insane stonks. And I know I say it every time, but this farm was busted. Throughout these three days, I probably killed thousands of mobs, and not only did I repair all of the tools and armor, including the pickaxe, insanely fast, but I also ended up with 75 total levels, after passing that quality 69 of course. And during these three days, I also learned the actual dangers of this farm. Because there was a chance that wither spawners can spawn mutant wither skeletons and at first it wasn't a huge deal i kind of saw it on the map and you know whatever the first one ended up suffocating in the wall and i took all of his bones in skull for free however the next one was not that easy i waited for about 10 minutes straight while mobs were spawning and there were about five of those monsters in there five and at first they couldn't really touch me until i cleared out a lot of the mobs and they were the last ones left then they started doing some insane damage by wall banging me it was almost like these guys had wall hacks and I was playing on Nuketown because they almost made me pop a totem multiple times. So unfortunately, I had to eat yet another god apple. I just can't have nice things in this world. Like honestly, I just don't know what it is with these recent days. Things were getting scary. But anyways, by the time I was done grinding all of these mobs, I ended up with this insane chest full of loot. I crafted all of the emeralds into blocks and I ended up with a solid 2 stacks plus an additional 11 which may not be faster than stick trading, but it's still pretty pog. On top of that, I also ended up with a ton of coal, 10 wither skulls, and a lot of stacks of wither bones, and cracked wither bones. Overall, my farm was now very, very overpowered. For the next two days, days 176 through 177, now that all of my tools and gear were mended, I headed back home where I was going to prepare to take on the foundry. But first, I had been seeing how I wanted to find a new place to live and make a storage network for ages, and at this point, I was going mad. I had way too much loot laying everywhere, and I could barely find anything that I needed ever. So for these days, I struggled to pull together whatever resources I needed to craft myself the surprisingly easy items that I would need to not only make the perfect storage system, but also get portable storage access. That's right, you heard me right. After this network was built, I was going to have access to everything that I owned while I was out on the go. So I spent the next two days crafting the storage inventory, storage network route, and storage request tables that I was going to need for it. And now there was only one thing left that I needed, and it was the crafting remote. This bad boy would allow me to access all of my inventory and craft from anywhere in the world. However, I was missing one of the key items that I needed to make it, sea lanterns. But luckily, I knew about an oceanographer villager that just so happened to trade them. So I crafted the block that he would need and I traveled back to my first village where I traded with this bad boy for a sweet stack of easy lanterns. And after returning home, I crafted the new remote along with a whole bunch of link cables that would be needed to connect all of the chests that I hooked up to them to make my brand new storage network however now i needed a house to place it in and you know what this base has been my home for the last 175 days so why not continue that trend so on day 178 now that i had everything i could need for the storage system i began clearing some space near the corner of my base so i could begin placing everything out i broke down all of the dark oak wood planks that were imprisoning this villager in iron golem for what feels like millennia and i cleaned up any of the other blocks that would make this whole area a lot more open so I could place out this wall of regular chests all the way up to the ceiling in the corner of the house. After that, I hooked up the link cables to each and every chest and I placed out the three storage blocks that I would need to make up the network. After this, I right clicked it with the remote and mission maximum looting plus ultra was now in full swing because I had access to my inventory from anywhere. Honestly, why didn't I do this way sooner? I no longer even needed shulker boxes, technically. Anyways, now that the network was in full swing, I went around doing the most satisfying thing ever, which was breaking all of my chests and rapidly yeeting everything into my storage from off the ground. I did this for every single chest, including finally emptying out all of my shulkers. And now I could truly live my life just like Larry. This was one of the best and easiest mods I have ever used. 
Especially since I didn't have to generate power. I still get flashbacks to that Arlcraft video, I swear. For day 179, now that I had finally fixed my storage problems, I was ready to go back and take on the Foundry. So I used my Waystone to teleport there, and I slowly began clearing the spawners out one at a time to be safe about it. This place was massive. The hallways just kept going on, and the ambient sounds were super eerie. I continued going further into the place. I spotted this giant orb of what seemed to be charred blocks directly in the center. And that's when I saw the random redstone, emerald, and other ores in between all of those very charred blocks. Which means only one thing. This was a level 5 dragon's den. Directly in the center of the place. Things were going to get interesting. So I put some ender pearls and a waystone into my hotbar just in case. And I dug in to see this gigantic beast sleeping. And as Danny DeVito would say, I just started blasting. I began shooting this thing with my bow and honestly, the dragon was kind of dumb. It began breaking through floors until it got stuck by the lava where I eventually took it down with arrows. I'm kind of glad it hit that lava because this thing would have probably gone all the way to the surface and if that happened, my life would have been significantly harder. But I had easily defeated my first level 5 dragon and as it would turn out, the dragon wasn't really the problem here because under the nest was this huge room with more spawners and magma cubes the size of the sun. But things were okay because I wasn't going down there, right? Well, not quite. I built my way up to the dragon's corpse to loot it, except there was a nearby spawner that had already spawned more of those piglin brutes and something was off, very off. I couldn't snipe them, so as they got closer, I tried to break the blocks under the terracotta, except I also couldn't break them. So I tried to build up and smack them from above and I still couldn't damage them. This part of the dungeon didn't seem right. Something was off. If I wanted to collect the dragon's drops, which hopefully contained an egg for a dragon, I was going to have to become clever to do this. Or so I had thought because after reloading my world, just in case I was lagging or something, everything started going how it was supposed to. The enemies could be damaged and the blocks could once again be broken. Apparently these dragons are just as laggy in 1.16 Minecraft as they were in 1.12. But anyway, since I could now damage them, I sniped out all of the brutes that were camping me before doing this very risky pro gamer move where I flew over to the spawner of my elytra to quickly break it. And these guys were really not a big fan of that because after I did manage to break it, they chased me down several times and I barely had time to react. I ended up just building up inside of the dragon's nest and sniping each and every one of them in the face until I was finally safe to collect my winnings. And upon looting the dragon, there was sadly no dragon egg, only the massive pile of 48 scales and bones. And after all that ridiculousness, honestly, I was thinking about taking a break from this place, so I ran out of that dump as fast as Minecraft humanly possible. The next time I go back here, I will be way more prepared with a much better weapon and hopefully better armor. But anyways, overall I was down here until the end of day 182. So on the next day, day 183, after getting back home, it was time to start renovating my base for the new villager army that I was going to need to make my new swords into beasts. So to start this process, I cleared out all of the random plants and other blocks downstairs, and I spent most of this day just removing the dirt and stone floor, replacing it with some much nicer and more classy spruce wood. I also increased the size of each doorway to give myself more space to place different villagers along the edges. And if you're wondering why I said place the villagers instead of both them, then boy did I have a surprise for you. After doing a little bit more research on how to move mobs in this mod pack, I came across an item called the Quantum Catcher, which I could use to pick up villagers from literally anywhere and bring them to my base. However, in order to make it, I was going to need two things. The first was spawner scraps, which I could easily get since I've been silk touching every spawner I've been finding for the last 100 days. And the next thing was a block of arcane crystals, which I could find by mining arcane down below. So that was exactly what I was going to do. I crafted myself several stacks of ladders and I dug down a two block area straight down as far as I could until I got to what I thought would be bedrock. But instead it was just pitch black, almost like the void. And that's when I learned just how unforgiving this world really is. That's right, it was just void. There were just holes in the bedrock in this mod pack. That's terrifying. But with that crisis averted, I began strip mining for ores and yeah, 
Bedrock floor just has random openings in it everywhere, a void. So instead of living life dangerously on the edge, I built up a couple more layers before continuing my excursion. And throughout the night, I got basically nothing. Just some more coal and much needed lapis, but no arcane crystals. So I thought I would move on to plan B, which was to instead go caving the next day. So for day 184, I made the genius big brain gamer idea to teleport back to the foundry so I could hopefully find a nearby open cave system. And boy did I. It turns out this area was full of so many different structures that it was an absolute dumpster fire. I ended up running into one of those multi-layered dungeons that are also in Craft, however just much more difficult. And this place was covered wall to ceiling with vines everywhere. And to make this mess even worse, a ravine divided it right down the middle. But this wasn't just any ravine because down at the bottom were the exact ores that I had come here for. Those round glowing white ores dropped the arcane crystals that I was in need of. So I slowly made my way down there after taking out some more cave spawners and wither skeletons. And I collected the first few of these ores that I was going to need. However, I was far from done here if I was going to make multiple of the catchers for maximum efficiency. So I spent the next few days pushing further through this dungeon area and everything was such a mess. I ended up running into the structure made of platinum blocks that had these armored boys nearby. And I found some gorgeous RGB gaming ores that dropped X petrified orbs. Whatever those were for. I was down here until the end of day 85 when I found myself at a dead end that led me back into the very dangerous looking part of the foundry dungeon that I wasn't quite a huge fan of. So I tried to retrace my steps but I wasn't having much luck until I ended up finding this mine shaft that was also intertwined with the rest of this mess. And while down here I struck a massive 14 vein of diamond in the process while trying to find my way back up. After getting those diamonds, I kept exploring until I conveniently ran into one of the hallways for that underground village, and my waystone was right nearby, so I could finally leave that awful place. On day 186, after getting home, I had the epiphany of a literal lifetime. No, a lifetime made of lifetimes. I grabbed my Fortune 3 pickaxe from my storage so I could begin breaking spawners for scrap along with the ores that I had collected. And after breaking the first spawner, my mind literally exploded because spawners dropped soul orbs along with the spawner scraps and they drop enough for one extra heart each. I was beyond ecstatic. But before I continued exploiting that to the max, I had to break my 14 diamond ores and the abysmal amount of arcane crystals that I had gotten. After breaking the diamonds, they dropped me a sweet 36 and after cleaning up the arcane ores, they gave me eight which just so happened to be one shy of what I needed to make a mere single quantum catcher. But for now, that could wait, because I had a date with these spawners. I began mass breaking almost every spawner in my storage system for stacks upon stacks of soul orbs. And I learned something insane. The maximum amount of hearts you get from this statue was not two rows. It was three, and my hearts were now a golden yellow. I was flipping the hell out about this. So now that my health was now maxed out to the absolute best degree possible, I began upgrading the stamina circle, which I still have zero clue what it does, but, but I got this super cool achievement for becoming the hero of Hyrule, which means I totally guessed it. This was definitely a Zelda mod. Plus I still had more than a stack and a half of leftover orbs that I probably no longer needed and didn't need to break the spawners for. But besides not having enough arcane crystals, today was still an amazing day. For day 187, I started out by throwing my shield into the enchantment setup for some extra enchants to make me even beefier with these three rows of hearts that I now had. To make me even beefier with these three rows of health, and now that I was all set, I fast traveled back to the desert village where I was almost consumed by that green dragon to try and find another cave with more of those ores inside. And today was absolutely absurd. I went back over to that nearby underground village that had fallen victim to the sandworms. And while down here, I stumbled upon this nice little mini ravine with tons of ores inside. However, I wasn't quite far enough down yet, so there weren't many arcane ores. However, this is when things turned crazy. While finishing up exploring the ravine, I found this massive drop below that went straight into lava and I had zero clue what was going on. So I whipped out a crafting bench since for some reason after fighting mobs, I can't open the storage remote 
and I made a brand new bucket that I used to grab some water so I could casually float my way down to check everything out. And I found myself in awe. This cave was like journey to the center of the earth and I could see tons of those white arcane ores glowing alongside the walls. This place was perfect until this level 5 fire dragon rendered in the distance down below. There was a dragon's nest directly in the center of this cave and the dragon had somehow escaped. So now I had to somehow safely fight this dragon after managing to place enough water so I didn't lose its drops after the fight. So I placed down a new waystone back up in the ravine and I went back home where I brewed myself 9 8 minute fire res potions just in case I fell in the lava and I spent the rest of the night cleaning out my inventory for all of that future loot that I was about to get. On the next day, day 188, I traveled back to the ravine and I began placing water sources up top so I had more safe area below before I slipped an elytrid straight into the lava directly in front of the dragon like an absolute smooth brain. I quickly struggled to drink a fire res potion and switched to my fireworks and my hotbar before flying out of the lava and over to a more safe side of the cave. And luckily the dragon didn't follow me which was probably because he was stuck in the lava. Must suck to suck, huh, Step Dragon? Anyways, while I was over here near another source of water, since when landing in the lava, I tried to place mine, which I honestly have no words for because that makes zero sense, I swam up to collect it, and while up here, I scored some more of that sweet arcane crystal that I had been looking for. After mining those little bit of crystals, a loot goblin spawned in, and normally I wouldn't care too much, but he had this busted trade to get a fortune five pickaxe and that's when i went to make up for that super smooth brain moment earlier with this giga five head one i placed out my ores and broke them with my fortune pickaxe and i placed down another waystone so i could go back to my base make a smithing table and create my very first quantum catcher and now that i had it i went back and i picked up this little dude so i could bring him back to my house to totally not exploit him for trades in the future and now that I was in safe distance from the dragon, and I had a new goblin friend, I began exploring this cave system more while gathering copious amounts of those sweet, sweet arcanium ores. That is, until I ran into a boss bar for something called the Ferris Rotnot, which turned out to be this huge stone knight with a sword in his back that was just kind of chilling in the lava. So I did what a smart pro gamer would do around a bear, and I poked it. I placed water down to free him of his lava prison. And just like the other two Mousy's mob bosses, this guy was now going down, and unlike the normal boss fights that are super hectic and fun, this one was, um, basic to say the least. His movement was so slow that he could never catch up to me, and his attacks only happened when I was in close proximity for like 5 seconds. And they were more predictable than the average isekai anime. No shade though, I do love isekais. But yeah, this fight took so much longer than it should have because he was only vulnerable to damage after he used his axe slam attack and got stuck and I would smack him in the back. But after about, I kid you not, five hits, his cheeks were mine and so was his trashy axe and helmet that both apparently never break. Guess this guy never got the mending memo. But anyways, now that he was down and all of the safe side of this cave were looted for the Arcanium, I was now ready to go back and take on Le Dragion. Plus, it was now the end of day 190. On day 191, after emptying my inventory, I was finally ready to take on that stuck step dragon. I began placing water sources down to build my way over to him, and this was probably the most intense dragon fight for the entire video. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. This guy just kind of sat here letting my punch bow push him across the lava until he died. And now that his story was at its end, it was time for me to steal all of their loot. I placed enough water around just in case so none of the drops got burned. And this dragon was thick with 10 C's. It dropped a stack in 25 scales. Plus finally I had gotten a dragon egg. I could get a dragon and begin making dragon steel. However, that's probably going to happen in 300 days because for now I had plans of a final enemy to kill by day 100. But if you do want to see 300 days, don't forget to leave a like. If we get to 30k likes, we'll definitely do it. But before we get to that, I have to finish a couple more things on my list, like finishing making more quantum catchers to gather the villagers and to make my dragon god swords insanely OP. However, while I was still here, I wanted to check out the dragon's den because something kind of seemed off. 
The den was too long. Almost like there were two dragons spawned next to each other. So I flew up inside and I guess this place was just warped for no reason because all that was left in here were subpar chests and this super fast chad zombie that I wanted nothing to do with. After finishing up the dragon's den, plural, because I'm still pretty sure there were two of them, I spent all of day 192 mining out the rest of the arcane ores around the area until I stumbled upon this underground mining bridge that was floating above the lava. And this place was super cool looking. There were spawners everywhere that spawned different beefy and fast skeletons, and the barrels were full of some pretty cracked loot along with more diamond enchanted armors. However, I didn't want to spend much time down here, so I quickly cleared out this place in full as fast as I could so I could move on with my Minecraft life, and I made sure to take any of the remaining arcane ores nearby while also stealing all of the powered rails because Hoarder Gang Unite. Can I get some Hoarder Gangs in the comments? Anyways, after finishing up the entire cave with way more arcane ore than I ever expected, I flew down to the waterfall and I swam up and teleported home for the night. On day 193, I placed out all of my arcane ores with my offhand while breaking them with my fortune 3 pick until I had enough crystals to make an insane 19 more quantum catchers. With this many, I could now borrow an entire village at a time. Literally. So after crafting the 19 more, I teleported back to the forge dungeon underground and I ran around stealing, I, I mean rescuing every villager from this literal hell. And after collecting the eight that I did manage to find, I ran into another part of the foundry with a spawner that was close enough to me to start pumping out those very dangerous enemies. So I got a bit creative with my iron golem torture today. I used one of the catchers to pick up this iron golem and I struggled to drop him down to his doom. And just to see how they would do, um, yeah, they tore him apart like they were World War Z zombies. So I was not going down there. Also, why does this keep happening to my iron golems in my game? The world will never know. So after that newest addition to the top 10 saddest anime deaths, I was now out of this place because I had all of the villagers that I was going to begin trading with for my god swords. So the very first thing I did on day 194 was, was evict all of my villagers inside of this box from the first 100 days and I broke it down so this place could finally be less of a cluster. It was now the nicest in here that it has been in forever. We were finally making progress. And speaking of progress, I began turning this whole wall into a section of villager boxes now that I had the space. I started to glass in the sides of my base and I sealed each box with a job block and this is when I realized my mistake. All of the villagers that I picked up started refusing to change jobs because the game had no clue what to do with them. So these villagers ended up being useless. So I had this quick idea to try dumping them into the nether to see if they would revert into regular villagers like in vanilla. Because if you put villagers in the nether, they forget their job blocks and they become normal. So I placed down this guy in the nether and he did not change. So I just kind of left the dude here. I guess this place was now the shadow realm because he was stuck here for eternity. After this, I spent the rest of the day struggling to mess with my villagers, which I didn't know who was who until I placed them and yeah. Pretty uneventful day because of the screw up. That was okay because for the next two days, days 195 through 197, I was on a crazy villager reroll roll. Get it? I'm not sorry. I teleported to the sand village by Paintopia and I stole as many villagers as I could fit in my inventory that I took back to my base to begin the mass rerolls. Let me just say, better Minecraft plus enchantments are almost as good as RLCraft, if not better. Plus, so many of the default ones, like Unbreaking and Sharpness, now have a chance to go over their max levels. During my rerolling, I found some insane things. I found Punch 4 before finding Punch 5, which would definitely go on a new Dragon Bow. I found freaking Protection 6. I found this enchantment called Slayer that was level freaking 10 and worked similarly to Sharpness, or one of the specific enchants like Smite, except for all monsters. I also got Capturing 6, which gives you a chance to drop a spawn egg of whatever mob you kill, which is kind of pointless in this mod pack, but still pretty cool. And I found Scavenger, which increases the amount of times you reroll a loot table after killing a mob, which means it kind of works like shiny hunting in Pokemon combined with looting, which is insane. I continued this process of stealing new villagers, expanding their living areas, and rerolling them until I had enough enchantments to make my weapons into absolute beasts. 
Plus, while searching through the Enigmatic book, I learned that I could also make recall potions similarly to Aural Craft, which would make escaping insane situations way easier. So now that I had all of my enchantments together, I spent the next two days, days 198 through 199, desperately grinding XP as fast as I possibly could to put them together, and these boys were Dubai levels of expensive. These enchantments were so powerful that adding them together was costing me like 35 plus levels a piece. I ended up combining my last couple of enchantments together into a second book, and now I was going to need 59 levels to combine them. So I did what I had to do, and I sacrificed my current sword simp slayer. I gave it this enchantment that I found called Knowledge of the Ages 4. And this enchantment would remove all mob drops from kills in exchange for hopefully some busted levels of XP because I was now sacrificing tons of emeralds and wither skulls just to get this sword finished and ready for my big surprise fight on day 200. And this decision was literally one of the best I have ever made in Minecraft because this sword was printing levels by the second. After about 10 meager swings, I had already gotten enough XP to combine both books and boy am I glad that XP was easier to come by now because this sword was going to cost 133 levels to fully enchant. But this wasn't a problem at all because after only a few minutes, I found myself passing 100 levels. And then I passed 133, the exact amount that I needed for my new god sword. And I named it Kusanagi no Sarigi, which I really hope I pronounced well, after a certain ability from a pretty mainstream anime. Let me know in the comments if you know what it's from. Anyways, now that I had my sword, it was time to take it out for a swing. And um, when it says it strikes lightning, they are literal. Every time I attack with this thing, it rains down lightning that causes fires. Why would they do this to me? So I left the XP farm to go somewhere where I could actually afford to damage, which just so happened to be that Illager castle that was near my base where I ended up killing Frostmaw in the first 100 days. And um, yeah, the sword lit the entire place on fire. And honestly, I know I worked super hard for this, but I, I kind of hated it. So you know what I had to do. I bought another copy of all of the enchanted books back at my house, and I was back at the farm where I easily racked up enough XP to recombine all of the books, and for some reason, this time everything was cheaper. The sword was only going to cost 100 levels, and it was technically better? Weird. Anyways, I sat here grinding more XP for a few minutes until I had my second God Sword, apparently. And I named this beautiful weapon Fusion Flare after the signature move of the Pokemon Reshiram. And now that this beast was ready, it was time to see just how many drops I could get with Scavenger and Looting 5. And this thing was nuts. It now one-shot everything in here, including only two-shotting this mutant wither skeleton that managed to eat its way through two bars of my health. This thing did insane damage, even though I did technically have strength too. Anyways, after only the little bit of grinding that I had done with the sword, I had already gotten seven wither skull drops and just a couple of stacks of emeralds. Just a couple, winky face. For the final day, day 200, now that my sword was ready, there was one last thing for me to do before my next big fight. So I spent the first half of this day compiling all of the new enchantments that I had gathered so I could re-enchant and godify my set of dragon armor. Not to mention, I still had to name all of them. After compiling all of my enchantments, it was back to beating up the XP pinatas at the XP farm for mad stonks, and I combined all of the enchantments together into single books for each piece of armor, and they were surprisingly cheap. But boy, did that not last long. After finishing all my books, I re-enchanted my helmet, and it costed me 61 levels. Not to mention, I forgot to name it, at this point, it would cost me 39 more levels just to do that. Which isn't much in comparison to what I can make now, but I was really running out of time here. I continued grinding XP and adding all of the enchantments to each piece of armor until they were all finished. Also, for time's sake, I decided just to not name them because I had no clue what to name them for now. And these things were leagues above that basic protection for armor that I had before. I now had a Cult of Version 5, which weakens magic damage I take, Icy Thorns 3, which works like thorns, but instead it slows enemies, Protection 6, which is cracked, I'm Breaking 3 in Mending, plus Respiration 4 on my helmet, and Feather Falling 8 on my boots, which technically isn't that useful because I currently don't take fall damage at all 
due to my spell stone anyways, but maybe in the future, I would end up needing it. Either way, I was now more crazy strong than before, and while doing this, I may have ended up losing track of time, and it was night now. But, you know what, I promised you all a boss fight, and I was going to do a boss fight. So after cleaning up the rest of the mobs in the grinder, I started day 201, don't tell anyone, or as I would like to call it, bonus day, by getting some things in my inventory just in case things still manage to go bad, which I doubt with how crazy OP I've become at this point, but pro tip, never, no matter how strong you are in Minecraft, ever assume that you can't die, because you can die no matter what. So I brewed some of those potions of recall that I had mentioned before as a backup plan, and I set out to find my Everdawn portal from the first 100 days. And um, I could not find this building anywhere on the map because I may have stolen the waystone a while ago. So instead I had to use the blocks in my zeolator again downstairs in my base and I went through the portal. And if you don't know what this is yet, this was a dimension in the first 100 days that I lost a totem to and almost died inside of one of these towers. And this place was the home of none other than the alchemist. And this was actually such a cool experience. So after portaling to the dimension, I headed into this nearby tower to take this guy down. I began heading up the stairs, and if you didn't know, you can't break any blocks at all inside of this place. I made my way up to the first floor, and I saw these villagers being imprisoned by some vindicators. I took out the baddies, and I looted the first chest only to find a dungeon key. Apparently, you need to find four of these to get to the boss. I left those villagers there because I couldn't really help them because I can't break blocks, and I continued up the stairs where I quickly searched the next two rooms. And the first one was this cool little library maze that I quickly solved with my massive brain. And the other room brought back some bad memories. The witch in here was the one who basically one-shot me with her potion. But now, it was easy clap. She had nothing on me. I moved on to the fourth and final room which looked like the alchemist's bedroom and it had this cool little custom cat model with a curved tail that was just kind of sitting by the door. And there was an easy chest out in the open that had chest key number four. And now that I had all four keys and I found myself at the top of the tower, I right clicked the block in the center and I was teleported to this arena where I was joined by him, the alchemist. And uh, this fight was very well made, but I was a little way too overpowered for it. The animations and sound effects were top notch as I tanked every single hit. I kept smacking him down and the lowest he got me was literally by two hearts out of my three rows. Not a casual flex by the way. But anyways, I kept beating him down until he hit his final phase and I defeated him once and for all. And honestly, I am so glad that I didn't take this guy on the first time because I would have 100% died in here. Once you come to this place, the only way out is like a potion of teleportation or yeah, that's basically it because you can't place down waypoints. If I came here in the first 100 days and I got stuck in this room, I would have died. So ironically, it turns out that I owe that witch my life. So now that I've defeated the alchemist and got my pretty awful rewards, it was time to leave. I went back to the portal and upon arriving home, I placed out the trophy that I had apparently gotten and it's actually pretty cool. It was this nice little gold plaque that said alchemist on it. So maybe if we do 300 days in the future, I could take on the Everbright Dimension, which had the next boss known as the Summoner. So here I was on day 202, because I may have spent day 201 fighting a boss in the previous 100 days. Don't judge me. Anyways, the very first thing I did was begin putting together my brand new dragon bow, because I'd ran out of time towards the end of the previous movie. I crafted myself the Dragon Bone Bow, and apparently in this mod pack, I could not upgrade it into a Fire Dragon or Ice Dragon Bow, which, not gonna lie, made me kinda sad. However, that was okay because with the mega OP enchantments I have already found, this thing is still going to be an absolute beast. So I rechecked all of my villagers and I organized my enchantments together before combining them all into one single book back at the XP farm and then I added them to the bow for only a little over 50 levels and I named this bad boy Hado99 Krushtiki after one of <sighs> towards the end of the anime Bleach. Huge spoiler, I know. So now that my bow was done, I fast traveled back home so I could begin testing it out. Except for some strange reason, I couldn't shoot any arrows with it. So I had a different idea and I searched for arrows in the menu and there they were for dragon bones and withered bone tips 
I could make myself dragon bone arrows. So I grabbed a stack of each kind of bones from my storage and I made a surprising amount of arrows. And now that I had the ammo for my brand new bow, I tested them out and this thing is insane. Hotto 99 was now an Unbreaking 3 Power 8 Punch 5 Mending bow. At this point, all I was missing was flame, and I was thinking about making it infinity in the future, but for now, I was ready AF to go back and conquer the Foundry, that highly dangerous dungeon from 200 days of better Minecraft. But before we enter that highly dangerous dungeon, how could we even stand a chance without today's sponsor, Apex Gaming? As you probably already know, I've partnered with Apex Gaming PCs to create three custom computers to help you all get straight into gaming without all of the hassle. Each of these PCs have NVIDIA graphics cards from the 1660 Super to the 3060 Ti and even the 3070, along with some beefy Ryzen CPUs that will allow you to take on any loads. From playing Minecraft on high settings with crazy the FPS to even using shaders while recording your gameplay, each of these PCs are up to the task of making your gaming experience far better than ever before. So if you are interested, go down to the link in the description and don't forget to use code PAIN at checkout for an extra 5% off your order. Thank you everyone and Apex Gaming for this opportunity. Let's get back into the video. For day 203, after organizing my inventory in preparation for this giant hazardous dungeon, I teleported myself there and immediately dove in to begin clearing the hallways and things were much, much different now. Both my bow and my sword were now capable of two-shotting all of those jerk piglin brutes that used to take so, so, so many hits to take down, and I was now on a roll, even though the chest loot was still pretty garbage. At this point, I had already cleaned out the first area by the villager halls by breaking five or six spawners, and all I had to show for it was a couple of bars of gold and iron, but that was okay because down below is where I must go. Why am I Dr. Seuss? So I continued my way through the halls and I passed the tier 5 dragon's nest and things were already becoming more intense. Each set of piglins that had spawned in were no longer dying in two hits, but with my busted sword fusion flare, I had a massive chance to give them slowness 4, which pretty much numbered their days. Also, apparently I had spoken too soon because the first chest in this area had a beefy looking god apple inside. Don't ask me why I use the word beefy all the time. I wish I knew. Anyways, overall, I spent until the end of day 204 loading these top layers of the dungeon until I ran out of areas to go, but I did end up with a ton of useless spawners that, let's be honest, I will probably never use for any farms in the future. On day 205, now that I've cleared the upper floors and made my way back to the dragon's den in the center, it was finally time to go down below. Today, things were going to get real and they got real, real quick. I climbed down the wall of the dragon's den, and before even getting down there, massive magma cubes and blazes began spawning. I jumped off the edge and I used my elytra to fly down, and there were spawners literally everywhere. I ran in to break the spawners in the center, and they began summoning these mobs called Foundry Sentinels that were riding hoglins, and these dudes were pretty damn beefy. Once again, don't know why I keep using that word, I wrote it in my notes a million times, don't judge me. However, I was a vegetarian and I'm not scared of him. Please somebody get that reference. So I barbecued his hoglin and I quickly struck him down before the pile of magma cubes in the room began playing ping pong with my body and surprisingly between all of the fire damage and the magma cubes, they actually managed to get me down by almost a row of my hearts which technically isn't a lot since I have three, but I do also have crazy armor, and that would almost be death without my extra rows. So you know what? This place was no joke. Anyways, fast forward ahead after cleaning up most of the magma cubes, I went around breaking the remaining blaze and magma cube spawners on the sides near the lava, and I looted the chests which actually had some kind of real loot now. I found a whole emerald block inside one of the chests, and I found this insane sounding item called the Forbidden Fruit that upon eating would take away my hunger forever at the sacrifice of 80% of any of my regeneration effects, which does not seem like a fair trade-off. For the next day, day 206, after cleaning out my inventory, I kept on exploring the new areas around this floor, and the loot took a full turn. After cleaning up the floor with so, so many magma cubes, I began finding diamonds and gold blocks inside of chests, along with netherite scraps 
and other random loot. I also started finding a lot more powerful spawners. I took on these much stronger wither skeletons that I wiped the floor with because I kept giving them slowness. And there was still so many magma cube spawners and the big boys still managed to do some pretty good damage to me. However, after cleaning up this new area, I continued moving towards different parts of the dungeon and the loot just kept coming and kept getting better and better. I was finding blocks of emerald, blocks of gold, gold bars, golden carrots, and withered tomes that gave me even more XP than regular tomes. And then I found this item that kind of blew my mind. Inside of one of these chests, I found this keystone of oblivion that has different modes that do different things with your inventory, apparently. It's really hard to explain, but it sounds super helpful if I could figure it out. And if you're interested in what it does, pause the video here to read through this whole wall of text just describing this thing. It sounds nutty. So after looting the Keystone of Oblivion, I kept moving on further through this place and it was beginning to feel like it would never end, along with all of the loot, because the next couple of chests that I looted had even more stonks inside. There was a whole bunch more diamond blocks, diamonds, along with nether scraps, a netherite bar, and my first arcane scroll, whatever those did. But hey, I did end up getting an achievement for it and I like achievements. On day 207, I had finally finished all of the lower level of the foundry, except for the very center where there was a small stage like arena with a whole bunch more blaze spawners. I started off by breaking the center spawners that were hanging from the ceilings and I was trying to loot the chests and that's when the apparent hidden spawners began spawning in mutant blazes. And these guys may not have done a ton of damage, but boy were they scary. They sucked you in like a cyclone and began throwing me around like Midoriya from My Hero. I ended up landing in lava a couple of times, but thanks to my trusty bucket of unspecified liquid, let's just call it water, I barely had to deal with the lava. And after hitting them with a couple of swings, I was able to take down the first mutant blaze and then the second one, and each of them dropped me a mutant blaze core, which I didn't really know what they were for, but since they gave me an epic achievement, they must have been important. Anyways, after going around and stealing parts of those defeated mutant blazes, I began looking for the exit area near the dragon's den that I used to get in here. However, instead of finding that exit, I was distracted by this entrance to yet another dungeon that was floating up by the ceiling. And this place was a pretty good source of even more loot. And if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I like loot. There were more spawners everywhere with wither skeletons and these high pixel looking enemies that lit me on fire and pretty much every set of chests had diamonds and golden apples inside. I kept running through each hallway while cleaning out the spawners and chests until I found what would have been this huge room if it wasn't stuck in the center of another huge underground lava cave that had tons more exposed arcane crystal ores. So I grabbed myself a waystone out of my shulker and I placed it down so I could come back here in the future to go and collect all of the loot that this place had to offer. And after this, I finished cleaning up the remaining parts of this much smaller dungeon, and somehow I ended up back at the first lava cave near where I had taken down that grand step dragon. So I used my fireworks to fly back to the center water source, and I swam up and used the waystone that I had placed back in 200 days of better Minecraft to finally go home a champion, because I had now successfully cleared out the entire foundry dungeon, and it was now the end of day 200 in nine. For day 210, I kind of just stayed home organizing all of the loot that I had pulled from that grade A trip to the foundry. I picked out tons of ores that I could break with fortune three, and I smelted all of the gold ores that I had gotten from each of the chests. By the time it was nighttime, I had all of the pure resources organized into my inventory, and I had come back with one netherite ingot and 22 scraps, four emerald blocks and two emeralds, 19 blocks of diamond, in two extra, 39 gold blocks, and nine blocks of iron, not to forget the loads of other random loot that I had stuffed into all of my shulker boxes, including the ridiculous amount of spawners that I really don't need and I don't know why I took them. I mean, minus the blaze spawners, that is. Anyways, while I was organizing all of this loot, I was shot by what I thought was a random skeleton, but no. It was your friendly neighborhood mutant skeleton. Joke's on him though, because my bow was now much more powerful than his. I quickly struck him down before I heard a nearby lightning strike that I was terrified had hit the roof of my building. 
So I flew down to the snowy field nearby to find out exactly why so many strikes of lightning hit during the nighttime. And that's when I found out that each of these lightning strikes spawned in super armored mobs with enchanted weapons and pickaxes. I sat here beating up the zombie until he finally went down and he dropped me his disappointing pickaxe and chest piece. And while I was checking out this disappointing armor, another special mob spawned in and started shooting me in the back so I had to quickly promote him to the best position at my local Wendy's. Dead. Anyways, I spent the rest of this day moving all of that loot that I was sorting into my storage system so I could keep my ender chest nice and clean, just like Father Vsauce. Why did I write that? Anyways, on to day 211. After finishing cleaning up my inventory, I looked up what a mutant blaze rod core did and what they were for, and they're so stupid, but I love it. Every time I right click this bad boy, it yeets everything around me. Also, thank you to these villagers that totally loved being yeeted around. And before you say it in the comments, there's no reason to be worried about them here. Trust me, they love it. So now that I knew what the blaze cores did, I went back home and I immediately threw them into my storage because they're low key useless and not worth the effort that it took to get them at all. Also, while I was here, I noticed that a lot of my armor and my pickaxe were getting pretty worn down, so I went back to the XP grinder, where I waited for a couple of minutes, and I whipped out good old Simp Slayer to grind some mad XP, which quickly mended everything that I had and brought me over level 100. Not to mention, I also got a whole bunch more Wither Skulls and stacks of emeralds. So this day may not have been super crazy, but it was pretty productive. For day 212, I had a couple of things that I wanted to do before going back out on our next trip. I spent a lot of this day out gathering flowers in the rain that I could use for different dyes so I could finally color all of the shulkers in my ender chest because they had been driving me crazy for so long. I was out exploring the forest past the edge of the snow biome I lived in while gathering different flowers until I saw the side of this mountain that had so much exposed coal that I could not resist. So I kind of just sat here with my Fortune 3 pickaxe, mining everything the slow way. And before I knew it, the snowstorm had gotten really bad and apparently it had already become nighttime. So as the sky demons began attacking me because apparently I haven't slept in a while, I flew back home where I dumped my pretty juicy amount of coal into my storage system before I would spend the rest of the night making different dyes to color each of my shulkers. And after I had all the dyes I needed, I crafted each one and I organized them all perfectly into my ender chest with one extra slot left. But then I noticed something over in my search bar, a mutant shulker box, which made me think, now that we were in better Minecraft plus, the end must have so much more loot, plus I could now steal the shulker spawners from my own mutant shulker farm. However, I didn't stop there. While in the menu, I also learned of these things called advanced shulker boxes, which I thought would have even more storage. So I tried crafting one, and it turns out they're pretty much the exact same, except you don't have to place them to open them. So now that my entire ender chest was done, technically, if I wanted to use these, I would have to remake them all. However, not now, because I wanted to go back to the end to begin checking out all that it had for me to loot. So on day 213, as I was preparing to go to the end, I had realized that my food situation was not that great, because I may have accidentally broken those cow spawners from the previous 100 days. However, all was good because I had the power of villagers. So I fast traveled over to this new town that I had recently discovered and I found the first poor jobless, set, I, I mean, lucky friend that I could capture. And now that I had my friend, I went back home and I built a new addition to the villager stalls downstairs where I rerolled this guy with a composter until I could actually level him up. And this guy had some cool new foods like cherry pie, mulberry, and passion fruit. And then after maxing him out, I could now buy more golden carrots in mass. And while I was at it, I also decided to stock up on more fireworks for my villagers, even though I could still come back here at any point by using a waystone instead of the end, but you know what? You can never have too much loot and you can never be too careful. Anyways, while trading, I was trying to get my farmer to refresh more, but he was now being very stubborn. So you know what that meant? It meant it was time to go back to the village and borrow somebody else so I could speed up the process twice as much. And after borrowing this villager, I threw him into another stall until he had another easy trade to level him up. And this dude was way better than the first guy. He also had apples that I could use to craft golden apples or I could use to feed lizards. Yes, I have not forgotten about the lizards. 
and he also had strawberry scones and cake, as if I was ever going to use them. But either way, I now had two golden carrot traders, and my food situation was pretty much solved. So now that I was fully prepared on the beginning of day 214, I teleported to the end waystone from the first 100 days, where I was ambushed by yet another mimic. However, this time things were a lot different. I was a new man with new armor. So even though the mimic stole my gorgeous look, I was still able to strike him down in three meager hits with fusion flare. And now that that jerk was taken care of, I waited for the four times slowness that he had given me to wear away, and wow. I now know how the mobs that I attack feel when I give them slowness. And that will still probably not stop me from doing it. Probably not. So after I waited for my slowness to disappear, I took off with my elytra and fireworks so I could see what this new end had to offer. And besides some of the newer mods, I recognized most of the terrain from back when I lived 100 days in the modded end. Right before my old computer fried, that is. 07's in the chat for my original hardcore world. You will be missed. But with those sad thoughts aside, I pushed along until I found what looked like a purple dungeon on the map. I flew over to it and I landed on the roof because I knew exactly what this place was and it was full of mad stonks. I broke through the ceiling and I began looting chests that at first didn't really have anything special. That is, until I found this room that had a ton. There were enchanted diamond tools and armor. There was a spell stone that was kind of difficult to read because the UI bugged out. And most importantly, I had found two of the resources that I was really hoping to find in the end so I could make this tool called an astral breaker that breaks a three by three by one area. And these astral dust and ethereum ores were exactly the things I needed to make this bad boy. Also, this is future pain talking here. I never made this thing. And if I did make it, I don't think I ever used it. I was here for no reason. Anyways, I spent the rest of this day wandering around this place more while taking out some of the things from Mario, and there wasn't really much more loot to be had. So after finishing up the dungeon, I went outside to actually touch grass for once in a while, and while I was at it, I crushed some endermen to see just how many pearls they would drop. And boy, these guys were like broken gumball machines. The looting on my weapon is insane. After setting back off to explore on day 215, the first thing I stumbled into was a tiny little tower that I didn't think was much. However, it turned out to be like a miniature city. I broke into the top room, and the very first thing I was greeted with was one of those rooms with a shulker spawner and four colored shulker boxes inside. So like the man of culture that I am, I tried breaking the spawner for the future shulker farm that I wanted to make, and just like that, I had gotten myself my very first shulker spawner. Which, to be honest, isn't as useful as it sounds, but you know what, whatever. Shortly after this, I fought this beefy looking shulker that had spawned in, in a heated 1v1 battle to the death, and after he was down and out, I went around yoinking all four of those free shulkers because, hey, it's free real estate. So now that I had more loot, I jumped down to the bottom room where I was ganged up upon by a pile of mimics and more shulkers that kept shooting me and levitating me. And honestly, this was just awful. Every time I hit a mimic, they gave me more slowness four, which destroys my FOV and the shulkers would not stop attacking me until they were finally all gone. And I ended up with a shulker spawn egg from this. So in a way it kind of worked. I got myself a new pet and I ended up with three more shulker shells and another mimic cream, whatever those are for. For the next three days, days 216 through 218, I spent way too much time flying through random biomes before actually finding something crazy. And for some reason, I was thinking there was going to be much more to do in the end. But finally, after day 218, I had found my first real end city of this trip, assuming that that tiny one didn't count. And this place had an actual end ship. After landing, I quickly blew through the different rooms in the end city. And I, of course, stole myself yet another shulker spawner and four more brand new shulkers. And after that, there wasn't really much left to look around at while in the city, so it was now time to take on the end ship. And this place had about the same amount of enemies and loot as the first one where I'd gotten my first elytra from. However, there was a lot more mimics that I now easily eviscerated with my massive brain and sword. And of course, after finishing off all the enemies, I borrowed the elytra and all of that loot that I had just mentioned from down below the ship's deck which was pretty much the same as the last one. On day 219, after finishing looting the first end city, I set back out in search for more better places to loot, because not gonna lie, 
I was becoming very bored of the end dimension. I began flying while my game was having a moment with all of the lag, and the first thing I came across was one of those tall towers with a free waystone and a chest at the top. So I landed up top so I could steal both, and huge surprise, the chest had pretty much nothing inside, but that was okay because after checking my map once again, I noticed another one of those purple dungeons a little bit past the end city that I had just looted. I grabbed my fireworks and I flew all the way there and this place ended up being full of more loot. The first chest room I found had iron, gold, diamonds, diamond armor, and other random loot including a dragon scale, which I'm pretty sure is super important in this mod pack. I kept exploring the place until I stumbled upon the next room and there were so many more diamonds and gold in here along with another dragon scale. Along with these things called Munda Batir Dust, which I had no clue what to do with but they also seemed important. They're also really weirdly named. Anyways, I continued looking around this place until I had exhausted the rest of my loot and I set back out in search for more places to borrow all kinds of things from. However, at this point, the end no longer wanted to be my friend, and I had conveniently found another tower with a waypoint. So I named it something like End Last Waypoint, in case I wanted to come back here in the future, which I probably don't, and I teleported back to my domain so I could begin counting all of my loot. And overall, I was in the end until the end of day 222. For day 223, now that I was home, I laid out all of the shulkers of loot that I had gotten, and I began disenchanting most of the diamond enchanted loot for XP, for some weird reason. I have no clue why I did this. In comparison to using my XP farm, you know what, you know what, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I, I did it, and that's all that matters. Honestly, I'm not sure why I even took it with me, doesn't matter. After exposing of the diamond items, I gathered together my iron, gold, and diamonds, which ended up being a pretty good amount, however, I still needed more astral dust, because I only ended up with one of the four that I would need to make the hammer. And unfortunately, the only place where they spawn just so happened to be end cities, which for some reason are much less common in this world. So this meant that if I wanted to craft the thing still, I was going to have to go back to the end, which I was not about right now. So instead, I continued looking through the items I wanted to craft, and I was now able to make two brand new charms that were busted. I crafted this first one that gave me night vision and a 30% mining increase along with extra fortune, and I crafted the second one that gives me additional looting, monster damage, and supposedly double monster XP. And that's when my massive five head gamer brain kicked in. I teleported back to my XP farm where I waited for a bit for mobs to spawn so I could test out just how much more XP I could get with good old Simp Slayer. And within literal minutes, I was now over level 160. My XP situation just keeps becoming more and more busted. And that's when on day 224, I had an even better idea. I was going to finally upgrade all of my tools for some mega enchanted bone tools, increase my tool belt storage massively, and create another flame god sword with the enchantment for super XP. So maybe before these 100 days ended, I could hit level 1000, maybe, because I quickly found myself distracted by the next best thing. Since I had dragon eggs now, I could skip dragon bone tools and go straight to dragon steel baby. So I grabbed the dragon eggs from my inventory and I began researching what to do to hatch dragons online and I learned a lot. I first crafted myself a dragon staff using one of those dragon heads from my inventory so I could control whichever dragons I hatched once they grew up. And after that I kind of began struggling for information online so I thought why not try the bestiary in game. I placed down a lectern and I began plowing through all of the knowledge about dragons and pretty much anything else until I 100% completed the book. So now that I had a little more knowledge on dragons, I continued looking up what to do until I discovered how to make dragon meal to feed the dragon so they grow in the dragon horn which can be used to summon and de-summon tamed dragons. I crafted myself the horn and after that I crafted as much dragon meal as I could until I ran out of any beef, pork, or mutton. Which means, while I was waiting for the dragons to hatch, I was going to have to go back out on an animal hunt. However, before that, I had a couple of options left. In order to hatch the lightning egg that I had, which would give me purple armor, I needed to place the egg out under the rain for several days. However, for the fire dragon, I needed to place him in fire, which to be honest was much quicker. 
Plus, I really wanted the fire tools instead of the lightning ones for obvious lightning striking reasons. I like arson as much as the next guy when it's not my house. Also, don't quote me on that. On day 225, I began by trying to finish cleaning out my shulkers from the end trips before beginning to hatch my dragons. And during this process, something good and bad happened. The good thing was I had found the missing astral dust that I had needed to craft that item. And the bad thing was that my storage system was now full. I guess that makes sense when you think about it, since the storage system was just a wall of chests. And after having all the raw resources shoved inside, instead of blocks, they take up a lot more space. So to temporarily clean things up, I moved all of the diamond armor crap from my storage and I began yeeting it off the edge of my house into a nice pile down below. My neighbors love me, trust me. After this, I began smelting the ethereum that I had so I could quickly build the hammer until I learned that each of the three ethereum tools required for it also needed two of the astral dust to craft. So even though I had enough for the hammer, I also didn't because I needed to make the tools first. So instead of wasting my time going back to the end looking for more of that stuff, which could probably take me the next 20 days, I instead decided to focus on the dragons and I just kind of shoved everything back into storage for now. After this, I went to the nether and I grabbed some nether rack and I made the pretty small brain decision to place this inside of my house where I had thought it was far enough away from the wood to not start a fire. And uh, spoiler, I was very wrong. This dragon wasn't even born yet, and he had already almost burnt my house to a crisp. For day 226, after finding out how to make a dragon forge, I realized just how many resources I was truly going to need to make the dragon steel armor. In order to make a dragon forge, you need one aperture, one forge core, 17 fire steel blocks, and eight dragon blown blocks. So I grabbed all of the fire dragon scales I had for my storage, and I crafted them into blocks before adding them with stone bricks to make dragon forge fire bricks. After this, I used the dragon heart and some iron to make both the aperture and the core, and now I had four more bricks out of the 17 that I was going to need. Which, after doing the math, I had found out was going to require an additional 455 dragon scales to finish. So it was safe to say I was going to need more dragons, along with tons of animals for the dragon meal, to grow the baby dragons. Also at this rate, there was basically no way I was going to get a purple forge going at the same time for that purple armor. So it looks like I was going to be stuck with the red armor after all. Especially since right after I finished crafting these, my first baby dragon had hatched and she was adorable. I grabbed my horn, weird sentence, I know, and I linked it to the dragon so I could now carry her around and summon and desummon whenever I would need. So now that my dragon had hatched, I was in need of tons of food and tons of dragon skills to finish my project. I spent the rest of this day organizing my inventory so I could set back out on a massive expedition that I was going to need to get these ultimate tools, weapons, and armor. So on day 227, as I was preparing to set out, I noticed I had some quests that I could turn in, and that's when I realized there were even more bosses I could take on besides the summoner. After defeating the first two bosses in the Everdawn and the Everbright Dimensions, there were apparently two more, and not only that, there was also a boss called the Nether Monstrosity inside of the Nether. So I collected all of the rewards for what quests I had finished, and I was given a Blaze Flamethrower that looked insanely cool. But I was going to have to leave those distractions back here for now, because today I began my food and dragon hunts. I first fast traveled to the newest waystone that I had in the world, where I had conveniently spawned in front of a dragon that was caught up fighting this whole Illager castle. And this guy was not winning by far, because after only hitting him with a couple of arrows, he was down and out. And after flying over to loot his body, this place was a mess. His body was stuck inside the blocks, and there were drops everywhere. Not to mention the annoying illusioners that kept giving me blindness and slowness for, which destroys my FOV. Overall, I struggled to get this dragon's drops, and I found myself clearing out a ton of these guys before I could even get the items out of my inventory to collect the drops off the ground. By the time I had everything in my inventory, it was now nighttime. So I landed on the ground near the dragon's nest to quickly clean out my inventory before sleeping, and that whole process only netted me a meager five dragon skills. Getting this armor was going to be a grind. On the morning of day 228, I picked up my bed and I began looking around this weird valley that I was in. This whole place was a massive chunk error with super cut off cliffs, 
and I looked up to the side of one of those cliffs only to see an identical building to my base just kind of hanging out there. So before leaving, I decided, you know, why not check it out to see if any of the villagers had any good trades. And none of these villagers were even worth mentioning. So because they had nothing of value, I kept moving on. And let me tell you, today was going to be a dragon full day. After only several hundred blocks, I ran into my first dragon fight where I tried sword to face combat in the odd chance that my enchantments would impact what he drops. And overall, this fight was honestly obnoxious. The dragon did nothing to me except waste my time. Once I finally killed him, I looted his body for a pretty decent 21 scales. Although it seems like looting and other enchantments didn't really make much difference. After this, I continued on flying until I found a second dragon lair with a nearby dragon that was 1v2ing a couple of drakes like the Call of Duty nerd that he was. I swooped in and I two shot him. I shot this guy two times and he died. This dragon was super easy. After the dragon was down, I took out the two drakes along with the poor defenseless and submissive cows that they were trying to eat before looting the dragon who gave me a whopping zero scales. This was a literal scam dragon. Zero out of five stars on Fiverr. Anyways, after taking out the second guy, I kept moving on where I borrowed a couple more waystones along the way from different towers until I had ran into yet another Barocco the Sun Chief village. I spent the rest of this night running around and farming all the small enemies for easy free masks, and then I began tanking Barocco on himself, and I did so much damage. I began smacking with my sword until he shot his massive ray of light at me that I blocked entirely with my shield before shooting this dude in the face a few more times where I banished him to the Shadow Realm. And now that I had added all of their faces to my collection, I placed out my bed and I slept the night away. On the next day, day 229, I was out minding my business inside of the new village that I found, borrowing all of their cows for dragon food, until I witnessed this battle of the titans. There was a bronze dragon 1v1ing an ampere right in the middle of the town. And at this point, they were both so weak that I hit them each with a thousand years of death before stealing all of their loot. And again, that didn't end up being that much. These dragons were holding out on me. So after cleaning out my inventory once again, I continued exploring for the day where I found a ton. I first ran into this large mushroom house with piglin brutes inside, and they didn't really have much loot. After this, I stole the waystone off two of the nearby towers including some more pretty subpar loot. And then finally, to finish off this day, I had found one of the most insane structures in all of better Minecraft that I have only found in the worlds that I use to make thumbnails. That is, until now. I flew up into this massive airship with crazy spawners and enemies inside. I began checking each chest I could find, but for some reason, they didn't really have any loot. That is, until I made my way into the center of the place where there were a ton of wither skeletons and gross icky spiders, along with lots of other random mobs. I took out as many as I could until my inventory filled up, so I placed down a waystone so I could come back here, and I went home for the night to clean out all of the new loot that I had acquired. For day 230, after teleporting back, I began running through each area in the ship, wiping the floor with any mobs while also lighting up the area with torches, because Honestly, I was kind of thinking about living here. I mean, maybe. I feel like I always say this because of how picky I am and then I never actually do. Anyways though, after finishing up the whole ship and exploring the top area, I moved on to a nearby village where I found my next dragon target and again, for some reason, he died from only a couple of bow shots. Maybe I was becoming the monster that I had set out to slay myself. This brand new bow was an absolute monster. After looting this dragon, he dropped me another 12 scales, and by the end of this day, I was now up to a total of 63 scales, which were definitely rookie numbers, but if you think about it out of the 400 I needed, I was kinda doing pretty good. However, pretty good is not good enough for me, so for the next 6 days straight, I continued my ultimate dragon hunting adventure, where I continued on 5 shotting dragons with my god bow. On day 231, I first took down an ice dragon, which isn't very useful for the firestone bricks, but he did drop me a whopping 32 scales. After this, I found a bronze dragon that after only 5 more shots, dropped me 28 more scales. I ended off this day by taking out this fine red fire dragon who dropped me an additional 33 more red scales. And all of a sudden, dragons were 
actually starting to cooperate with me. For the next set of days, days 232 through 234, I started off my hunt with this first bronze dragon that really wanted to burn me while lagging my game. However, after making him eat his own words, I was now up 31 more bronze skills in my inventory. Joke was on him. L plus ratio dragon. After that, I found my game coming to a complete halt where I tried to take on this ice dragon. However, after the game snapped back to reality, just like Eminem said, I also took this dragon out to dinner and they gifted me a free 17 blue scales in my honor. What a gentleman. I kept hunting dragons at this pace while for some reason dealing with constant game crashes and lag inside of the ice biomes until the end of day 236 where I totaled out enough dragon skills to get me up to a total of 12 dragon forge fire bricks, which meant I now only needed 5 more blocks, which unfortunately meant I now needed enough to craft the four bricks two more times, which was still about 90 more dragon skills. But anyways, during the last day of hunting, I had ran into this crazy looking dragon type that I've never seen before. And honestly, this guy made it legit very difficult to see anything on my screen. And after killing it, it turned out to be from the Worm Roost mod that I didn't even know was inside this mod pack. In between all the dragon fights during these days, I also found a whole bunch of chimpanzees that I of course had to capture and I took out another Baraka the Sun Chief, only to finally find a Savannah Cockatrice. And not just one, there were tons of them. If you've seen the first two videos, you'd know my struggles with these stupid animals. Honestly, it's sadly ironic. For day 237, after stopping back in my base, I decided to take a quick trip back to the XP farm so I could repair my armor, and after only a couple of minutes of borrowing their XP, my armor was back to new and I left off on the perfect number like the absolute gamer of culture that I am. And speaking of culture, if you've gotten this far in the video so far and you are not subscribed, I honestly don't know what you're doing with your life. Here, I'll make the screen black just so you can look at yourself in the mirror and think about it for a little bit. Think about why you've not subscribed yet. But for real, if you do enjoy this video, I make lots others like it, including my other hardcore series, and it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. Also, don't forget to leave a like on the video, because that really helps me in the algorithm as well. If we can hit 30,000 likes on this video, I'd be a pretty happy guy. Anyways, now that that shameless plug and my armor repair were over, I looked at the map for a new direction to travel and hunt for more dragons. And I set off south of my house, and not long after flying over all of the betas below me, I found my first dragon nest of the day, which consisted of this bronze dragon that didn't really care to guard his treasure very much. I hit him with the old razzle dazzle, and this man was down in an instant. What an easy way to get 15 free bronze scales. After this, I set back out and searched for more dragons, but instead, all I found before this day ended was another mini pillager castle where I stole some basic loot from the attic and a small village with more wyverns just hanging around waiting for me to steal their meat. Winky face. Why did I say winky face? Anyways, it was now sundown and I casually stole this villager's bed as he went out for a late night trip to get milk where he probably wouldn't return just like dad. For the next three days, days 238 through 240, I set out in search for more dragons and these days were anything but lucky. Most of the time, I found myself flying over ocean, after ocean, after ocean, after ocean that were full of pirate ships and non-grass touching fish. That is, until I ran into another good old friend, this super laggy bronze dragon that I very quickly made easy work of and I stole his skin which now put me up to 35 bronze scales, one third of the way to the 90 that I needed. After killing that abomination, I continued on my landless journey until I noticed this peculiar looking structure underwater. So I decided to land on a nearby pink sand beach so I could check it out, and I found myself surrounded by these mass dudes right after I got the achievement Renai Circulation, which is a really weird name. I swam back up to see just what I had gotten myself into, and it was a plague asylum, apparently. And I'm guessing this place was going to be just as rough as the foundry, the massive underground dungeon that I had conquered earlier. I mean, after all, this place was just as laggy. So I began preparing myself for this most likely torment. I'm not a masochist, I swear. I placed on a waystone that I named after the asylum, and I made my way over to the nearby giant to take him out, just in case he got any ideas about snacking on my gamer cheeks. I took one shot, 
and he disappeared. Apparently, I can one-shot giants now. After this, I jumped into the water to grab his eye, and shortly after, I was jumped by a sea serpent. Short story, even shorter, my giant eye was on sale. It was buy one, get three serpent scales free. After taking my new friends out to dinner where I left them to pay, I fast travel back home to clean out my inventory and make more dragon arrows before going to sleep for the night. On day 241, now fully prepared, I went back to the Asylum Waypoint where I began my journey into what I thought was going to be a very interesting and dangerous place. However, instead, it turns out the water had ruined everything. Every single inch of this place was covered in sources of water that were beyond noisy and very laggy. But even with all of that, I still kept pushing forward. There weren't many enemies around because, you know, all of the wet. But while down here, I did manage to collect a whole pile of witch and wither skeleton spawners, along with a good amount of gold, some diamonds, and crazy potions from a bunch of different chests, including these insane Bad Omen 5 potions, which would make for some really fun future rating. But for now, I was done with this place. There was no challenge, minimal loot and things to kill, and lag. Lots and lots of lag. So I kind of just left, and honestly, I will probably never come back. One star on Yelp. For day 242, things were very different. I had been away from this world for several weeks because I was moving in real life, and now my setup was entirely different. But nonetheless, I still remembered what I had to do inside of this world. I was hunting for more dragons. So I checked my map to see any directions that I haven't been in yet, and I set off to the west in search of more of those beautiful beasts to slay. But before finding any dragons, I first ran into this exotic looking building that was full of more cow people. Why does it sound so weird calling them that? I landed nearby trying to see how many spawners were inside, and upon looking into the sky, I noticed another one of those god tier ships floating above. So I grabbed myself some torches to begin lighting up the inside of the building, and I began my push through. Overall, there was only a few spawners, and not many of the enemies really did much to me. Basically, while I was here, I control alt deleted each and every one of those great value techno blades before looting each of the barrels and chests. And things were pretty cheap, minus the random supplies that could help me go to the end, if I hadn't already done that. But anyways, now that this place was done, I made my way up to the ship above where I landed down inside and I began obelisk obliterating anything that dared move in my way. And at first, the loot here was garbage just like the place before, but after a couple of chests, I felt like they were trying to bribe me because I kept finding both netherite and more netherite scraps. However, that was not enough. So after cleaning out the whole inside, I broke some of their windows like any civilized neighbor would do, and I landed on a nearby island in the sky where I spent my night dumping my inventory into shulkers before continuing my hunt for more dragons. On day 243, after setting off from that disturbingly slimy island, I dropped down into the ocean to yoink some beautiful gold blocks from this portal, only for me to be jumped by this massive leviathan. But no matter how much damage he did to me, I had god and anime on my side, so I quickly knocked him out of my domain. This ocean was now mine. But not for long, because I was out and about looking for more dragons to lead to their demise. Except in proper pain domination fashion, I was very quickly distracted over and over. I first ran to this village with yet another Sun Chief that had an army of healers that constantly stopped me from taking him down. In fact, this fight was so absurd that a random sea serpent took advantage of the chaos by trying to body slam me like a Snorlax. But long story short, both Snorlax and the Sun Chief were telling Iron Man that they didn't feel so good after I was done with them. And after all of that chaos, I decided to check on a couple of nearby ships in the ocean for their kills and loot, and I landed on Rapunzel's tower here with a free real estate waystone that I used to drop my things off back at my base, and I slept away the night. For day 244, I teleported back to the tower to continue my search, and after checking the map, I had found two beautiful things. I first headed over to this dragon's nest, where I 1v1 this very handsome lightning dragon in a game of search and destroy, and this dude was terrible. I ninja defused the bomb, took him to the cleaners before collecting his whopping 35 dark blue scales. After taking his skin for myself, I moved on to yet another one of those giant colorful sand places where I spent until the end of day 245 looting some of the best loot rooms this place had to offer. I walked away with stacks 
on stacks of diamonds, gold, emerald blocks, along with some more easy spawners. However, after looting the best of the best loot here, I decided I was done for now because the making of OP dragon armor was the only thing that I had on my mind. On day 246, before setting back out for hunting dragons, I decided to take a quick break from this hunt to sit back at my XP farm where I grinded myself above level 200 and I repaired my nearly broken pickaxe and overall today was just kind of a pretty chill day. I had a lot of damage on my armor from all the dragon fights and I decided that, you know, I should sit here, have a little spa day and prepare myself for more of the chaos that was soon to come. And boy was there chaos. Because for the next 6 days straight, until day 253, I was out striking down dragons left and right. I first started off my rampage by memeing on the small brained black dragon by deleting it from existence with a mere couple of shots from my godlike bow. And this guy dropped me 25 black dragon scales, which weren't that useful for what I needed, but hey, after a fight as easy as that, I couldn't really say no. Anyways, shortly after that fight, I found and adopted this brand new emu friend that I was going to name Kevin. After getting my new friend Kevin, I then hunted down this gray fire dragon, where I also destroyed him with a couple of bow shots. And honestly, these dragon fights were becoming easier and easier by the day. Wow, there's probably an innuendo hidden in there. Throughout these days, I hunted down dragon after dragon after dragon while collecting the scales from each and every one. However, that was not all. During some of these days, I also got into a 3v1 fight with a sea serpent and two more leviathans. I started an all-out war with a monkey tribe from the village hidden in the jungle, and I found these adorable seals that I adopted to become part of the Domination Nation. Kind of like what you should do by subscribing to the channel. Ooh, ooh, I'm so sorry you had to hear that. So by the time it was the end of day 253, I was now up tremendously. I had now gotten 54 red dragon skills, 25 black dragon skills, 18 gray skills, 21 bronze skills, 25 white skills, 10 emerald skills, 31 silver skills, 12 light blue skills, and loads of other dragon and sea serpent loot. I was another few steps closer to my completely busted armor. And overall, I was thrilled that I was pretty much done fighting dragons because they took forever to find. So on day 254, after returning home, I gathered all of the spoils from war and I began crafting them into blocks so I could make the remaining forge blocks that I was missing to build my forge. I made my way over to the small hill near my house and I cleared out some dirt so I could finally build my brand new dragon forge. And after building it, I had realized something. There were two things that I needed now before I could truly begin making these weapons and armor. I now needed to become Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon and raise myself a dragon and I needed to hunt even more dragons for their dragon's breath because I needed that to put inside of the forge and turn iron into dragon steel. So after fighting all of those dragons and thinking that I was done with it, I was not. I ended up having so much more to do. So after building the forge, I used my dragon horn to summon my handsome little dragon dude here and I began feeding her to make her big and healthy. And this little dude repaid me by immediately working on the forge to make my very first ingot of dragon steel. And I kid you not, this dude immediately started acting up and tried to destroy my house right after. This dude was unhinged and she needed to be fed. So on day 255, I was back out except this time in search for different animals to feed my new dragon. I started out by stopping by nearby villages where instead of doing the smart thing and collecting the cows to be bred, I instead killed them in cold blood. Which I would soon learn was a huge mistake because throughout the rest of this day, there were no more animals. I kept flying everywhere, and all I found was a couple of ships full of pillagers in the ocean with some pretty mediocre loot and just empty fields with no animals. I pretty much spent this entire day flying over land and then ocean where I couldn't find any more land, and I ended up killing a couple of sirens, and I even defeated the sea serpent with my own bare hands. And overall, it was it was pretty unsuccessful day. It was it was a rough day. At this point, it had become nighttime, so I placed my bed nearby and I slept away the spooky, scary night. Today was about as bad as the notes that I wrote for today. On day 256, after waking up, the very first thing I did was set back out in search 
for more animals. That is, until I instead became extremely distracted with these pirate ships full of skeletons and pillagers. And ironically, they had chests full of the very things I was searching for. I found pork chops, raw mutton, raw beef, all perfect to be turned into more dragon feed. Anyways, after raiding these ships, I continued on my mini journey for food, where I found this giant just munching on these villagers, and I was going to take him down, but I had just freshly ran out of arrows, which was kind of awkward, but I did make do with what I had by taking just a couple of his sheep nearby while he was distracted, and after that I borrowed one of the villagers' houses so I could sleep the night away. For the next day, day 257, after setting off from that nice gatekeeper's house, I was still looking for cows and sheep, and instead I found this gorgeous dragon looking dudes that I absolutely needed to adopt. I grabbed more of my magical cubes of stealing, and I yoinked each and every one of them before continuing on to find the perfect thing that I was looking for. While looking for more animals, I had stumbled upon another piglin village hidden in the fog, and this place had exactly what I was looking for, a cow spawner. I could finally use this to grind for more meat to feed my dragon. Weird sentence, I know. So after gathering the spawner, I used the waystone to teleport myself back home, where I spent the night farming these cows while being interrupted constantly by a mutant skeleton and this absolute chad of a mutant zombie that for some reason kept respawning, but invisible. So at this point, I said screw it, and I retreated back to my base to sleep away my problems, just like in real life. Anyways, on day 258, I used my Silk Touch pick to gather a bunch of grass blocks that I could use to build a temporary place inside of my base to farm my newly acquired cow spawner. So this way, they could continue to spawn while I was kind of just chilling around my base and actually accomplishing things instead of just AFKing. I placed all of the grass down downstairs, along with a set of fences around it, and I placed the spawner in the middle so these guys could begin spawning. And now that I had an abundance of food spawning in my base, I took all of the meat that I had gathered and I crafted about 40 plus dragon meal to feed my new dragon friend. However, my dragon had a much different idea than that because I could not get her to stay still for anything. The dragon would not sit down, the dragon staff didn't work, and I even crafted a fire dragon crystal to try and force her to stay with no luck. This dragon just did not want to eat more to grow, apparently. Overall, I wasted this entire day trying to manage my dragon that just was not having any of it. I began day 259 by researching the Ice and Fire mod to find out what I actually needed. And after just a little bit of research, I found out about something called a dragon flute. With this bad boy, I could now supposedly ground my dragon just by blowing the flute. And finally, the dragon was kind of listening. And now this dude was finally ready to behave, I began stuffing as many dragon meal into her face as I could, and she grew to a massive size. By the time I was done feeding the dragon all of my bone meal, she was almost max level, and I could now ride the dragon. So now that my little dude was all grown up and ready to start blasting away at some steel, I was now in need of more dragon's blood. However, in order to get more dragon's blood, I was going to need more bottles. And with my luck, I had just ran out of glass. So I went back to the original Paintopia to gather myself some sand. I went back home, popped it into the furnace for glass, and while I was waiting for it to smelt, I grabbed some emeralds so I could do some classic capitalism with my end villager for more fireworks. Gotta fix inflation somehow. On day 260, now that I had the glass I needed, I crafted almost a stack of glass bottles and I teleported back to my most recent waystones so I could go searching for, you guessed it, more dragons. I know, I've done nothing but kill dragons in this video. Anyways, after only a little bit of flying, I found this ice guy that I didn't really need because I was making fire dragon steel. But you know what? I can't resist a good fight, so I 1v1 this dragon into the ground where at the very last second I was grabbed and tossed around like some ragdoll by this Mike Tyson crocodile. Man, better Minecraft? Be scary. After defeating both the dragon and Mike Tyson, I decided to steal some ice blood anyways for a rainy day, and I was back on my journey for dragon these n huh? I, I mean, uh, dragons. I was, I was back searching for dragons. And boy did this journey go super well. I first found one of those Blackstone-like dungeons that I couldn't really find the key master whatever to, 
I kept flying until I found a dragon's nest on the map, and the second I got near it, my game crashed. And if you've ever played better Minecraft before, you probably know that it does not load very fast. Even with the best PC in the world, this mod pack still takes forever to load sometimes because there are 300 plus mods. Today was not the best day, especially because while waiting for my game to reload, it crashed again. And after finally loading in again, I was finally able to take on the dragon, but only after this short Cyclops admission. Anyways, after taking the short Cyclops to dinner and turning the dragon into dessert, I ended up with five of the dragon's breath that I was going to need because each dragon caps at five, which kind of sucks because that means I was going to need to take on so many more dragons just to get this armor after I had already taken on, you know what? You get it. You get it. I killed a lot of dragons to get this armor and I'm still not there. So after taking down and looting that dragon, I spent the next two days, days 261 through 262, out exploring for yet more dragons. While flying around looking for more dragon's nests, I kept running into those mini towers with free real estate gold blocks and waystones on the roof. And I hit the jackpot with another hidden mushroom village, complete with another cow piglin spawner that I could add to my collection to make a steak farm for more dragon food. At this rate, by the end of these 300 days, I could have a dragon army. I continued exploring further and I ran into multiple more of those towers that I joined the same waystones from and I even got a third cow spawner from yet another mushroom village that was surprisingly becoming pretty common now. To end off these two days, I finally found another fire dragon that I very easily took down. However, he was hanging out with the wrong crowd because nearby there was a hydra and I really wanted to kill this Hydra because they dropped something called a Hydra's Heart that gives you regeneration when you put it in your hotbar. Except this guy was in his prime habitat. He was just swimming around in the shallow warm ocean with his rapid fire poison so I could barely get close to him. Arrows didn't really do much because he needed consistent damage to actually die and since he kept camping in the water he was basically untouchable. However, I was not about to quit here, so I placed down one of my waystones and I teleported back home for the night to prepare for the absolute clowning that this man was about to receive. After getting home, I crafted several more stacks of Dragonbone arrows and I placed the other two cow spawners in the grass pen downstairs to speed up the temporary farm spawns for that sweet meat. Wow, that sounds wrong. For day 263, now that I was fully prepared, I teleported back to the Hydra and I began using my bow's insane knockback to slowly push this dork onto dry land. And that's when I went in for the kill. I used my elytra to swoop in and after only a few smacks with my god sword, the Hydra was no more and he had dropped two of his legendary items that gave me free regen whenever I had them in my hotbar. At this point, there was no man or beast left that could oppose me. I was becoming cracked plus ultra. This world was going to no pain. So now that my arch nemesis, the Hydra, had been defeated, I spent the rest of this day on an absolute rampage. I found and defeated another dragon that gave me five more dragon's blood. I found another mushroom village, and this one had an insane three more cow spawners. I could now make a cow tower also known as a cower. Anyways, after the sun had gone down, I found myself testing out my might by beating up all of these diamond zombies and skeletons, and they were dropping loot like pinatas. After cleaning out this base and stealing their loot, I found myself finishing off the night by protecting and accidentally killing all of the villagers in this nearby village when trying to fight off this named zombie. And unfortunately, there was no survivors. And it definitely was not my fault, no comment. Anyways, on day 264, things started going pretty great. I placed down more of my spawners and I harvested enough cows to make a ton more dragon meal for my dragon. And after that, I went outside to my forge and I began putting her to work and this is where things went wrong. This dragon kept leaving her post at the forge and trying to destroy my house. I kept using my flute to ground her until finally tragedy had struck. This dude rammed my house and set everything on fire. I tried so hard to stop myself from losing everything, and after a solid 5 to like 10 minutes of struggling, the fire was finally under control. I technically saved my house, minus this entire corner, but at least all of my villagers and all of my loot were still safe. But honestly, at this point, I was really regretting placing this thing that close to my house. Literally, why don't dragons behave? 
And also, why did I continue to take this risk? Honestly, I was more disappointed in myself than I was in the dragon at this point. And now, technically, I needed a new place to call home. Although, realistically, I was probably not going to move. So, in true disappointed fashion, I went to sleep for the night. On the morning of the next day, day 265, I flew down to the forge to assess, um, everything. My house now had a massive crater in the side of it, and on top of that, the dragon barely even cooked any of the steel. And the poop icing on top of the poop icing cake, I was now going to need like 30 more dragon's blood to make enough steel for all of the armor and weapons that I was going to need. And once again, I was in need of hunting more dragons. But first, I was back to feeding my jerk of a dragon. So this time, I fast traveled back to Paintopia, and I fully leveled her up to 500 health. And now, she was a level 5 Giga Chad Super RGB Gaming Dragon. And she was huge. So, I got myself a name tag, and I rightfully named her Giga Dragon. And now, it was almost time to go back out hunting more dragons. But first, I had one more thing that I had been putting off forever now. I went back home, and I crafted as many pouches as I could for my tool belt. So this way, I could now store more things inside of my tool belt instead of my inventory, which would make it a little bit less of a struggle. And this thing was now maxed out with eight slots. I was now ready to hunt more dragons, which at this point is kind of becoming half of the video. So for day 266, now that I was once again prepared to hunt dragons, big surprise, I fast traveled back to my newest waystone to begin the fight of my life, killing as many fire dragons as possible. However, the game had a very different plan because instead I found this area full of ice dragons. I kid you not, back to back to back ice dragons. I ended up killing six of these dragons in a span of about 10 minutes. That's right, six dragons in one day. If these were fire dragons, would have been perfect. I would have been set, had enough dragon's blood for the rest of the video. But instead, here I was dumping all of my items into a shulker and continuing my journey after sleeping in this dead dragon's lair while also being jump scared by a creeper. Anyways, it was now day 267 and my mission was still going strong. After flying for only a few minutes, I had already found and slain two different dragons, and the second one dropped me a red dragon spawn egg. The enchantment on my sword gave me a buy one get one free deal on dragons. After collecting my free dragon aid, I continued slaying more dragons through day 270, and my game was becoming more and more laggy the further I traveled until I literally fell through the map and crashed. I don't have the footage because the game crashed, but I was terrified that I had lost everything to a dumb glitch. By the time I was back home the next day, I had only gotten 15 more dragon's blood, which was half of what I had needed. For day 271, today was the day that I was going to move the forge over to Paintopia because my house could not take any more beatings. I flew down to the forge and I began breaking all of the blocks, and after collecting them all, I teleported back over to Paintopia and I rebuilt everything just far enough away from the village to kind of mitigate the damage. Um, future pain foreshadowing? This did not help because this man immediately crushed a house right after I summoned her. But I mean, at the end of the day, the house wasn't technically my problem because he wasn't a part of my insurance policy. Anyways, after finally getting the dragon settled once again, she was going ham on the forge for most of this day. And by the time the sun started to get low, she had already cooked me 10 more ingots. But once again, she was back on a rampage. I spent the last few minutes fighting for her to get working again and... She decided, nah fam, I'm just going to sleep instead because it was now night. So I had no choice but to de-summon her and go back home to sleep the night away as well. For day 272, it was back to babysitting the dragon. I went back to Paintopia for her to continue cooking dragon steel. And of course, she was extremely difficult about it as she fought me every step of the way. Until finally, after a long time coming, we had cooked all 23 of the new dragon steel. And after combining it with what I had in my shulker, I now had 31, which was definitely enough for what I needed. Now it was time to build myself some new gear. I teleported back home, and one by one, I crafted each piece of armor, followed by a new sword and a new pickaxe. And just for a quick example of how much more damage this sword is going to do, the base damage is 25. In comparison to my old sword, 
that was 9.5. Even though it did look slightly less cool, this sword was going to be so much more of a beast. Anyways, now that I had all of the armor and tools crafted for the next two days straight, I ran around like a chicken with his head cut off, doing some more beautiful capitalism with all of my villagers for all of the enchantments I was going to need for my armor. During this process, I also sorted them all out inside of a chest so I knew exactly where each and every enchantment was going to go because I wanted these to be perfect, which meant the long names must be first and the short names must be on the bottom. It needs to be longest to shortest per enchantment, otherwise my OCD would probably implode. So by the end of day 274, I had mostly sorted out all of the enchantments for my armor and I began combining the books for only the helmet, and that was insanely expensive. I immediately ran out of XP, but I guess it's okay because now all I had to do was go back to my new XP printing farm that I had built in the previous 100 days. And that is exactly what I did until the end of day 276. I was back in the loop of waiting for mobs to spawn in the farm, banishing said mobs to the Shadow Realm with my God XP sword that I was soon be replacing with the brand new one, and I combined stacks of books into single books for each piece of armor that I then applied them to. And in classic Pain Domination fashion, each piece of armor had to have an absolutely cracked name. And as sad as it is to say, I sat here on the computer for about an hour thinking about names for these, so I really hope you liked them. For each of these powerful pieces of armor, I decided to go with Avatars of the Past from the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. For the helmet, I named it Kurok's Clever Dragon Helm. I named the chest piece the Indestructible Armor of Kyoshi. For the leggings, I called them the Scorched Dragon's Treads of Roku. And finally, for the boots, I gave them the name Yang Chen's Swift Dragon's Feet. Those are pretty cool, right? Come on, let me know in the comments down below which tribes these avatars were originally from and what you think about these names. Anyways, now that that armor part of my new gear was finished, I went to sleep for the night excited to work on my brand new sword and pickaxe. And boy did this sword give me a run for my money. Because on the next day, day 277, I started out gathering the enchantments and adding them together to make one book. And I kid you not, it took me four whole days because I needed so much XP. I spent several hundred levels in between the mob grinding at my XP farm to get the books all together alone. And then it was going to cost 324 levels to finish the freaking sword. This thing better be worth it. So in order to speed up this process, I bought another Knowledge of the Ages 4 book and I added it to my Fusion Flare sword so I could now clean out the XP farm way faster with the extra damage and sweeping edge damage that I did. And within no time, I found myself hitting level 350 and I was ready to craft this new beast of a sword. And of course, I was going to give it a very fitting name of Getsuga Tenshou. Let me know in the comments which anime that's from. It's, it's a pretty obvious classic. Anyways, now that my sword and armor was finished, I went back to my base and equipped the full set of armor to see how I looked. And honestly, at this point, I don't think an army of dragons could defeat me. I was truly ready to go slay more bosses. But before that, I spent the rest of day 281 trying to enchant my new pickaxe only to realize just how much work that actually was going to end up being. I didn't have any villagers with the right enchantments that I needed for it, nor did I have any of the books. So honestly, this late in the video, it was kind of a lost cause. But being the absolute Giga Chad gamer that I am, I did not give up. I went over to my XP farm for a super quick 100 levels, and I continuously kept re-enchanting and disenchanting this thing with no luck until I finally got something that was kind of okay. I mean, I didn't really have the time to mess with more villagers, so it was as good as it gets. After this, I placed good old Simp Slayer and my old set of armor in this dump chest to say my goodbyes. They have served me well. Sleep well, my boys. For all of day 282, now that my armor and weapons were complete, I spent this day organizing all of the junk out of my shulkers so I had space to stuff all of the future loot that I was about to bring back from this boss killing rampage. But first, I was going to need more supplies. I first created a dragon arrow shulker that I filled with as many dragon arrows as I could get, along with bones so I could craft more on the fly. After this, I then named three more shulkers into supplies, fireworks, and snackies, because I get hungry on the road. 
I spent the rest of this day attempting to trade for as many rockets and golden carrots as I could from three of my villagers, and of course, it must have been a holiday weekend because the capitalism just seemed to break down on the spot. However, after enough of the day passed, they finally began refreshing trades, and I had the pleasure of running up and down my non-existent staircase from the dragon incident, you know, to trade with all of my villagers. And honestly, I could move to a new base, but I've been here through so much already that I might as well just keep living here in this burnt down mess. Anyways, by the time this day was over, I was pretty much out of emeralds altogether, and I had accumulated a decent pile of both rockets and golden carrots. It was safe to say I was now ready to go boss hunting. So for the next day, day 283, I set out with my elytra to an old portal that I had made that would lead me to the Everbright Dimension, because in here there was another boss that I needed to destroy. After arriving at the small house that was definitely not a victim of my previous arson, I went through the portal, placed down a waypoint so I could find my way back, even though waystones exist, and I began flying looking for a tower where I would find the boss. I flew for a couple of minutes with no luck until I spotted this tiny village that I didn't even know would spawn here, and I landed down in the center where I hit the jackpot. This village was useless, however it was directly in between this massive jade looking palace structure that I had zero clue what it was. And on the other side was one of the very towers that I just mentioned that I had came here to fight the boss in. I had only been here for a few minutes and things were already going down. So I placed down my supply shulker to grab a waystone and apparently pickaxes break things way slower in this world, which was odd to say the least. Anyways, after naming the waystone, I went to check out the green place and I saw a second tower behind it. This place had so many more things to explore, so naturally the first one I wanted to explore was the giant green palace, and uh, this place wanted nothing to do with me. Anytime I set foot around it, I was given indefinite poison, blindness, and slowness. I figured they might want me to enter through the bottom so that way I didn't skip everything on the top. So I looked around the perimeter for a couple of minutes until I found the entrance, and the exact same thing happened. This place was just cursed. Apparently, I did not yet have access to go inside, and I was thinking maybe I needed to defeat the boss inside one of the towers first. So for day 284, I left the Jade Palace for better, more important things. Today, I was going to take down the Summoner. I grabbed my fireworks and I flew up to the tower where I quickly ran through each room and I collected all four keys very easily. This place was identical to the Illusioner's boss tower. So, after getting all four of those keys, I went up to the main floor, right-clicked the lock in the middle, and just like that, I had already entered the boss's room. And honestly, this guy was more of a chump than the last one. All he did was summon these stupid golems non-stop that gave me free blocks each time I killed them. And occasionally, he kamehameha would me. That's pretty much it. Overall, this fight went by ridiculously quick. I took zero damage the entire time, and even with my weapon doing less damage in this dimension, I easily wiped the floor with his face until I was victorious, and he had dropped me the second trophy for my collection, along with this common loot sack that was pretty much just garbage. But hey, another boss had been checked off my list, and I was done with this tower. However, I wasn't finished with this world. After defeating the first boss, I quickly went on to the next, where I collected all four of the keys, and I once again entered the boss room. And this time, I was wasting even less time than before. I focused entirely on this boss while paying little to no attention to the golems, and just like that, I had defeated a second summoner. I defeated the summoner two times by the end of day 285. I was now unstoppable. For day 286, now that I had taken down the boss for this world, I figured I could finally go inside of the Emerald Palace place from before. So I flew my way back over there, and at last the curse had been lifted. And guess what? This place was absolutely worthless. The only enemies that spawned here were more of those golems, each room was basically the same as the others, and all of the loot chests were pure garbage. So after wasting my time exploring the bottom area, I went outside and flew over to the upper floor, except I still couldn't break any blocks to get inside. I spent a couple of minutes back looking around downstairs in the maze to see if there's any way to get up, however, I was having zero luck. So I tried a one last attempt to get inside before I stopped caring. Every time you try to break the blocks upstairs next to the glass panes, they disappear and it creates a gap in the glass that I thought maybe I could throw an ender pearl through. 
However, this didn't work. And honestly, I was kind of done with this dimension. There wasn't much else to offer and the loot was pretty bad. So I was kind of done. I had hunted down the boss that I came here for and I was ready to move on to the next big thing. So now that I was finished with the Everbright Dimension, on the next day, day 287, I stopped back at my house before moving on to hunt more bosses. And I placed down my two brand new summoner trophies next to the Alchemist one. At the end of 200 days, I said this trophy would no longer be alone, and finally, it has friends. Anyways, today's goal and the next set of bosses I'd like to add to my hit list is that of the Twilight Forest mod, which if you played Minecraft for a long time, you probably know it's a pretty classic mod pack that has been around since the modding scene basically first existed. So I grabbed myself a water bucket and I fast traveled back to Paintopia so I could attempt to build this new portal. I had made a 2x2 pool of water in the grass and I had surrounded it with flowers just like the wiki had said. And big reveal, nothing. Nothing happened. I spent most of my day trying to figure out why it wasn't working until I gave up and I went home where I had a genius idea to finally add mending to my only piece of gear that didn't have it, my shield. And after that, I spent the rest of the night slashing away at some XP farm mobs, just mending up all of my gear like brand new. So when I did figure out how to get inside that dimension, I was ready to take on bosses. On day 288, with my armor now repaired, I continued attempting to build the Twilight Portal. I brought some grass blocks back to my base in an attempt to make it there with, once again, zero luck. At this point, I felt like something was wrong. So I was back to YouTube and Wiki, where I found out you needed to throw a diamond in the water to activate the portal. So I grabbed myself half a stack and I began chucking them in with still no luck. So at this point, I was thinking maybe it was the flowers. Maybe I needed flowers from Minecraft instead of different mods. So once again, I hopped back through the portal to Paintopia, except this time looking for flowers with the Minecraft tag instead of different mods. And finally, after ignoring this massive graphical error in the background, I yeeted DOS Diamond into the water and the portal had formed. And as sad as it is saying this, the portal took me literally two entire days to make. Almost an hour of real life time to build a portal. So on the next day, day 289, I prepped my inventory, headed back to the portal, and I jumped in. And honestly, this was my first time ever using this mod pack and being inside of this dimension. And there were so many things to explore. I first started out by checking out the small little shack near the portal with a skeleton druid spawner inside. I broke the spawner and I viciously struck down the only skeleton that had managed to spawn in. This shack didn't seem to have much loot, so after that I flew off into the distance towards the next item of interest. I found this massive stone maze looking structure with an obvious boss spawner in the center. And after landing, Naga had spawned. And uh, it was safe to say that I was now way too powerful for this mod pack. I had slain this wimpy boss with only a few swipes and he did zero damage to me. In fact, he did so little damage that he did negative damage. But anyways, after defeating him, I checked my inventory for my prize and I had gotten a Naga trophy and seven Naga scales. So after defeating Naga, I explored the maze for a little bit without really finding that much loot and I just kind of left. And this is where my real adventure would start to begin. I continued flying until I saw this really odd looking cloud in the sky. And upon landing on it, I faced my worst enemy. It was me. This island was full of giant me's and they took no damage whatsoever, which is ironic because that's just like me. I tried looking around to see if there's anything I could do up here and they wouldn't really leave me alone and they almost crashed my game. A typical Giga Chad me move, of course. So I once again just kind of left. For the next two days, days 290 through 291, after leaving that cursed me island, I was exposed to more and more weird things inside of this dimension. I first flew into this cloud of apparent acid rain that made seeing with my eyes not that viable, and while half blind, I discovered this insane giant castle with a force field in the center. And apparently, this was the final boss. Or at least that's what the text inside of the spawner had said. I looked around to see if there's any clues with what to do next, and I'm assuming I was gonna have to hunt more bosses. Maybe this would be the final boss I could kill before the end of this journey. Either way, none of the things that were roaming around here took any damage, so like the mana culture that I am, I fled quicker than that shiny Pokemon you've been hunting for ages now. And immediately after leaving this place, I had found something new and interesting to explore. After only flying for about a minute, I had discovered this tower 
with purple roofs on top that I was hoping would be full of things to fight and loot to be found. And you could say I was half right, because there were spawners everywhere. I mean, none of the enemies in here were that strong, and none of the loot here was that great, but the architecture of this place was exquisite. I continued exploring each small room while lighting up the place and banishing all of those weebs to the doom dimension, and soon enough I found myself at the top of the spiral staircase that was surrounded by paintings, including some pretty cool Pokemon starter ones. And once I set foot on the top floor, I was greeted by yet another Twilight boss, the Lich King himself. And I'm not gonna lie, this fight was even easier than the Ender Dragon in vanilla Minecraft. All I had to do was knock back his attacks a couple of times, and after only five of those, I was free to swing at him, and I two-shot him. I hit this guy twice, and he fell to the floor, cowering in fear. Another boss was dead with minimal effort. But hey, I now had the Lich Trophy added to my collection of slain bosses. On day 292, now that the tower was complete and my inventory was full, I began the day by placing out my shulkers and organizing the different items into each of them. At this point, it was still dark and raining outside, but I was not about to let that stop my quest before day 300. So, I donned my elytra and once again took off in search of more things to cease from existing. And my first target was yet another Naga boss. And, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this guy was down and I had gotten another trophy and 10 more hopefully useful scales. After this, I moved on until I found the super close Lich King Tower, and this time, I immediately skipped everything by just landing on the roof and jumping straight in, where I devastated this guy's KD ratio to the point where he rage quit living. After leaving that dump, I had borrowed his trophy and two more zombie scepters. So with another Lich Boss down, and I began marking different structures that I saw as possible boss locations. And after that, I headed over to this nearby green mountain, and once digging inside, I was greeted with this awful mess of a cave system of so many interesting mobs, mob spawners, and once again, basically no loot. I ran around in here killing everything with one shot, while still taking no damage as my inventory was filled to the brim with useless garbage. At this point, I was really thinking about how overpowered I really was. I'm pretty sure nothing in here could touch me. Unless I was being killed with boredom. Kind of like what this cave was doing to me. Non-stop weak enemies with no drops were not that entertaining. So after getting tired of it, I dug my way up to the surface and I left in the direction of the next possible boss area. For day 293, I started off by landing in the next area and I was thinking it could be a boss. Except instead I was met by this cheap tiny little maze with easy to kill spider spawners everywhere that I quickly cheesed by walking on the walls. And the walls did hurt me every half a second, but I was still taking no damage. Anyways, after looting all of these terrible chests, I was going to head towards another structure I'd marked on the map, but instead, I took a detour at this huge ice cave, and then I saw it in the center. A boss spawner. After entering the ice cavern, the spawner immediately birthed this huge yeti into existence. That I also immediately clowned on. This dude also only took like five swings to knock down. At this point, none of these bosses could even imagine standing up to me. But after beating him, he dropped me an Alpha Yeti trophy and 10 Alpha Yeti fur that I once again had no clue what to do with. But I didn't really care because at this point I was on a roll. So I continued on to the next structure to explore, which ended up being this massive, strange looking shaped tower that I couldn't really figure out where the boss was. I flew up to the top and I tried breaking inside different areas, but I couldn't really find anything. So I went back down to the ground floor and tried one of the entrances instead, but I was interrupted by a surprise guest. I literally ran into the hit Minecraft YouTuber, Skies himself, hanging out with a bunch of his brethren. So as any good friend would do, I placed down a shulker, grabbed my quantum catchers, and I put him and his brothers inside of these boxes. Which, if you think about it, could be much worse. It could have been jars. Anyways, I'm hoping to add him to my pet pile that I've definitely not been neglecting this entire series by keeping them all inside of storage boxes. Will Payne ever set his pets free to live good lives before the 300 days are over? Find out in the next episode of Better Minecraft Z. But for now, I finished off this day by attempting to explore this structure with no luck of finding anything and instead flying over to another ice den 
where I fought a second Alpha Yeti and I somehow received two more trophies from him instead of one, which you know what? It's free real estate. On day 294, I found myself having way too many options on the map for more bosses to slay. There were structures literally everywhere. And honestly, I didn't have any incentives to keep killing the same bosses. So instead, I headed to the second one of those final boss areas in the hopes of being able to actually do something. And pretty much the same thing happened. There was acid rain. I couldn't hurt any of the giant Mies. And this time, I somehow flew into the barrier in the center because it glitched and it was made of fences. However, I still couldn't do anything. So once again, I left. However, this time, I wanted to learn what else I had left to do in order to take on that boss. So after a quick search on the wiki where I learned about the boss progression, apparently there are specific bosses you must kill in order and you otherwise can't access certain areas with more bosses unless you do. Just like in that area I was just in. I had already killed Naga, the Lich King, and the Yeti, and the next on my list was either going to be the Twilight Swamp area or the Hydra. Honestly, I don't really know because at this point the wiki was kind of confusing. However, I now found myself on a time crunch because apparently there were still five more bosses. Maybe. Again, the wiki was super confusing, so I'm not really sure. Either way, I now knew what I had to do, and I was in search for the new biomes to explore. After not too much flying, I had found this dark green spot on the map that turned out to be the Twilight Swamp that I was looking for. And inside this swamp was a strange mound of dirt with a huge hole in the middle that led me down into this maze full of minotaurs, and that's when I realized I was in the lair of the next boss. The Minnow Shroom. Kind of a lame name. And now that you think about it, the wiki was starting to make more sense. I had to head to each of these biomes in order to take on each of the bosses before I could defeat the final boss, which I had already found. So for day 295, I spent most of my time down inside of this maze and things were getting interesting. Lots of mobs and quick poison spiders. There were new cave slimes and lots of TNT traps that exposed the bedrock layers in between each floor that had stopped me from cheesing this place, which I honestly couldn't be too upset about. I finally was getting a little bit of challenge. I kept exploring around this place, desperately trying to find my way down to the next floor until I found this room with a minotaur in it. I broke in and two shot him and it turned out he was the boss. Just like that, I had defeated the minnow shroom. I had thought there was gonna be more challenge here, but you know what? I had gotten his head as a trophy and the diamond ax and I was now finished here. And let me tell you, getting out of this place was not fun. It took a solid five minutes just to find the main drop down area that I could fly up and out of. And after that, I followed my main path of torches until I was finally free. Free to take on the next boss, the Hydra, which conveniently spawned in the fire swamp that was right next door. However, there was a problem because the very second I entered the biome, I was struck with infinite burning. And after approaching the boss, I ended up doing zero damage which, after another quick check of the wiki, ended up being because I didn't eat the Meef Stroganov that had dropped from the last boss. So after flying back to the swamp, I grabbed one of them from my shulker, and I ate it, giving me the achievement that granted me access to the Fiery Swamp. Honestly, this dimension is kind of whack. However, I was not wasting any time. I immediately flew back to the Hydra's lair to begin the fight. And after all of these easy bosses, this one finally put up a decent fight. Even with my god mode Bankai sword, it took me a ton of hits to kill him. And he didn't really do anything impressive, but he did manage at one point to get me down an entire bar of health, which was way more than any other boss had gotten anywhere near to combined. Honestly, at this point, I was excited for the next boss to come. On day 296, I continued to pass the Firely Swamp in search for the next boss biome, the Dark Forest. In search of a Goblin Knight stronghold, where the next boss, the Night Phantom, lies. Except the only problem was, I could not find this place. I spent half of the day flying around in search of this biome with no luck. So I stopped by another one of those massive towers in the glacier biome instead, because while reading the wiki, I had learned there was apparently a boss here named the Snow Queen. So I went inside, and this time there was actually a way that I could continue to explore in. I began making my way up the tower while deleting any enemies I could find, until I stumbled upon this crazy chest with a glass sword that apparently did 40 base damage, which was almost double the damage of my insanely OP dragon sword. What even was this monster of an easy sword to obtain? This tower was so easy, and the sword is so broken. Anyways, you know what, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. After looting this room, 
I didn't really know where else to go, so I flew outside and I began breaking my way into random parts of the structure until the Snow Queen's name appeared. I broke inside and I immediately began our epic battle, if you can call it that. I killed one wave of her enemies, she landed, I hit her with the old razzle dazzle, and after she regained immunity, my fire damage finished the job. And just like that, I had gotten both the Seeker Bow and the Snow Queen trophy, and I had defeated another easy boss. Honestly, I couldn't even be upset at this point. I was just so powerful that I had literally become Saitama from One Punch Man. I was desperate for a fight that could actually hurt me. For the beginning of day 297, I quickly checked the wiki before organizing all of my inventory back into my shulkers and checking on my trophy collection so far. And supposedly, now that I had beaten the Snow Queen, I now needed to hunt down the Urgast, who was also in the Dark Forest biome, so I could finally access the biome where the Acid Rain kept hurting me. This Dimension mod was really starting to feel like one of those quests in RPG games that just keeps going and going and going. And at this rate, I would be lucky to finish off the final boss before day 300 ends, which means so much for finally naming all of my pets, I guess. Anyways, after reading all of that, I set off from the glacier biome where I saw this extra dark looking area on the map that had to be the dark forest. And after flying over, it finally was. I had finally found the location of my next two boss fights, which I think actually ended up being the last two ones I was going to need before fighting the final boss. So I flew in under all the trees and this place was crazy dark, which I mean, based on the name kind of makes sense, but you know what, whatever. I didn't really see any signs of structures to fight, but I did notice a ton of pillagers on the map near this messed up looking cave system. So I began exploring deeper until I hit this huge open area with bedrock and blocks that I couldn't yet break. I continued shifting my way through the blindness until I found this square room of lava that I managed to get into which led directly into what I assume is the castle that I was looking for. After building up from the lava room, I headed up the staircase where I ran to my first goblin enemy and I could not hurt him, which only meant one thing, I was not ready to be here yet. So after more searching on the wiki, it turns out that I had to find a shrine area where I could place one of my trophies to gain access to this dungeon. So after tons of searching with a night vision potion underground with no luck, I ended up leaving in search above ground. And finally, on the next day, day 298, I had found the above ground entrance with a spot that felt like the right place to be. I placed my third Yeti trophy on the pillar and the door opened to this entire dungeon. And let me tell you, this place was awful. It took the entirety of this day exploring this awful maze, and once my night vision potion ran out, I was stuck using torches, finding my way, until finally three floors down, not to be confused with the band three doors down, I ran into the boss room. And this was probably the easiest boss yet, after dying to only a few swipes which I think I saved for every boss at this point. Either way, he dropped a chest in the middle with both his trophy and some useless pieces of armor that don't disappear if you die. But joke was on him because I don't die, ever. Anyways, after this fight was over, I dug my way to the surface only to be greeted by some new massive tower behind the forest. I flew up to it and at the very top spawned the ungassed, the very last boss I needed to defeat the final boss and beat the Twilight Forest. Except this fight was very different than the rest, because this man would not let me get close enough to smack him in the face with my sword, so I was forced throughout this fight to use my bow, which in comparison basically was like Gohan from Dragon Ball Z after the Cell Saga. Anyways, after hitting enough shots and finally defeating this guy, I couldn't really find his drops, and I was terrified that they fell down into the fire and they burned. However, it turned out that there was a chest that had spawned in the very middle top area with the trophy and the other drops that I had needed. And now, I should be prepared to go back to the final boss to take him down. So on day 299, now that all the bosses were down, I headed over to the closest final boss castle where I could begin my reign of terror. I flew up to the cloud island full of giant Mies, which is still a super, like, surreal experience, by the way. And I began banishing them each to the Doom Dimension, and they dropped giant swords and giant pickaxes. 
And now that I had the giant pickaxe, all I had to do was go underground in the same biome to find a troll cave where I could use the pickaxe to break an obsidian box that had the final item inside to get me to the stupid end portal area, whatever. Honestly, long story short, I did that because this dimension was starting to feel like homework. Anyways, now that I had the final step in the Twilight Forest complete, I began digging myself up and out of this dark and stinky troll cave until I finally saw the light. After getting to the surface, I flew up and over to the boss castle, and I was finally able to enter without constantly being blinded and barely hurt by acid rain. I landed in the center boss area, and nothing still happened. The barrier at the center of the castle was still glitched out and broken, and the spawner said, you win. I was now able to walk inside and out freely, technically, and I could finally kill these monsters called Harbinger Cubes that were just kind of roaming around. I wandered around for a little bit until I got the idea to go back to the wiki, and after much reading, it sounded like there actually wasn't a final boss implemented yet. Had I killed all of these bosses for nothing? With this on my mind, I donned my elytra and I flew all the way back to the last castle that I had seen prior, and upon landing at the center tower, I was met with the same exact thing. And then it kind of just clicked. Above the spawner, it literally said, final boss here. The mod wasn't finished, and there was no final boss. After learning of this, I just kind of stood on the edge of the castle, contemplating everything that I had been through. Sure, there was no final boss to add to the collection, but overall, it's about the journey and not the destination. If you focus on the destination, are you truly even living? In this series, I had become incredibly powerful and I defeated bosses in the triple digits, including dragons. So if you ask me, was it worth it? I would say yes. So being done with this dimension, I placed out a waypoint and I teleported back home for the final day celebration. On day 300, after returning home, I quickly wiped my inventory and I collected the boss trophies from my shulkers to begin putting them on display. But not before first showing this rude AF mutant skeleton who was boss by smacking him with that one punch energy. After he was gone, I placed out each trophy one by one on the banister next to my original trophies, and these things were looking sick. I was kind of wishing that I made myself a house or something, especially something that my pet dragon didn't, you know, implode half of. But after all, I did survive pretty much all 300 days while living here, so this place was kind of special at this point. So to celebrate my time spent in this world for an entire 300 days, I gathered all of the animals that I kept saying I wanted as pets throughout the series, I fenced in this nice area downstairs after cleaning up this mess of a failed portal, with my bare hands may I add, because I was too lazy to get a shovel. After making this area, I one by one released all of my animals. I summoned my three seals who were just out here chilling, I summoned my one emu friend, a bunch of chimpanzees who apparently one of them had a dragon skull from the dragon fight that I kind of captured them near. I released a bunch of the mini coin dragons and finally my lizard friends from the first 100 and 200 days videos. And now that all my friends were here, I hung out while the sun began to set. Also, I just want to add this in here at the end. The chimpanzees apparently wanted nothing to do with this party and they began climbing up the walls immediately trying to escape. I don't know why I said trying because they were very successful. I would go and recapture them, but honestly, just let them be free. It was apparently their destiny. And just like that, I had survived for 300 days in hardcore better Minecraft. This series has been so much fun to do, and I am super glad that all of you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Honestly, this is probably going to be the last of better Minecraft you see for a while on my channel. I beat pretty much everything into the ground, and it's just not as much fun anymore for now. However, don't let that stop you from going and checking out the mod pack yourself, because it has been incredible. There is so much stuff to do in this mod pack. Also, if you haven't already, please go and follow me on Twitter. I'm super active over there, and it's a great place to interact with me and all of the dumb stuff that I tweet. Plus, I'm also thinking about doing some giveaways over there soon in the future, so be sure to go over there and drop a follow. I would love to hit 10,000 followers by the end of this year. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.